when the young sport of competitive bass fishing established its single most important tournament, the Bass Master Classic. It's been the one at the very top. Win this one and write your name in the history books. A world of its own, with its weigh-ins that progressed from boat ramps and parking lots to some of the biggest venues in the country. And its legion of heroes, the winners, because as they say, no one remembers who finished second at the Classic. A magic week when anglers, fans, and the industry are all gathered together to celebrate their passion. And at the end of it all, celebrate the one who stands as world champion. He is your champion, ladies! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Let's go, this is it. We have finally arrived. The single most important day in the sport of bass fishing. The day we crown a world champion at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. That's the scene at the takeoff. Lake Ray Roberts, Fort Worth, Texas, our host city. Third time the Classic has been held in Texas. We're down to 25 anglers on this final day. All of them pursuing the biggest prize in the sport. So great to be alongside Davey Hyde and Mark Zona. And uh, man, there is so much upside available and so much downside to these 25. Well, we really definitely heard coming into this tournament, you said it, Tommy, this is the biggest day of the year in the sport of professional bass fishing. But we heard coming into this tournament, Davey Hyde, that Ray Roberts could rear its ugly head. Day number one, very generous, not so much. <laughs> Ray Roberts showed a very inconsistency yesterday on day number two. It definitely did, Z, but we had that weather yesterday morning. It was, you know, the shad spawn has been a big, big part of what these anglers are trying to do, trying to focus on that shad spawn. And those thunderstorms and that wind yesterday morning and the two-hour delay, that all was absolutely not what these anglers wanted. Absolutely, yeah. But today, uh, today is different. We have a better outlook on today. It was survival yesterday. It can be, as we say, amazing for one angler. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. Whenever you come to this lake, there is that potential of a 25 to 30 pound stringer. Granted, we have not seen it. And much to the surprise of a lot of the anglers, a lot of the locals that fish here, taking a look at Hank Cherry solidly right now on top. Defending champion, trying to win two in a row. Not an easy thing to do, but Hank Cherry has seemed very, very confident. Even way more comfortable than he won than when he won his first classic on Lake Gunnersville more than a year ago. I totally agree with you, Tommy. Hank Cherry has a different demeanor this morning than he did last year at Gunnersville on that final day. I mean, you can tell that he, he has grown as an angler by winning already one time. No doubt about it, Davey. And really, if you kind of look at Hank Cherry right now. He's just turned into one of those guys on the Bassmaster Elite Series, and we've covered a bunch of these, Tommy Sanders, big game players. Some of the biggest tournaments that we have, you just see consistency. I'm sitting next to one right yeah, here, Davey I, that, guy. that we covered, and you just see a different demeanor this year than other classics with Hank Cherry. And we also said in this tournament, it was absolutely going to come down to execution and every single big bite that Hank Cherry has got, he has put it in the boat. You're exactly right. But I also say, even though Steve Kennedy lost that good fish yesterday, we see a different Steve Kennedy this year. He said, I feel more comfortable than I ever have. And that's saying a lot for Steve Kennedy, but he has fished really well. That one loss could cost him the class. It maybe not. If he can get a few of those bites today, he could hold the trophy himself. Boy, one thing's for sure, we're going to have drama out there today. I mean, for all the confidence, for all his four-pound, 12-ounce lead, Hank Cherry is still super vulnerable. Absolutely. The reason why he's vulnerable, this lake is not giving up the numbers, at least, that were said throughout practice. You, Whatever bites you had better put in the live well. Taking a look at Ray Roberts right here. Your hummingbird unlocked the lake. About 29,000 acres, a little bit bigger this time around. Reason why so much rain out of northern Texas the last couple weeks. But Tommy Sanders, like you said, it is still anybody's ball game. All right. Ron Robbie Floyd is out there this morning. He'll be with us all day during our seven hours of coverage we have for you on this number one day. He's with our leader, Hank Cherry, right now, so we throw it to Robbie Floyd. Hank, as we take off on this final day of the Classic, trying to go back to back, what are your thoughts hitting your first spot? Just catch everything that bites, trust in God, 
Let the old lay where it happens. Seems like every day we've had a different weather condition. What are your thoughts about how you're going to approach today? Because it's it's cold, it's nice, but it appears to be at least. It's the day the Lord gave us. Everybody's got the same conditions. I just got to do my job. make big things happen. He can also grind it out with the best of them. Hank Cherry looking at the smile on his face today, something we didn't see last year when he started on that final day. But let's get out to him live. But he, he was all business after the day two way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting out to Hank Cherry live. Much lived with a bladed jig, half ounce Picasso straight shooter, flipping jig. Not much of an update. I got one fish, had two bites. Um, just trying to run around free, not really get stuck on one thing, and uh, enjoy the day and have fun. Now that bite. Really settled me down. Um, I just need four more. Four more gives me a chance. And that's all I'm thinking about right now. Four more bites. Next bite. Like I tell my son, it's the next pitch. Next pitch. I had a lot of bites through here the first day. And uh, they just short struck everything. But the wind was blowing in here good. And today, it's pretty daggum steel. is a different Ray Roberts today. Than I, I think we should see some top water fishing today. That calm surface there was really, really good for top water. Really what we were talking about is if you look a lot of the footage from day one, a bladed jig for Hank Cherry, then kind of transition yesterday. You said at Davy Height, one of the biggest transitions was going to a half ounce Picasso jig, flipping a lot of these lay downs and I'm sorry, willow trees and bushes. But really what's been in his back pocket every single day, granted, we haven't seen the big ones that he thought he would catch. He's fishing down near the dam, fishing a Berkeley deep diving stun a jerk bait, color stealth shed. Guaranteed, we will see him there today yes. because it's really how he's filled out his limit every day. My big concern with Hank, and he is the leader and is the defending champion. I would not bet against him, but he's got to be a little worried about. So few bites yesterday. So few. Yeah. So Just few bites. Six or seven bites all day long, and that's that's a little spooky. Qualifying for the top ten, the man who finished second to Hank Cherry at Lake Gunnersville 14, 14 and a half months ago. South Carolina's Todd Auton. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Final day, Bassmaster Classic. Why not break out a top order? Stay down, baby. Earlier today with Todd Auten, like you said, Davey Height, so many guys concentrating on that shad spawn. And we're really in the last, I mean, the right. pretty much the last cool. couple days of the, yeah. the shad spawn. You could see that, that it's dope. lasting. Nope, that's a pass. Good, good fish right there. You could really see it is the tail end last few days. Shorter and shorter. Two good fish for Todd Auten. Right. Ah, getting a little better. I really hadn't got to fish this much because this is the first starting place I started in practice and the shad were spawning like crazy and 
basically, look here, out here, all the white bass school and stuff, but, uh, but there's been a boat here every day, so I ain't even got to start, no, you know, or even midday here. I come back later, like late late a few times, but. Clear it out a little bit. Well, you get to see the same demeanor from Todd Alton every single time, oh, whether it's the exactly. final day of the That's Classic right. or the first day of an elite series. You tournament. wouldn't know it. No, you really no. wouldn't. That's an attribute. It's got to be during an extraordinary week like the Classic. Let's get our Humminbird bird's eye view of Steve Kennedy, who was the big story on day number one. Also a huge story on day number two. Yeah, he's really been the story of the tournament so far. Looking at our Humminbird bird's eye view day one catching all of his fish really in the first 90 minutes out of bushes but this was in his back pocket flipping hardwoods and if you're look for if you're from texas watching this footage this is texas 101 for catching the giants the biggest ones that live in the lake steve kennedy said he saw a huge stringer in practice doing this I, uh I managed to catch one keeper on the shad spawn, but he's only a pound and a half, and uh, didn't get any more good bites quick. So we came out here in the timber early, which I haven't done. And so far, I have not had a good bite. I did have some really good mushy feeling line, though. <laughs> and an awesome hook set. Nothing to show for. But we're going to do it all day. And where that puts us is where it puts us. Two, two things real quick. He was day one leader, if you're just tuning in. He caught probably 22 of his 23 pounds that he weighed in in that shallow water, the green bushes and willow trees, that sort of thing. For him to leave that so early, you nailed it, Z. The shad spawn is basically gone, and he's gone out to this deeper timber. He's going to live or die right out of there today. Exactly, and that's a really, really scary proposition if he gets five bites out there with a simple fact the big ones live there, and he connected with one of those giants yesterday. Unfortunately, this was late in the day. That's this would have been fish number five for Kennedy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> cool. Like seven or eight pounder. That was, I think that was the biggest one we have seen on camera Gosh. the entire event like a big pre-spawn Ray Roberts fish. And Steve Kennedy said he needed to, <laughs> needed to land what bit in that hardwood, not connecting late yesterday. That could have cost me the classic again. Dang it. Come on. So it's it, just, you know, there's a, I've got a, I've got a one fish lost story finish a second place finish in the classic a lot of people do but mine was just a two pounder and i'll never forget it can you imagine losing an eight pounder right beside the boat on the second afternoon of Bassmaster Classic? he would have had a commanding lead there are certain fish catches or fish losses from the classic that you see year after year after year we will see that one for a long, long time. Oh, you knew no it question. yesterday. We you watched Hank Cherry's for 10 years until he finally held that trophy. Now it doesn't seem as important as it did for all those years. And maybe it'll be the same for Steve Kennedy. If he caught that one, he would be the leader to start this day. Yes. That's how important that one was. Yes. I mean, that was eight. That was an eight-pounder. That would have went to the bottom line of his oh, five-fish yeah. limit because he never filled that right. five-fish limit That's on an, day That's a two. good point because had he – you know, had a two or three pounder in there to cull, it would have right. been a, you know, five or six pound game, but it would have been solid eight pounds to his weight. Stronger than my line or the tree. Hmm.
playing a very, very uh, precarious percentage game out there today, yes. as are most of our anglers. This, this lake is a great test for the best in the world, to find the best in the world, and that's what we're gonna do by the end of the day. But so much we have in store for us. Just settle in, get ready for it all day long. Live coverage of the final day, championship day, of the Bassmaster Classic. So great to have you with us. 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, and by Nitro Boats. There's still time left to enter the Fox Bet Super 6 Bassmaster Classic Contest what? for your chance to win $1,000. Just download the app and pick six outcomes about today's Bassmaster competition for your shot to win. It's free to play. Don't miss out and play now while there's still time left. Get this, let's just, get, well, how do you play? Uh, well, how, how about a for instance? Let's think okay. about some of those possible outcomes that you could bet huh. on today. Take a look at that. Now, what will be the largest bass caught? There's one of those things you can pick. Uh, do your pick on six of those you pick, and uh, hey, it's the best of both worlds. You get some skin in the game for to enhance your enjoyment today. Plus, it's free. You get it bo both ways. I like what you're saying there, Tommy Sanders, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie. So far, I would have lost because I believe that there would have been a nine to 10 pound or possibly more. I'm gonna go ahead and say, you ready? All right, do it. We're gonna see the biggest bass of the tournament today. All right. You like that? I Very, like that. I, I like that. Very appropriate segue to the guy we're going to right now. Second place to yes. start the day, Justin Kerr. Now, this is a story here. Taking a look at it. Humminbird bird's eye view of Justin Kerr. And here's the thing, he is a, Bass Nation Championship qualifier, <laughs> only in title right there because yeah. here's the thing. Justin Kerr has been around a lot. I'm not going to say that he jackpotted that Bass, Bass Nation to get here. <laughs> Justin Kerr is a big-time Western pro. He, he is, and uh, I've heard his name, but yesterday was the first time I've had the pleasure to talk with him. We were all together interviewing him yesterday after he weighed in, and I had no idea he'd been fishing full-time professionally since 2003. 18 years this guy has oh, made yeah. his living yeah. fishing professionally on the West Coast. Oh yeah, that's fun. And the Bass oh, Nation is too much. Yes. Is The Bass Nation is the grassroots. It's the, yeah, it's right. the it's amateurs the, coming into the, the... The path with that one, one pathway to the classic for the amateurs and guys like Justin. This dude is not the <laughs> grassroots, okay? okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll call it nation in name only, the Nino. Right. Brett Height uh, texted me this morning. And he's good friends here with Justin, and he said he is one of the best fishermen he's ever known. He grew up in the same town with Aaron Martin, yeah, and update, uh, he's a hammer. Uh, fishing hasn't... Hasn't uh, really turned on yet. I've still been looking just for a big bite, so um, I'm just fishing big and trying to fish as thorough as I can and get back into this stuff. And I can fish this uh, rat pretty good, so it kind of is a, a bait that you can actually fish it kind of like a frog. Same same general spots. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just searching for uh, one good one this morning. We need him to show the viewers on we, FS1 that yes. rat. If we could get him to show that, would be incredible. Yes. Because that's not that's not a mouse. That's a <laughs> rat. It's just a small. It is a, <laughs> a small muskrat. Beaver. I love it. Go big or go home. Yeah, sure. I believe he called it a There's Woodrow a rat. rat. Here. Look at that thing. Rat in a tree is called a squirrel. <laughs> Everyone wanted to know. <laughs> but literally, you can throw it up there in the, the tight stuff, and it'll come right through it. Tommy, we saw a, It looks just like a muskrat. It does. It's a pretty good tool around spawning and post-spawn fish. Some I'd shoot with a 22. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs>
here's the thing. Justin Kerr not getting a lot of bites. Caught only four bass yesterday, but pretty impressive. Yes. Four bass that way just under 20 pounds Justin yesterday. Kerr. Very, very calm, dangerous fisherman. So, Mark, when we were talking to Justin Kerr yesterday, he said something that I don't know if I've ever heard before in, in our interviews. If I win the Classic, I might just retire. Yes. He, yeah. he, he's a nation <laughs> angler. He's the grassroots. <laughs> Right. Very legitimate, exactly what he's done, Go taking that pathway. And we have had a nation, a, a, a pure amateur nation winner before in the Bassmaster yes. Classic, the late Brian Kirk yes. from yes. 1994. Yes. Tommy, we've also seen a West Coast angler come over to the East Coast, fish in the College Series, win on a rat. Absolutely. It's, El Raton. it's one of those. It, the El Raton. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's, he doesn't know. It's just a giant. I could watch him all day rat. throw that big race. Yeah. Robbie Floyd getting it done out there near the dam, as always. Easy. Whatever it takes. Yep. Working double duty, fishing in my kayak tournament, I believe, <laughs> out there on Ray Roberts today. <laughs> what a different day it is. I don't yes. think we saw any of those kayaks out there yesterday morning. Super solid through all of this classic so far is Drew Cook. Former Rookie of the Year, Northern Florida native. This was earlier today with Drew. Drew Cook, one of the anglers making the flipping game work all week long so far. I only have one bowl on it. Well, we uh been kind of a slow morning. I've had three bites. We've got two two small keepers in the boat. We uh I came back in here and started same area just to see if without pressure, you know, I could have virgin bushes to flip, but we had some help from some some locals again. So we're going to flip around a couple hundred more yards and then we're going to check out, go run around, go fish some new water, and just see if we can't land land on them. We, uh, and all we need is to, to flip into the five right bushes, or really here, two or three bushes. It's got some big ones in it. That's why I was just saying, I don't understand why. The quality went down in here from practice, but these, there's two different types of bushes. There's like an azalea type bush, and then there's these wax myrtle bushes, and both of those are the have been the, the two best ones, but it seems like either an isolated bush or a bush that's on the inside of a point, on the inside of the point um, is where I get most of my bites. But you can still get a you know a random bite just down the bank, so it's not like you can just hop, hop all those areas you know fish points and backs of the guts. But you just gotta plug away. And I'm just gonna keep dobbing my my fighting frog and that nickels jig and see if we can run across a few. Might later on try to get way back in some of this stuff, some stuff that maybe people haven't flipped at yet, you know, try to get behind the bushes or something. And it seems like anywhere that the, the bank is, where the water stops, you know, the bank's closer is, is obviously better because they have less water to, to hide in. Drew Cook said he will flip bushes all day. Really his best opportunity for a big bag. Really that's all he's done the entire tournament. A great practice here. Drew Cook, his roommate, Drew Benton, having a great practice. But, but, but one of the things that he said, he's got to kind of mix in a lot of new water. Yeah. Areas where these caught him, where 
anglers have caught them on days one and two. They have been throttled, whether from other competitors or locals. These bushes have been hammered the last 48 hours. That's what he told us. The place where he yeah. caught the big ones on day one, seven shorts on day two. That's yes. the way this lake works. All the great stories here. Justin Curry, you know we're going to be on top of that story all day, representing the Bass Nation, which is the big tent. The big, You can be the club and the club level player. You can be a guy who's been fishing hard at the top level for years. You feel like Justin Curry is trying to jackpot a Bassmaster Classic is what you feel <laughs> like. <laughs> Throwing that big red, I, I agree with you. Hey, Cherry still on top, a healthy lead right there. But uh, Justin Kerr, we'll be watching him. His story is a great one. <laughs> it's the Bassmaster Classic, so I'm just I'm like happy to be here and through the Federation and Nation and you know spend years and years. Uh, I think I've been fishing for 23 years, so to have this uh, opportunity is is very humbling. The key is how you're going to win is catching a couple big ones a day. So um, I targeted that, and uh, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. So I got a little lucky today. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Championship day at the Bassmaster Classic. We have had a thoroughly, thoroughly great time here in the great city of Fort Worth, Texas. Great sports town, great destination for anyone who just wants to enjoy some real history of Texas and a modern side as well. A big town with a small town field in the Fort Worth Sports Commission. Visit Fort Worth, two organizations that have been so essential in making all this happen. We tip our hat. Whether it's a cowboy hat or whatever you got, we tip it to these folks right here. Had a great time. At the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. The Oklahoma angler Chris Jones has also been a huge part of the goings on here over days one and two from Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yeah, taking a look at his day yesterday. Another thing, really. Kind of eerily similar to what we saw with Steve Kennedy on day one, swimming a, a booyah jig. I, I believe Ronnie's got a lot of his baits that we're going to take a look at later on today. But yesterday, capitalizing on a flipping bite, yum, Christy Critter with a half ounce weight. And the other thing is that we have seen with Chris Jones, number one, great attitude, very calm coming into this championship Sunday. But what bit yesterday he put in the boat? Yes. Yeah, that, that one fish that we just saw just a minute ago was crucial to for him to be able to land that look like a yes. solid five pounder right out of the middle of that bush. The thing that really gets my attention though with Chris Jones, second right now unofficially to Hank Cherry, he yes. had two, maybe three times as many bites as Hank yes. Cherry did yesterday. Yes. This was earlier today with Chris Jones. He was Basket. able to Chris swim a jig and flip. Ooh. And, and get bites all day long. A yeah, lot more bites than Hank Terry. Huh? You ready? Uh, I mean, I started on my shad spawn place this morning and they were, it was going, there just wasn't no wind. It was just dead calm and I probably had 10 bites in 10 minutes and I just, or 20 minutes probably and I just, I caught one good one, I don't know, three pounder, but I, I lost two or three that were sure enough good ones, and they just, I know they're here. It's what I did later in the day, it was flipped, and I'm fixed to go, I'm fixed to start flipping, they just ain't getting my swim jig, and I don't know, it's just one of them deals where it's unfortunate we didn't have any wind this morning because the shad was really doing their thing, but and the bass were just getting too good a look at, at my bait. Even, I mean, that, I don't even know if they were eating the real shad. They, that, I seen three or four big ones chomping on gizzards and it looked like they were just blowing them out of the water and wasn't getting them. So I don't know if it's just one of them deals where they just ain't in the feeding mood and they were just, if you get it around them, it makes them blow it up. I've seen them do it that way. And I don't know, it's just, you know, you just gotta, every once in a while you can drop it on one's head and he'll eat it like he's supposed to. That one that I caught just choked it. Um, I just was trying to capitalize as long as I could. So I'm trying to run these little shady areas but they're I ain't a keeper 
I don't think. If he is, he's barely. Chris Jones fishing not too far. There he is. I've uh, been Cherry. catching me in sunny and dead slick, so I just come around the corner to try to find some 13 and a half. Get this, looking at our map, seven. Mary, that'll last a little longer. Seven out of your top ten are fishing that western bank of Ray Roberts, about a mile north of the marina, mile south. That area has been throttled the last two days from competitors and locals. It's just one of them deals where you just gotta, you, you gotta land it in them little cra cra cracks and crevices of them bushes. Because if you're out in open water, they get too good to look at. If you if you drop it in there where they're at and living, you got a better chance of of catching them and actually having them eat it. So it's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to catch a big one, you know, before the sun gets up and start having to slow down and flip. Chris Jones said, "If he won the classic today, he said I will absolutely take that invitation to the elites." Guaranteed. <laughs> Working man. So exactly. Regular job. And uh, 10 years he's been fishing with the Bassmasters, but only 19 events. He works it into the schedule when he can. Like Justin Kerr, he's pretty much the real deal. Yeah. Going to get out to Matt Airy right now. A lot of his work yesterday done with a frog. One fish in the live well so far. God, please stay on, please stay on. Come here, come here, come here. Yes! That makes up a little bit for that one that we lost this morning, but that is a beautiful fish. I don't want to say game changer because uh, I'm going to need a lot more than that, but hey, that may be the biggest one we weighed in this week, baby. <clears throat> makes me feel like this much better after that one this morning. I'd say four and three quarter. Half ounce flipping jig right there for Matt Arian. Hey now, yeah. that was a uh, big, big swing right there. Absolutely. For Matt Arian, I mean, he had to have one of those, or probably two, two or three of those, but one at a time and this early in the morning. Big, big swing for Matt Arian. Half ounce jig. Three fish that he weighed in yesterday came on a frog, but said that he saw some monsters swirl near it. So we were talking about pressure and ways some of these areas have really been beaten up. I'm starting to recognize a lot of these points that we see <laughs> others. That, that place has been fished a lot yes. all three days. We've seen yep. right where he's at. Good Get right there for Matt Arian. This was earlier today. <laughs> No, no. Oh. oh wow. Oh God. Oh, we need to see that oh, yeah. again. Hey, you sitting it. I look good. Never mind, hold on. Not a begging. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. I see. God, please stay on, please stay on. The one we just saw, Matt Airy, unofficially sitting two fish for seven God. pounds. And Come here. Cut into that Come lead here. big time, Z. From, it was about a six pound gap, and now it's only two and a quarter between Hank Cherry yes. and second. That fish right there, put him in second place, Ronnie. Gosh, that was a good one on the frog that he lost. It was. It really, I'd, I wouldn't mind seeing that again.
That fish, that's a very modest estimate at four and three quarters on that fish too. That's is it looks like a five for all of our hardcore bass fishing friends watching this. There is nothing better than a frog bite. Little bit pixelated. That is a big yeah. one. Mm. One of the things Matt Airy said, he said, with all the pressure that's been going on, I, I, you nailed it, David, with all of these main lake bushes, willow trees. You, Matt Airy said a lot of these giants later in the day setting up inside of the bush yeah, line. Yeah, he said that how he's, that's how he was going to differentiate himself from all that crowd yep. you were talking yes. about that's in there. Because we haven't seen any of those guys do no. that. Right. Or, or just one now and then. Certainly it's been all outer most edge. Most of them have been pressuring the outer edge. That's what he's doing here. He's on this inside just like you were talking about, Z. Wow. About two and a half pounds from the lead for Matt Airy right now. Just past the first hour of fishing and what we have seen so far. Reminds us a lot more of day number one than day number two. That is for sure fantastic stuff. You know, there. one of the things that we've watched with Hank Cherry every single morning, the first hour of competition, some of his key bites definitely that have been critical at, at day's end. So far today, that has not been the case for Hank Cherry. It has not, and 11 of his 17 pounds yesterday came within the first hour of yes. fishing. Even with the, the delay, he has not had that today. It is very concerning that he only had about six bites yesterday, and two of his biggest were in the first hour of his fishing. All right, we're putting the picture together. We always need the essential help of Ronnie Moore. He brought his screen of knowledge with him here to Fort Worth. Ah, That's I did, good. I did, Tommy. I brought it in my backpack, put it in my back <laughs> pocket, brought it down to Fort Worth for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. And we talked about some of the baits. A lot of these anglers fishing similar places, a lot fishing bushes. Some have been flipping. Some have been throwing a swim jig. And I'm going to go through the top four anglers a little bit more diverse than we expected after the day one weigh-in. And see Seeing Hank Cherry really lean on that jig early, also a bladed jig mixed in there too, and then that jerk bait on the dam. That's just what he. That's his comfort zone. If you don't know Hank Cherry, our classic champion from last year, that is his go-to. One of the best anglers of all time throwing a jerk bait. No shock that he's going to mix that in when he can, and it has worked out well for him. Catching a bonus fish or two every single afternoon. Then we go to Justin Kerr, jumping up with a giant bag yesterday, four fish for 19 pounds, and we got a little bit of a sneak peek this morning from it, throwing that West Coast style, that big wooden rat, which he said, hey, a rat in a tree is just a squirrel, basically. And then he's also mixing again a couple different types of bladed jigs as well uh, for different reasons, and we'll get him to break that down when he starts to get into that bite mid-morning. Then when we go to third, Steve Kennedy had been relying on that, sw on that swim jig, early in the morning on that shad spawn. And we saw yesterday with that two hour delay, really hurt his time there. Didn't catch many on it yesterday. And this morning has already ditched that and gone to his flip and bite. We will see if that white swim jig, swim jig even makes an appearance for Steve Kennedy for now till the afternoon. And then fourth place, Chris Jones, a rock solid. Yesterday, I would say, I would argue he was the best angler on Bassmaster Live for catching fish throughout the day. He didn't have a specific window of opportunity where he would get it done. It was from takeoff to when he checked in, he caught fish, and he did so on a half ounce swim jig and then also flipping a creature bait uh, half ounce as well, a couple different colors. So Chris Jones loves flipping bushes. A lot of these guys, we have some of the best anglers for close combat fishing today on Bassmaster Live. Thank you, Ronnie. Good stuff. Yes. Excellent, Good stuff. excellent hey, info buddy. to help us enhance the experience out here, which has been pretty impressive so far today. Hank Cherry started the day with uh, just under five pound lead. Well, now it's uh, windows kind of open yeah, again. Yeah, about uh, just under two and a half pounds is the lead right now over a Matt Airy, who holds the Berkeley Big Bass of the day so far. That's probably going to be Eclipse, but very, very essential fish for Matt Airy. Brock Mosley had a great day, great comeback day on yesterday. Cody Bird, the local, another great story we're probably going to be able to touch on before too long. So much on the way here. Championship Sunday at the Classic. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. It's all decided today, the World Championship in the sport of bass fishing. This is the final day of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. 
Hank Cherry started the day with the lead in his quest to go back to back. Two classic wins in a row. Matt Airy, Chris Jones, Steve Kennedy, Robbie Floyd is out on the water right now and he is with our leader, Hank Cherry. Probably a little bit of disappointment for the defending Bassmaster Classic champion, Hank Cherry, because his first spot only gave up one bass, a small one at that, less than three pounds for him, where he's caught six pounders, five pounders, and multiple fish in those areas on that first and second day. But now he's moving on. He's saying, I I've got to move it up a little bit. I'm going to you know, travel around. And typically, you know, on the first two days of the Classic, you're having to deal with 54 anglers in the field. But now at 25, it's not as crowded. Now, although he does have a lot of spectator boats behind him, there's no other angler in this particular area. Now, this might not be the exact spot, but it's the general area where Hank Cherry caught a 10-pounder on one of his first days in practice. The only thing is, if he keeps working around this corner, he is going to meet another angler in Chris Jones. That's been his most productive spot as well. But one thing about it with Hank Cherry, he knew that he was in the right places because those first days he kept finding out those guys at the top of the leaderboard are in the places that he was also wanting to get to. Stuff right there from Robbie, Robbie Floyd. Absolutely. Hank Cherry is the number one story and continues to be right now, although his lead has been uh, sliced into a little bit. Going to be a lot of dynamics, a lot of volatility up and down that leaderboard today. And Matt Harry has already given us a taste of that. Well, it's been going good and bad. Uh, the morning is, uh, you know, I've had two big bites. I've landed one. And the other one, unfortunately, was really, really big. <laughs> and uh, we just, pull, it pulled off for whatever reason. It was it was on a frog and, you know, it happens. I just, I, I felt like I got a good hook in him, but um, she got the best of me. So it is what it is. You're gonna lose fish fishing like this. So we got one good one in the box and a two pounder. Um, if I can get two or three more bites before, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I'll feel pretty good. Um, and then we'll, uh, We'll put that jig in our hand and, and go flip some willow trees and things like that throughout the day and try to catch a couple couple big ones. But, uh, you know, I've had quite a few bites actually on the frog this morning. A lot of fish aren't getting it, but a lot of them are small. Um, seems like the bigger ones, you know, they get it when they eat it, when, when they bite it. But um, overall, you know, it's, it's about what I expected. I expected, you know, hopefully to get a, a, a big bite or two. I started here today because I've caught a couple key fish here every day, but I haven't been here until 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I put it first in my rotation today, and this place has got, I mean, this this little area right here has got the potential to produce a 20 plus pound bag. It's It's got the fish here. Um, it's just a matter of they, they, you know, they're feeding first thing in the morning, then they kind of move around in these trees and bushes and they reposition. So you're liable to catch one, you know, you're liable to catch two off the same tree two hours apart. Um, you know, you catch one early and uh, pull back in here an hour or two later and catch one or two more. And they, they, they just move around in this stuff, you know, they seem to, seem to reposition in it every day. Seen a lot of activity here this morning, so that's been, that's, that's been real promising. Just a lot of bait, a lot of bait. No shad spawn, but just a lot of, a lot of bait. A little bit of chasing here and there. Well, lost fish, but a lot of magic today for Matt Airy, a well-respected pro, long-standing out here, third-year Bassmaster Elite Series and fishing in his second classic this time around and making some big inroads into Hank Cherry's lead. He, he definitely is, and I, I like his chances. I mean, he's made that move. He did put the one big fish in the boat. He had that other loss, unfortunately for him. But talking with him yesterday, he's doing something a little different, fishing back in inside of some of these willow trees and these bushes, and said he saw some really big fish yesterday afternoon. No doubt about it, and really, I think the story so far this morning, besides Hank Cherry, really you look at Chris Jones, you look at Drew Cook, that area has been throttled. I think you're starting to see all of that pressure has caught up to that half-mile stretch. For sure. You know, Tommy Sanders, there's something we haven't done. You know what that means. Oh, the music, yeah. You know oh, what yeah. it means, boy? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I do. Exactly right. Welcome to Texas, my friend. <laughs> Ray you. Roberts Lake. The Power Pole replay of the day thus far. Man, you wanted to see that big one caught on the frog with Matt Airy earlier today. Matt Airy but starting to push your leader a little bit. That's the one we wanted to see. 
It burns. It burns. <laughs> My feet are hot. I must jump. Right. <laughs> We've all been there. I don't know. What Not that in a Bass means. Master Classic, maybe. But right after there. that frog bite, Matt Harry backing it up with a very, very solid fish here on Ray Roberts. Please Getting it done on. with a five pounder. Putting himself within two and a half pounds of the lead right now. He does a great job playing this fish. Yes. After that loss, he was very careful and he did a Come great here. job. Oh, it burns. Good one right there for yeah. Matt Airy. <laughs> That's the powerful replay of the day, Tom Sanders. And I'm going to go as far as to say that one, my friend, that one will not hold. That makes up a ah, bit. Championship Sunday Bass Classic. This morning, but that is a beautiful fish. Yes, it is, Matt Airy. You are the power forward. Well, despite that, and he promised us a lot of frog in the day, too, uh -huh. so we're happy about that. Why don't we get back down to Chris Jones right now? Oh, uh, Chris Johnston, actually, right around the corner from Chris Jones. Chris trying to become the first Canadian to win a classic. Little guy. It's number one, though. Boy, not a big one, but that is fun. That is that fun is to fun. watch. Frog and a Strike King Rage Bug. Same thing his brother's been throwing. Um, not a whole lot going on. I, uh, I got one close to two on a frog, and I, I lost a two pounder that I thought was going to come in the boat. It set the hook, come out of the bush, and just went to boat flip him, and it pulled out. But it's been a slow morning. Um, just, I kind of tried frogging, buzz baiting a little bit this morning, got that one on the frog, but. Um, nothing great now. Now I got to put my head down and go to work. Just gonna flip the rest of the day pretty well. And the last two days, I don't didn't really have a fish in the first two hours, so I'm not uh, I'm not panicking yet. But I still need to get a couple fives today. I think if I want to have a chance at catching Hank, so they're in here. And any flip you can get one. Just got to get them out of here. That's for sure. It's not easy. Seems like they're getting further and further back in. The water's actually risen even more, so you can, like, the water's going back even further, so that might be spreading the fish out a little more, making it so you can't even get at some of them. Oh, that is a good look at that old shoreline. That's basically where his boat is at right there. Yeah, and, and we see this marine on that west side. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of these anglers in the background, and it's uh, you, you understand why the bite has slowed down in this area. It's, it's been throttled. No you know, and the other thing. We're actually going to make a little move here. The benefit of that area, that's where a lot of the local tournaments go out of. There's a lot of release fish there, a big population of bass. But, you know. Talking to Lee Livesey, he said, I agree with you. That's certainly the reason. It's surprising there's no more tournaments here than there are. I agree. He was like two or three decent-sized tournaments a year. And we made a comment that, that this lake doesn't get a lot of pressure. That's relative. And here's what I mean by this lake doesn't get – of course it gets – it's Texas. You're just outside of Fort Worth. The difference is it doesn't get a lot of pressure compared to the Gunnersville's, to the Lake Force of right. the world. Right, exactly. Hank Cherry still hanging on to that lead right now. Matt Airy on the move, and Chris Jones, Steve Kennedy. Chris Johnston we saw right there, still trying to get something to ignite. In that special spot, he's got a lot of confidence in. Todd Ott with a couple of fish this morning. Lots of movement going on here. It's really getting started with Championship Sunday. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Right here, right here. This is what I'm trying to visualize. This is where I want to be. <laughs> Sorry, go. <laughs> there he is. That's a big one, too. With the bites I had, I had the opportunities to lead today, and 
and I have to believe if I go after it, I think I can do it tomorrow. So I, I have to execute. I need to, that's my word. I need to execute tomorrow. Dude, I'm going to have panic attacks about that one for years. <laughs> my whole season has been a roller coaster ride. My whole life, it seems like. But, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the nature of our sport, man. It's, it's hard for one guy to stay on top of it. You're dealing with Mother Nature, and damn, it's. Could have cost me the classic again. Dang it. That is absolutely the best way to characterize it, his story here in this tournament and, and the sport of bass fish. It, it is so weird watching that fish loss. Every time you watch it, you're like, oh, stay hooked. S stay hooked. Yeah. Yes. There are our four at the top of the leaderboard right there. Hank Cherry trying to repeat. Matt Airy caught the biggest fish so far that we have seen. Really changed his uh, aspect. And Steve Kennedy. Still going through all the ups and downs. Chris Jones, the journeyman, trying to change his life. Looking at Hank Cherry right here, fishing his deep dive and Berkeley stun a jerk bait. That bite is going to have to happen for him to win this tournament. Absolutely, and, and I was uh, a little worried for Hank with these slick conditions, but it's good to see yeah. there is a little chop there at the dam, the, the direction of the wind. Uh, that's a good thing because it has to happen for him. I agree 100%. Yeah. And it was not going to be good if it was slick calm on yep. the dam. Hank Cherry made the comment, look, they live on the dam. They live on every dam in the country. If I'm going to win this, that bite needs to transpire. Going to get over to Scott Canterbury live. I've been alternating uh, between a half ounce jig and a five eighths. Got a pocket chunk uh, on that five eighths and 25 pound test line, which slows the rate of fall down. But in these thicker bushes and limbs and stuff, that heavier jig will, you know, it'll pull it on down to the bottom and get down where the fish are at. So I haven't had any issues. I've lost one fish this week. Day one, I lost a fish. And I mean, I think it was a, a three pounder and I weighed in a one seven that day. So it hurt a little bit. But uh, when you're fishing these bushes and stuff, I mean, I'm using 25 pound, 100% fluorocarbon from P-Line and uh, 20 pound on the half ounce jig. But I mean, you're going to lose a few, but that's the only one that I've lost so far. I'm hoping I can keep, don't lose any today. And you know, if I get a couple of those, like I said, get a couple of the right bites. I mean, we're going to run a lot of some new water today that I haven't fished during the tournament. so. It'll be fun. We're going to have a good time with it. That's a good one there. That's 25 pound test line right there with a 5 8 Canterbury flipping jig. And that's why I use 25. That's a good one. That's what we're here for, five of them. Good fish right there for Scott Canterbury. So the only thing he's been missing so far today, this is earlier today, only thing he's been missing, he said, I have not had one of those giant Ray Roberts mm -hmm. uh, studs. He goes, everybody else in the top five, They've caught one of those six to eight pounders. He said, I've just never had that opportunity. It's, it's really amazing. He said even in practice, he did right. not catch anything over five pounds. A lot of fours and, and a number of fives. But he said, I have not had that big bite. That last That's fish from man. Canterbury that we just saw, this big one, put in as a 314, basically a four pounder. Pound right he's got four for eight test. pounds, and he's cut that lead. He's now into third. Wow. Just under three pounds back. He started the day eight pounds, 13 ounces behind them. Let's get some bonus coverage now. Oh! Dangerous, dangerous character always. Anytime they tee it up with the Bass Masters, Patrick Walters. Uh, Patrick, uh, today, uh, point out the differences between today and yesterday and, and how you intend to capitalize on it. You know, we didn't have that weather delay this morning. That was the biggest thing in a lightning storm. That lightning storm yesterday really just, them shallow fish do not like that. 
Um, got started off. I got me one good one this morning already. Uh, but you got to fish clean this week. I'm flipping bushes mostly. Um, and I've already lost two good ones this morning. Dude. The bite's been good early. And if you don't capitalize, it makes it for a grinder all day long. You know, The first day I had 22 pounds and I caught them all before 9 o'clock. So it's you got to make hay when you can. So, Patrick, I've got to ask you. I know you're at, you're comfortable up there flipping those bushes, but how long are you going to stay there? And when are you going to go offshore and fish some of that timber with, where you use your sonar and your forward-facing sonar so well out there with a jerk bait? And we saw you even yesterday a little bit with a drop shot. How long before you're going to go offshore? It's probably going to be about like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. You know, when the shallow bite just gets to that, that lull where, I mean, I don't know why they stop biting up shallow like they do, but during that time frame is probably when I'm going to go offshore till about 12, 30, 1 o'clock, um, and then that shallow bite picks back up. There's just there's so many fish on the bank, and there's big ones on the bank. So if you can just capitalize in that lull period, that's really going to be the, the ticket. But I went and checked some of it yesterday, and I just I didn't even see any out there was the problem. Um, I'm going to go check some different spots today. Um, just kind of you got to keep them on us. That's all we're going to do. We're going to flip as many times as we can and see if we can set the hooks some, some time today. And then we're going to go look at some timber and see how that goes. Patrick, you were a little bit elusive after practice talking about that offshore bite. Everybody knows that you kept it honest throughout your practice. Did you see similarities here that you saw when you dominated at Lake Fork? A little bit, but not a whole bunch. They were in timber, yes. But they were on certain isolated trees where there was all these big bushy trees, where and there were singles. They were just individual fish. Where at Lake Fork, it'd be four, four and five fish sometimes on a tree. You know, it'd be a group of them. So it was almost easier to get them to bite when you found them at Fork. Um, but here they're just the population in Lake Ray Roberts isn't as high as say Lake Fork, but there's quality here. And so when that happens just you don't get that competition effect so it's a little bit harder to get them to bite so that's why that kind of timber deal has been a little bit tougher but when the lake is four foot high majority of the fish tend to head to the bank thank or get you. at least closer to it thank you patrick walters and roll tide my friend <laughs> patrick walters fishing his way back into the top 10 on this day to the surprise of absolutely nobody Exactly. This shows the volatility of Ray Roberts this week. He was second place after day one. He caught one small keeper yesterday. He actually caught two keepers, had to throw one back because it ended up not measuring one keeper and only fell down to 14th place. That is a great shot of Hank Cherry, your leader right now, Humminbird Bird's eye view. Hank Cherry said that entire face of the dam here on Ray Roberts all looks the same, but there's two key rock outcroppings where he has seen a lot of fish, caught a lot of fish, but I guess the surprising thing is Hank Cherry was very uh, oddly vocal about how great his practice was. He had quite a few pictures on his phone of six to eight pounders off of this dam through, through practice and said, I didn't even fish it long. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, I agree 1,000% for Hank Cherry to win today. It has to happen. It's going to have to happen right here. I, I fished along this or rode with Clark Winlet on the last official practice day, and was he fished the dam area here for just a little bit. And it's really good rocks, those big boulders out to about 10, 11 feet, and then it's sand. It's just not much. It's just that one line, and I guess Hank found two places where maybe they, there's some rocks that push out just a little farther, just a little different feature along the dam. But the other thing that he said about it, and really it's, it's a very simple statement. He said, look, in the state of Texas and everywhere else in the country, fish live on, on the face of dams, okay? If you look at a lot of the tournaments that we've ha had in this state, I think Jerry hooked up. Oh, boy. Here is real clicking. He's engaging. In, oh, that's why. <laughs> I knew it was a fighter. He's foul hooked. It's like a 
keeper, though. Just checking, just to make sure. Oh, yeah, 16 inches. Putting on number three. Spotted bass. Spotted bass. Wow. <laughs> Didn't see that as being a factor in this tournament. No, Ray, probably. Ray Roberts actually has all three. Chad Pipkins caught a nine pound largemouth or an eight pound largemouth yesterday and also had a two and a half pound smallmouth that he did yeah. not show. So we have all three species represented here. We heard that there's actually some five to six pound smallmouth in here. All have to be 14 inches to be legal keepers here. Three days of the tournament, 25 anglers still out there. The dream in mind, the highest achievement, single tournament achievement in the sport of bass fishing. Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic Championship Sunday. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Tonight in primetime, the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is on Fox. Catch all your favorite pups as they take center stage in Best in Show. It all happens beginning at 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. This is the big show in the sport of fishing, the number one tournament, the Bassmaster Classic. Well, well into our second hour of fishing, and there is your leader there, Hank Cherry. Trying to win back-to-back -back classics. Just caught fish number two. If you look at a lot of the tournaments, though, that we've had in the state of Texas, whether it's been Conroe, Falcon, we, we had a major. I think what was it, Eagle? Eagle Mountain, Eagle Mountain, and Eagle Benbrook. Mountain, and Benbrook, Benbrook yeah. yeah, yeah, here on uh, the Trinity River. Almost every one of those tournaments, you have seen top finishes off of the face of the dam, and that's the one thing Hank Cherry said. Look, it does not matter where you're at in this state; fish just live there, and this dam has not seen a lot of pressure all week long, like the other areas that we've been on. But can you imagine if you were in the Classic last year and Hank one Cherry? Little one. One little one. One keeper. Hank Cherry won on the closest rip rap to the takeoff. And you're in this one Bassmaster girl. Classic, and if Hank Cherry wins <laughs> right. on the closest rip rap from the takeoff, you go, wow, maybe one day I should try that. <laughs> What's incredible is that I got reports on Friday, the first day of practice, that five to ten anglers started because it's so close to the ramp. They started their official practice days on Friday there. And I feel like when you start there, you have a lot of time to figure out other things. And you forget what you may have seen or you didn't give it enough chance. And Hank always lets, a couple it, of them. lets it play out. Miraculous three-pounder, like yesterday. Hank Jerry caught a three, three-and-a-half-pounder late day number two That's off of the dam. Here we go. Might be a drum. Now I caught a catfish. Stunner. Catfish right there for Hank Cherry. Gonna get back up into the east arm of Ray Roberts with Steve Kennedy, one fish in his live well. It looks like the exact row of trees yesterday where he caught a good one, caught a four-pounder, lost that giant. Three-quarter ounce D&L jig. There he is. That's a good one, too. Oh, boy. 
Keep him down. Oh, boy. No. <sighs> Solid four. I don't know. Got to catch your bites. If the next one jumps, throw me in, please. <laughs> This is how you feel for that. I, that's just unfortunate there. I mean, he good solid hook set. He's got to get the fish out of the tree. You'll see right here when it first surfaces, it, he had to get it up to get it out of the tree, and he's on the way to the boat, and the fish jumps. I don't see anything he could have done any differently there. Both fish losses. Yesterday, his last fish on the timber, that eight-pounder, didn't look like he – I mean, it didn't even – wasn't even fighting when it came off. And then this one, four-pounder as well. Davey has talked about this one quite a bit this morning. I, I hate to even go there, oh but I will say this. Since I've been cover, working with you guys on Bass Live, Steve Kennedy, when he gets a big fish on, he gets it real close to his rod tip in a hurry and, and spends a lot of time going back and forth like this. When you change directions with that fish, that hook has to turn. And every time you do that, you're just making that hole that you penetrated with that hook barb bigger. Yeah. You look at that right there. Okay, what just what happened yesterday and what happened today. That could have cost me the classic again. Dang it. That is about 12 and a half pounds oh, geez. to the bottom line. He'd be three pounds ahead in the lead right now. Ay, ay, ay. Steve Kennedy want to see the way he's, there's no drag. There's no, it's coming to the, the rod tip. Gets it there and then turns it. And had it not come off then, he would have turned it three or four more times. And day one, he lands them all and day, three, yeah. day two and day perfect. three, lose, you know. And we talked about that. He, he had perfect execution on day, on day one. one. Yeah. And, and that was the reason he was the leader. We've seen, you know, Matt Airy. Had he not lost the fish, we saw him lose this morning. He's probably leading the event right now. And, I mean, it's and the part other thing, of it. it. Really, if you look at yesterday's fish, today's fish, it's you're going to lose fish in hardwoods, man. But here's yeah. the thing. The Neither line. of those fish, uh, both, both of those fish, they came out. I mean, they were not hung up. Well, the, the, the big one, you, you see this row of trees and the fish that he just lost, he had to get – that fish was in the tree and there were a lot of other trees around. The big fish lost, I only see the one piece of wood that he got the bite in. You don't see all right, these other right, trees right. like you see here and like you saw um, when he just lost that fish a few minutes ago. And it's one of those things that when that fish surfaces and jumps like it does at the boat, do you swing an eight-pounder in? And if it breaks the line, we're like, man, he should have fought. you know. And so it's – as an angler in that moment, you're like – Oh gosh! Yes. It's I don't have it. It has me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And sometimes, even for the best in the world, that happens. Yes, it does. It's the it's it's the call and the timeout when you don't have any timeouts left. You know, in the moment, you know you're best in the world, and you just ah, made a mistake. You know, Steve's one of one of the most popular anglers with Bassmaster Live fans throughout the years. He's a fun guy to be around. He's a little bit of a hot mess. But he has come so close to winning this tournament before, and you just feel like, man, it is going to be hard to rebound from losing a yeah a four to five and a possible eight to nine. The the one thing I always try to tell myself to recover from that because uh, you know, if you fish tournaments, you've experienced that. You hate four tapping in a Bassmaster Classic, but you've got to be positive about it and say at least I'm getting the bites. I just you know, I've got a lot of time left to fish today. I need to get four more bites and put them in the boat. When you really feel deflated is when you can't get a bite. That's worse than losing them. When you can't get a bite, you know you don't have a chance. Steve Kennedy still has a chance to win the Bassmaster Classic. Hmm. 
of our most uh, flamboyant performers here at the Bassmaster Classic has been Matt Robertson, the angler from Kentucky. Our own Robbie Floyd is out there with Matt right now. I know you've watched the Dukes of Hazards, that intro song, just a good old boy, never mean to no harm. Well, that's Matt Robertson. You know, I talk to a lot of fans at the Bassmaster Classic, and they go, that's my guy, somebody that I can root for. And it's really cool. And I, and I see his boat. You look at it as he's fishing these little pads here. Ugly stick. I went, Matt, why ugly stick? That's not a professional rod. Or you wouldn't think it would be. He goes, I'm here to prove them wrong. He said, you can go out there and use some of my glass rods for 40 bucks. You can get this carbon top-of-the-line rod from ugly stick. $80, keeping it inexpensive. He says, I'm your guy to represent this brand. And I promise you, if you walk the expo with the Bassmaster Classic, there's a lot of Matt Robertson fans. He already has two bass today. Not much weight, about four and a half pounds. But he's trying to win one for you, trying to win one for me. And if you don't believe me, uh, you know, earlier in this tournament, he actually got a tattoo on the side of his arm because he knew to fish this Bassmaster Classic, he had to have the bass patch. So he tattooed the patch. And he has an American flag. He said, I didn't have to get the flag. I just wanted to get it. Thank you, Robbie Floyd. We first oh, met Matt uh, two classics ago. Man, he arrived here full-blown and ready to go as far as entertainment goes. I, did, listen, I, I made the comment, we need a camera on Matt Robertson, even if he's in last place. <laughs> Well, he's turned out to be a guy, absolutely, especially at the weigh-ins, you absolutely cannot take your eyes off. Matt Robertson making a big splash in this world. You know, the lights, the music, and the fans. Now I know why people become rock stars. Man, I don't even think about the trophy or anything uh, before the tournament. Um, no, I wouldn't say that. Man, I just go out there. I don't, I don't, if you think about what you might win, the money you're gonna win, the trophy, I'm not, I'm not all about the glory. If I win this tournament, I'm not even gonna hold the trophy up. Uh, I'm gonna have a fan come up and some hardworking American who don't get to do this every day. And I'm gonna let them hold the trophy up and I'm gonna go set, you know, set in the crowd and be a fan. Uh, I might give it back to the working people because that's what I am. The 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. And by Skeeter Boats. Well, we continue our live coverage of the Championship Day, World Championship crown today. Coming up the weigh in at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Bassmaster.com at the new Dickies Arena, a very important new addition to the landscape here in Fort Worth. And there's just something about the classic weigh in that's been the focus of it, just part of that rich tradition of this one of a kind event in American sports. And we're looking forward to that, but we've got plenty of live coverage. So much can take place between now and then to affect the final outcome. Hank Cherry Jr. won this thing 14 and a half months ago, right before all sports in America went on hold the very week before. And he's looking to do it one more time. He holds a four pound lead. It was the week before everything the, stopped. Absolutely. Listed, no Every sport it. went on hold after that. Glad we got that classic in. And really, if you watch this day, man, I'm thinking about it during our commercial break. Yesterday when Steve Kennedy lost that big one, he was a basket case behind the stage. Guaranteed it is all in his head now. Hard for it not to be. Very hard for it not to be. What you putting on, man? This is a stun of jerkbait by Berkeley. It's the one we came out with. It's the same, same color. I think I cracked that when I hit that rock a little while ago. I didn't like his fall. Much better. Color is stealth shad. For the viewers at home, you're watching and what's the difference in certain baits or why anglers are certain confident in things. This is like a pitcher. I mean, a pitcher who throws the heat. His fastball is his best pitch. Oh, Hank is fish are tough on jerk bait. one hundred percent comfortable locking that in his hand yes. the rest of the day on the biggest day in the sport. I noticed it was getting a little deeper because I was hitting more rocks. 
This one's just kind of sitting there like it's supposed to. I think Jerry had a big hand in des designing that exact jerk bait. Yeah, we talked to, to him about it yesterday and the day before. We and he's like, to connect to a 100 percent, it's my bait. Yes, I, I designed it or helped design it in a big way. He's got a little, a lot of subtleties he does, whether he does something to the front hook or the back hook, depending on the time of year, water temperature, or the bait that he's trying to imitate to make it sink a certain way or where it sinks down and stays and suspends or if it floats up a certain way. It's like we said, if you tinker with your equipment enough and you know it, you can dial it in for any situation to make it work. Same with Steve Kennedy in the swim jig. Yes. Exactly. And I, I, I got one of his Kennedy swim jigs. No, you didn't. You I absolutely you did. did. I, I did. Did you I, feel honored and I, privileged? He was behind the stage yesterday before he came through the tunnel, and I said, Steve, just give me one of those jigs. I might use it on the set. It was more of a selfish situation. I just really wanted it. I just wanted to bother him. <laughs> it, 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 it took a while. Yeah, he had he, a what's amazing is he had a bunch of really, really gnarly beat up ones, just a couple strands left. I said, just give me that beat up one. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps his face yes. close to the chest. Oh, yeah. just to watch him palm them in the boat <laughs> yes, when, yes. whenever we cover him is, is uh, quite. We got another little group of waypoints down there a little ways, too, from where we caught him. And he will run from you. He will run from you if you ask him about his baits after weigh-in. Right down there about 100 yards. Wanted to share something. They have three days of practice, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then they have media day and other things, Wednesday final practice, and then they fish Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So practice is over a week ago for these guys. I like to check in with a few anglers. You guys do as well. You have your go-to guys who can – break down the lake for what's going on. I texted Hank Cherry, our leader, and just said, how was it on Sunday evening after practice was done? He said, almost too good to believe, best practice I've ever had. And I said, that's so yeah. awesome. And he said, I pray it doesn't change. Wow. It has certainly changed wow. with the storms. The sunshine has popped out, the heat. But he has adjusted well every day because of it. Absolutely. And really, it went from, you know, there was, we talked about it on, on day one, you know, there was reports of guys that were getting 20 to 30, possibly 40 bites a day. And granted, a lot of those, they were shaken off. So you didn't know if they were. But these guys also know the way a fish bites if it's a good one. Anybody got a chicken to sacrifice? Boy, Lake Ray, Ray Roberts has tightened up a little <laughs> bit since <laughs> practice. <laughs> So it makes you wonder uh, about shaking fish off or, you know, not setting the hook in practice, and we've all done it. But so many of the anglers are fishing that western shoreline, particularly around the marina. I wonder how many people shook off the exact same fish <laughs> and said, man, that's a good one. I'm going to start here. I mean, if you think about yeah, it, it right. could be five people shake off the same yes. fish and put a waypoint That kind of messes up the data, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then on day one it gets caught in the first five minutes. <laughs> It's gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. White bass. Look at that. Jeez. See our TH Marine weather watch right there. 93 to good and warm here. First really hot week in Texas. We arrived for for the classic. Wind very much diminished from the first two days northeast at five miles an hour. You could feel it yesterday That's afternoon, five, too. So I think that was with Todd Otten. EK was with him, and he said Todd had two rods on the deck. They call me Two Rod Todd. <laughs> Got to Oklahoma angler Chris Jones having a fantastic classic. Really a man on a mission this week. A lot slower this morning for Chris Jones. A lot of bites yesterday, though, throughout the day when other anglers were struggling. Oh, do I got her? I don't think I got her. You see it? <clears throat> I ain't got her. 
Gosh, dang it. That was a big bacon. Mm. She exploded up like I was thinking, like she should have eaten the swim jig, but she had it. I don't understand her just not wanting to eat. Dang it. Should have given her just a second more, I guess. I thought she, I mean, I felt her pulling. Yesterday. He landed that five, five and a half pounder all in the middle of the bush, had to go up in there and uh, what a difference it makes. I mean, that's a difference in somebody winning or losing this event. We open this classic Absolutely. with exactly what we are seeing transpire. Whoever executes in this tournament would hold that trophy. And so far, it has been one man. The missed fish factor is looming large. It always looms large in a classic, but here it's kind of exaggerated because of the nature of Lake Ray You're Roberts. just not getting enough bites to catch up from misses like we're seeing from Steve Kennedy, Chris Jones. These are giant bass. You cannot replace a seven and, to nine pounder. And you mentioned those two, but we've talked to a lot of other anglers that haven't been on camera that have the stories of losing three six pounders in a day. Corey Johnson. Can't do that, can't do that. Two losses for Steve Kennedy that we have seen on camera that would basically have him in the lead right now, rather than eight pounds back. In the biggest tournament of the year. Championship Sunday. A lot more to show you when we get back. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. <laughs> it's a marathon, uh, you know, hands down this tournament and I knew coming in when I saw our schedule of events and, and you know, our shuttle going to the boat yard at 3.30 every morning leaving the hotel and I've gotten up at 3 a.m. the last two mornings. Uh, it's a long drive there, it's a long drive back and uh, it, it's, it's an endurance race so it's more, uh, you know, I compare it more to a marathon and I, I think, uh, you know, people say this isn't a, a, a contact sport or a physical sport or whatever you want to call it. That's absolutely not the case because, you know, you come out here and, and you get up at 3 a.m. and you fish for, you know, you fish your tail off for, for eight hours on the water when it's 95 degrees outside and you drive an hour and a half back to weigh in. And then, uh, you know, you get in bed at 8, 9 o'clock if you're lucky. Uh, more like 10 o'clock for me last night. Fell asleep about 10.30, got up at 3 and did it over again. So um, definitely a marathon. Matt Airy fishing in his second Bassmaster Classic, currently residing in second place in this one. He finished 43rd in that first one uh, 14 months ago, as we say. Uh, the classic experience is a real deal, isn't it, Davey? It certainly is, but I'll say this. You remember it if you win the Bassmaster Classic or if you finish close to last. A lot of people will remember your name. But here's what I want to talk about just a little bit. Z, you, you nailed it. We're talking about execution coming into this event. Hank Cherry is leading the event because he has been flawless. A lot of the reason, in my opinion, that he's been able to put so many fish in a boat, he fishes those thick willow trees and bushes early in the morning when those fish are chasing, and he can get them to bite on the outside of that cover, and then he leaves there and he's fishing offshore. That's a big reason a lot of these other anglers are losing fish during the day you had to put your bait in the middle of those bushes, and your landing percentage is just going to be a lot less. We talked about all three days of the Classic. It's like it's their own process, right? All three days are so drastically different. Fair to say here on Championship Sunday, the champion so far is Ray Roberts. Oh, yeah. Ray Roberts has won so far today, and really that door – and we're not manufacturing drama on this one – that door is absolutely still wide open. Yeah, Chris Saldane put it best. I thought of the first day of the classes. He said this is a three one-day tournaments yes. back to back. You, it's almost a reset every day just because of the volatility of this fishery, and that's what makes it so much fun to watch for all of us. And you can only imagine what it's going to come down to at the end of it all. How close it might be. Back out to Steve Kenny. I'm telling you, like, the way he is fishing is the 
scariest way as far as to catch a big stringer on this. To catch a 30-pound yes. bag, that's what you do in Texas. Yes. And, and that's why I mentioned earlier, he still can win this tournament. Absolutely. What he's doing, sure. if he can put four more fish in the boat, fishing the way he's fishing, he'll have a great chance to win. <laughs> that's awkward. Wow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was so awkward, and I catch it. <laughs> it was awkward that we talked about the big bass that he was going to catch. <laughs> he thumped it. <laughs> hey, listen. They always thump it. <laughs> That's why those 30-pound stringers live out there. They eat those things. <laughs> and it had him wrapped up for a second. Had he lost that fish, we would have all thought it was another 8-pounder. <laughs> I know. I know. He thumped it. And I was so out of position. If you're within six to eight pounds of the lead and you haven't filled your limit, you are still in it. We've mentioned that you guys just mentioned big fish capabilities. We saw an eight and a six and a half on day one. We saw three or four, maybe five over seven yesterday. So yesterday's big fish was much more readily available than day one. Ronnie, I'm getting anxiety when Steve Kennedy sets the hook right now. I know, I know. I want to reel it for him. One two-pounder in the boat for Chris Jones. Wow. Finally, at least a keeper anyway. <clears throat> it just ain't biting very good. I'm pretty certain he's 15. So, just slow, brutal slow. And I've, I've seen enough to have 20 pounds this morning. They just ain't biting. The one I lost around the corner was a stinking stud while ago. Young Christy Critter on a half ounce weight. Day one of Booyah Mobster Swim Jig. Ronnie showed those a little that bit That one did earlier. the same thing that other one did while ago, just swimming with it. I mean, not nothing. Can't even feel it swimming with it. Line's just moving. Back down right now. Matt Airy, two fish in his boat, one big one. And one big loss. One this big morning. loss, yes. A big loss. And you asked this, Davey, Matt Airy started the day six pounds, 13 ounces behind. Normally, after a four-day event, that's it's hard to make that up. You've, you've had too many opportunities and you haven't came through. Three-day event, still doable. God. Good one here. Mm. Yes. He is in this. Yeah, we Boy. talked during the break a minute ago. You said it. You <laughs> totally said it. believe he can win. Whoa. And part of that's obviously from what he's done this morning, but talking to him last night when we interviewed him after the weigh-in, he, oh, he yeah. got a little something he different going this. on and had quite a few bites yesterday and saw some fish that he didn't catch. Scared me, too. How uh, big? Probably three and a half. Probably. I mean, it could be a touch bigger, but... Hey, look, I, my excuse is my wife. If you put 20 pounds on there and I weigh in 19, she's going to be pissed. <laughs> I get it, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good shout it. out to the wife. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Emily, just threw you under Maybe. the bus. <laughs> 
That's cool. So how about Thank this? You. For the first time probably since right, day one weigh-in, we have two anglers still within half a pound of the lead. Wow. It has been bigger than a wow. half pound lead since day one of official weigh-in. I, uh, Luz has launched actually a new signature series this week. Well, that is a great, great aerial. Matt Airy said a lot of his big Especially. bites. Yesterday came on the inside of a lot of those main lake points where a lot of guys weren't concentrating on where they were focused more on the outside. I saw that transpire in practice a little bit when I went with Walters on Wednesday. There was a little pond in the back that he had, yes. to, he had to shimmy through some bushes to get back there. Tied on a frog his first cast in some of that shallow, more like shoreline grass big blow up on a frog and he said up oh, I'm putting that up that's that's something that could happen Tommy we got ourselves a ball game right now absolutely you talk about the most consistent guy over the first two days that's Matt Airy 15 pounds on the nose each and every day and boy he is he's up in his game today that's not good news for the rest of these that, players and that does not reflect that last catch right right absolutely as, as Ronnie said he's very very close to our leader Hank Cherry tighter and tighter and we're not even into the Second quarter of this ball game. We're just barely into it right now. So much yet to come. Lake Ray Roberts, the classic. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Today we crown the world champion. Hank Cherry trying to make it two in a row. That's the big story. Cherry with the lead as we started this day. Pretty good lead uh, in the neighborhood of five pounds. Look what's happened right now. North Carolina veteran Matt Airy has put the pressure on, and we fully expected this to happen. Hank Cherry is not going to be allowed to walk over to a second win at the Bassmaster Classic. He's going to have to earn it, and that's great news for all of us. It's going to be fun to watch. That is absolutely what we wanted coming into Championship Sunday. Just imagine if he would have connected with that one oh, first wow. frogfish. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can't talk about it enough. The reason Hank Cherry is still holding on to the lead, although it's very narrow lead right now, is because he's been able to put every fish in the boat. Well, we got uh, a lot more action on the way, really just into the second quarter. Hey, this Tom. was a four-quarter game, so you know what's happening. Yeah, I do know oh, what's but, happening. Oh, that's happening, too. I'll tell you what's happening. It's the Mercury move of the day, and you have to give it up. I mean, we were kind of looking at Justin Kerr. We were looking at Steve Kennedy here on this final day. We, we thought, Matt Airy, hey, come on, he's in the mix a little sure. bit. 15-pound bags, back-to-back, -back, days one and two. The Mercury move of the day really has been when he has transitioned to this frog in this event. Big miss early, backing it up with a big fish flipping. And here's the cool thing, gang. If you're watching this at home, your Mercury move of the day possibly could come later today. Matt Airy said his biggest frog bites yesterday came after 12 o'clock. And, and that's been a time frame when a lot of the anglers have struggled to saying. get a single bite. I see. Big fish right here for Matt Airy. Half ounce jig, kind of bouncing back and forth between Come that here. jig Come here. and that frog. Yes! Yeah. And here's the thing, you know you're doing something right in the Bassmaster Classic. When spectators start to show up, they are on their way to Matt Airy. Only three fish in his live well, a lot of room to grow right now. Yeah, and I've been there. Um, you think you've got a lot of fans, and you let someone else take the lead, you'll find yeah. out they're fans of the leader, <laughs> rightfully so. Matt Airy getting lots of bites today. Of course, we know Hank Cherry's story living on very few bites every yes. day. That's another dynamic that we're going to deal with. And again, as an angler, Matt Airy knows he's in this oh, yeah. ball game when all those boats yes. start showing up. 
absolutely. You start getting past 10, 15, 20 spectator boats, you know something's happening, especially if Robbie Floyd shows up. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it's not like he's got 20 pounds and he knows, oh, I've got the biggest right. bag of the day. Right. It's, oh, I've only got three keepers or right. two keepers, and wow, it's really tough today. Excellent point. If he was topped out with five fish, and you say topped out, you're not topped out at 20 pounds, Ray Roberts, but you know you've got five quality fish, you'd be hard to upgrade. But when you've only got three in the live well and you start seeing all these boats gravitate towards you, it's a good thing. We've had a few of these tournaments this year, if you're watching here on FS1. We've had a few of these tournaments that we've talked about where you, going into that last day, you had that feeling. I thought about it this morning. You had that feeling whoever catches the biggest bag on the final day is going to win this tournament i thought about it when we were leaving the hotel and here's the thing you're dealing with guys in the top 10 that are fishing big fish techniques whether you look at steve kennedy a cody bird who's fishing offshore a guy that's got a frog lock locked in his hand justin kerr justin kerr he's throwing a, a rat the size of a dachshund <laughs> You, somebody's going to bust a big bag doing one of those techniques. And it might be Hank Cherry. It might be yes, Hank Cherry. Yes, yes, yes. Missed it. Just shanked it. We've seen him catch some big bags doing exactly what he's doing oh also. Oh, boy. He shanked it. Something Lee Livesey said to us when we were in the boat. It's all coming back now. It's coming by. It's coming by. <laughs> it's coming by. He, he made a comment. Somebody could win this tournament on a frog. Remember that? He did. He absolutely You're exactly said right. that. He did. Lee Livesey, so much knowledge of this lake, like for every lake in Texas, <laughs> we're goofing around. He said, I'm telling you, somebody could win this tournament on a frog. Gallery showing up yeah. for Matt Airy there for sure. He they're coming. What's back. going on? Yeah, they're coming back. Chris Jones, bring back some of that magic he's had on days one and two. Boy, he's been impressive the first two days of this classic. Oh, and he's got multiple boat bites on this point throughout the week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fell off. <sighs> Thank y'all. Chris Jones saying, let's not count me out quite so fast, yeah. and we certainly have not. That's my guy. Man. He's doing it all for you, Ronnie. Did he? he did. That's what he told me. That's what he told me yesterday, yeah. at least. Really? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Pretty said, cool. He said today is not for his family. Yeah. No, no, it's for Ronnie Moore. Not at all. Exactly. Ronnie Moore. I flipped yeah. it in there, and I picked it up, and she was going that way with it. And usually that ain't a good thing when they pull down on it. Two and a half. Yesterday, what when it got? Yesterday was tough. Losing that two hours of the shad spawn, probably the last day or so it's ever going to exist in te in Texas this year. But Jones caught him the most fish and a great bag throughout the whole day. Yes. Yeah. That's you know Hank Cherry was our leader leaving this morning, but you have to think about those things. Hank Cherry with the leader, but just not many bites. Chris Jones. Yeah. Not far behind, but had a lot more bites. You know, just the, the yes. trending, the trending. Be, besides those two. I ain't caught one around this concrete either when you said that, no. I ain't had a bite off of it. it. It's crazy. So usually something different like that 
along a bunch of bushes. They love to just get in it for some reason. And I ain't had a bite off that thing. That thing just. Besides those first flipping fish for Hank Cherry yesterday, it was grimy. Yes. It was a grimy day, yes. man. Two four eleven in about the first thirty helps, minutes, and helps, then, yes, helps. and then it took five hours to get six more pounds. Yes, and it's worth noting Chris Jones is in an area of Ray Roberts, very fertile, very healthy, probably about a mile north of where he's at, and a mile south. That's just a great region. But he's also noted with that being a great region, a lot of company has been in his areas the last few days, and he said a lot have been very courteous. Brad Watley didn't have a great day one. Said, yes. hey, Chris. Yes. Chris pulled up and said, hey, you know, you didn't know I was fishing here. And he said, say no more. Brad pulls the trolling yes. motor up and leaves and gives him that spot. And and Chris was able to start his day that's without getting like, flustered. And that's huge down. in this sport. Uh-huh. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Well, it just continues to tighten up and tighten up. It's kind of the way we like it on the final day. We want the world champion to earn it. <laughs> and, uh, it seems a little mean, but no, I think that's the nature of being a fan And Hank Cherry. A lot of people pulling for that young man to win two classics in a row. Matt Airy is the upstart on this day. We'll be on all of that. He's starting to get a big gallery built up. Lots of things popping out on Lake Ray Roberts. Watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. You know, when you think about Texas, you think about boots, big bass, and bucks. Well, we're not deer hunting, and I'm not here for a fashion show, and I've been to Texas. I've had success in Texas. Uh, we're actually on a lake where big ones live. When you think big bass states, Texas has got to be at the top of the list. There's giants in Texas. It doesn't matter where you go in Texas. Oh my Texas God. Parks and Wildlife have done a fantastic job in the whole state. Yeah. It's arguably one of the largest states for a bass fishing community. They show out and to me, that's what you need for a classic, right? You need a massive amount of fans, you need big fish, and you need a body of water and a city to host it. I feel like we could potentially have the best classic that we've had so far. The fish are big, the homes are big, the ranches are big, the cows. I mean, you've seen them horns on them longhorns. Just for some reason, something about Texas, everything is bigger in Texas. A big time sports town with a, a big, big bass fishing community in this part of the world. That is the perfect place if you're gonna scour the map for a place to contest the classic, Fort Worth is just the perfect spot. We have enjoyed every minute of it. And there at the new Dickies Arena, that's where it's all going to conclude. Crown our world champion there later today. 25 anglers have made it to this day among the 54 who worked so hard to get this opportunity. You don't know when you're ever going to have it again. It's so important to get to the classic. Boy, if you can make it to this day, who knows? Hey, another guy to look out for. How about our 2019 Bassmaster Angler of the Year? Getting to do exactly what he likes to do here, Scott Canterbury. Well, I remember going into last year's Bassmaster Classic, a lot of Alabamas hoping that Scott Canterbury could take that victory on the home lake of Lake Gunnersville. That wasn't the case, but here in Texas, he's looking pretty good. He's actually got four bass in the boat. He's got a four, maybe a, a two plus, but he's catching more bass than everybody else. He already has four fish this morning on a day when a lot of people are struggling. The weather it was actually the sun's just now coming out for the first time after nine o'clock. Things are going to start hitting up, heating up. But he's on the same area, the lake that a lot of the top ten are in on this left side, the western side. He's hitting all these bushes, you know, in and out. He said he's hitting spot after spot, but he must be doing something different. Whether it's the presentation or if it's a signature jig, something is different because some guys have one, two, or none. He's already got four in the boat. Thank you, Robbie Floyd. Scott certainly had that look about him yesterday Did. when we talked to him. He was super upbeat. Yes. Roommates of Matt Airy. Guaranteed they've mm -hmm. 
shared a little bit of info throughout this tournament, how they're catching them. Interesting looking at that Dickie Varina. Boy, uh, that what? was done packed yesterday. Yeah. Very impressive crowd yesterday on a semifinal Saturday. I love Patrick Walters. I mean, you've seen them horns on them long horns. <laughs> <laughs> Here in the arena. So, go ahead, Ronnie. Sorry. So, r real quick, Z, we talked about sharing information. Canterbury and, and um, yes, Scott, uh, Airy, you think that's a good thing in the Classic to be sharing information? They probably share baits. Probably not areas okay. where okay. where the Johnstons are just one unit. Right. Okay. Ooh. Back to our leader. Oh boy. A little bit scary that he has left the dam. This is 100% what we talked about. It's the first one we've seen him miss this tournament. And it's the first time we've seen him in the middle, you know, after the sun's up, having to flip in the center of those bushes. Yes, That's exactly what you're talking about. He has benefited from fishing the outside the whole tournament. I think it's all amazing. We we all know what's going on in his head, what he's thinking, and the frustrations, and how much that fish may have cost him. You could hear it in his breathing. Yes. And I'll say it's not his forte, his his best. Bait. His fastball is that jerk bait, but we have seen him close to the state of Texas. Toledo Bend splits Louisiana and Texas, get a top 10 in an elite series event, four days of competition, flipping bushes exclusively. So he's not foreign to it, but it's not what his favorite one. thing to do is if he had to lean on one. When he won at Gunnersville last year, most of his fish on the riprap with the jerk bait, but we saw him go up to some boat docks, and he's yep. done mm -hmm. that a time yep. or two. There's no doubt about it. You heard Hank Cherry say, you've got to be kidding me. But that is part of it. That is part yes. of this game, man. That is all of our Texas viewers right now that are watching this are going, yep, that is absolutely part of the – whenever you're flipping bushes, you're going to have that. It's, this is one of those tournaments that you come – after you've been out there all day, you come back with a few stories. Yes. And everyone you talk to has a story Absolutely. just like it. Yeah. The ones that got away when I flipped in the middle of that bush. Or blew up on a frog. Right. You, we carp. Gonna all have those stories. Big carp. Oh. He pulled the thing under, took the line and everything. Yeah. 
I won't get a second chance, I bet. I ain't got a second chance yet. He just, he, I think he only grabbed part of the frog. <clears throat> He's probably out there under your boat by now. <laughs> wow. Once again, God, this is something it, dude. It ain't little. that that you have to deal with fishing that, there, that bait, you know, actively feeding, but or flipping a jig in a center of a bush. Wanted to bring it inside Will Rogers Memorial Center here at the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. And I will say, Tommy, I've heard you grumbling over there. Over there. Davey, I've heard you talking some smack. Z, you specifically about my fantasy team this week. Well, so I sucks. wanted to show what? you exactly <laughs> what it's looked like out there for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing for the classic Lake Ray Roberts. And when we look at uh, how you get those bonus points. Everybody from first down to 54th gets points in this event for fantasy fishing, but to get the most, you either catch the biggest bag of the event, the biggest bass of the event, or obviously win and be the leader of the event. Steve Kennedy with the biggest bag of the event, over 23 pounds on day one, still holding strong with that. Hank Cherry, the leader, if he leads again today, he will get almost the maximum points you can. And then Frank Talley, that eight pound three ouncer that we saw on day one, that is still the big bass of the event. Chad Pipkin, so close to it yesterday with an 8-1. I think Z said it earlier, it could get broken today as well. We may see an angler jump up there and do that. And I wanted to give some kudos to S. Nichols, the best drain the lake team for Mercury Drain the Lake. This is a different game mode. You have eight anglers to choose from, or you have eight anglers to choose, and once you choose them, you can't use them the rest of the season. So he locked in these picks, and it's been fantastic for him. About five or six of the top ten represented on S. Nichols team. And hey, I don't want to just give kudos to who's leading. I wanted to back up my smack talk and show you my team. I will say there's some slips. Yeah. Keith Carson, his yeah. first classic, I thought he was going to yeah, perform. Right. Yep. Struggle yesterday. But I do have Chris Jones in the top 10, Brock Mosley in the top 15, Jamie Hartman in the top 20. There's still some hope for that today. And then drain the lake. This is where when we introduce this game, strategy is really involved because when you select an angler, you can't use them again. So you can't just pick the best guys every time. You have to be smart with it. My team this week, I think all but two made the final day cut. I have four or five in the top 10. And I am 150th in the world, Z. So I don't care what you say about my team. You can't talk hey, me Ron. down from my picks. Hey. I'm 150th in the world. I'm not going to deal with the smack talk on Championship Sunday, okay, Z? Ron, your <laughs> fantasy team, just so you know, it's a lot like talking to people about having a bad travel day. Nobody on FS1 cares. No, they, <laughs> they really they don't, don't care. Not they at all. Really yeah. Not at all. And I don't understand it's, that, it's, but I just need to defend I mean, my turf here at the screen. And I have to defend it, okay? I have to yeah. defend it. Probably everyone in the arena knows you're 150th in the world. Yeah. Yeah, now people they already do. know this. Now you know, they, they don't do. care. Hey, Nobody my ball ain't going to toot on its own, Davey. <laughs> Fantastic, Ronnie. You are the master of fantasy. Living in a fantasy world, that's well, a way to go through life. <laughs> and I slandered you, Tommy. You, ne you never grumbled, Look, Tommy. You're still I just had to standing you at the screen. <laughs> Back down, boy. Back down, boy. Back down, boy. Hey, Cherry, hanging on to that lead right now. Matt, Ari, what a fantastic morning on the most uh, important day of fishing of the year, Championship Day, the Bassmaster Classic. That was awesome. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Saturday on Fox, Nolan Arenado and the Cardinals take on Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves, or the White Sox there we go. the Astros, yeah. yes, or Reds Padres. It all starts at 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Check local listings for the game in your area. Next Saturday, big for baseball, Z. Kind of think my White Sox got a little something going. Well, I'm going to show up at Minute Maid, see what happens. So anxious to see what happens next because plenty has happened already in the yeah. three hours of fishing. Bassmaster Classic. We have had some phenomenal fish catches in this tournament, and we have had some big, big misses. Probably more combined in this event than the entire season so far on the Bassmaster Elite Series.
Justin Kerr. Currently in fifth place. Four fish for 20 pounds yesterday. Nice. Nice. Number two. Number nice. two. Hmm. Two pounder. A little bit back behind there again. Boy, he is way further back. Jack Hamlin than gets him again. Anybody we have covered this week. Matt Airy talked about this yes. yesterday a little bit, but we haven't seen him back in this area. Two. I just say a two pounder. Here's one and two. Your leaders, Hank Cherry. Two in the live well, three for Airy. Including a real good one. First and second with two fish in the live well, three fish in the live well. A lot of room to grow. Mm -hmm. That's a hang, but it's kind of nice. <coughs> After hearing Hank Cherry talk before the tournament started, he had so many bites in practice. I thought, oh, that Aries. <sighs> Not a keeper. We'll check him, make me feel better. I think he's a little short. 13. I thought he was about 13. I thought we would see Hank Cherry bring more fish to the scales on from his jerk bait fishing the dam. And he's given, he's oh, he good. left it after only about an hour fishing today. Yes. I thought that was going to be a way bigger part of his I day. I lost him. I yes. swore it was a good one because he's stuck in that root. As far as the time that he spent. He's only fished it each day. He's fished it two hours max. You'll see it again today. You think? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, bites are few and far between, buddy. But been like that about every day. Mm-hmm. Bluegill swimming around in there. Watch Matt Airy. He's he's moved up the leaderboard because he's doing something different. He's fishing bushes like everyone else, but you always know that the guys that are Not catching more than others are doing something different. Entrance. Steve Kennedy, the first, he's hooked up. Looks like a keeper. Oh. Yep. Yeah. That'll keep. Steve Kennedy told us he thought a big key to his success big, but on keep. day one was fishing fast, Make more sure covering more will. ground, fishing his bait yeah, faster than others. When you see Matt Airy pitching into these bushes now, he lets that bait sit there for a little that's, while. That's we got our, a new leader. Yep. Uh, let's give our big one some company. How about that? We don't have to get bigger, but that's four. And we've had some big bites today, so we're still around the right ones. We have just got to get a couple more to commit and uh, get them in the boat. You know, I mean, we're around every place we hit. You know, I'm sure it's got a six pounder swimming around in it somewhere, and at least I'm confident that it does. It's just a matter of. Always retie. And you're flipping stuff like this behind us. That 20 pound P line tactical. 
has kind of been the ticket this week. That's a, it is some super strong fluorocarbon. Really the strongest in the industry. They've done some weight tests in the past, I know, with their fluorocarbon, and it's, it's surpassed about everything. This stuff is bad to the bone. Although he's still a young man, Matt Airy has been a touring professional at the high level since 2007. He told us not too long ago that he's really thrilled to be on Fox Sports. He knows how good that is for everyone. For the fans, because when I was a kid growing up all the way up until basically last year, you know, there was no opportunity to watch live professional bass fishing on television. Fox Sports has given us that platform this year for the fans to watch us fishing live. It's a great opportunity for not just the anglers and not just bass, but for the entire world to really yeah. see and become aware of what we do. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Number one day in the sport of bass fishing, the final day, Championship Sunday for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. Boy, presented by Hook, and we have a new leader. You've been watching us. You've seen Matt Airy progressing throughout the morning. Hank Cherry started the day with a just under five pound lead, but Matt Airy has been chipping away and chipping away. And now Matt Airy is on top. Not a big margin. We look down through our leaderboard. 25 anglers left after two days of fishing. And Palnick, former angler of the year, Chris Johnston, trying to become the first Canadian ever to win a classic. Frank Talley still holds our vertically big bass for the tournament right there. That fighter just made it in. Another Canadian, Jeff Gustafson. Mueller. We look at our, our list, oh, our leaderboard. Let's turn to our men. Coda, unlock the lake, see? It is eerily similar to the last two days, really, looking at your men. Coda, unlock the lake. Boy, that western side, it was said coming into this tournament. Really, keep your eye in that east branch. You get around. Wolf Island, stuff like that. That has not been as big a player as we thought coming in. But Lee Livesey made a comment to us. Really, he felt that western side, whether it's the mainland side or that peninsula, he felt that western branch was going to see the most attention as far as your leaders. That's exactly what has transpired. That is your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, and it's been very consistent. Going to take a look at Matt Airy's day today, and it's been Fair to say, he has the lead very high and low at times. It has him losing this fish Please. early on. Not a big one. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Let's see. Come here. Come here. Yes! thing under, took the line and everything. That was earlier today. Now back out live with Matt Aaron. Yes, yeah, I did have another real big one blow up on it back there. I don't know if that's what you were talking about, but like the like my second cast this morning is when I lost that great big one. Yeah. Yeah. 
you can definitely die by it. Now, I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> I'm experienced at dying by the frog. But I've had some unbelievable days on it too. Um, somewhat, I, you know, I'm, with this jig, I'm trying to just fish the highest percentage corners and points more than getting to the heart. All right. Oh man, and you know, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's been an up and down morning. We've definitely had some really good quality bites today. Um, have not been able to execute on all of them, but you know, that's part of the fishing the way we're fishing. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. You know, I definitely need a couple of big bites um, to, I, I felt, felt like I needed 20 plus pounds today to even have a chance. So um, we've got four, we got two of the right ones, two smaller ones, and uh, you know, winging a prayer the rest of the day. We're just gonna keep our head down, keep grinding. I know I'm doing the right thing to catch a big giant bag. I've seen them. We've had the bites every day. Uh, we are uh, just a couple bites away, you know, five, six pounders away from having a really big day. So we got a long time. Uh, we're just gonna stay focused, stay relaxed and uh, Keep mixing it up between a frog and a jig. This may sound crazy to some viewers. It's easier to win the Bassmaster Classic coming from six pounds back. Got a lot of friends and family it would be back home and, and leading or maybe in uh, second place. Just barely, you don't have the pressure on you. Right? Second to give them a shout out. You know we we're gone a lot throughout the year and. Obviously, it takes a toll on your uh, your family and especially my wife. And she's uh, she's the only reason I'm able to be out here doing what I love. So, and not just her, but the whole family. I mean, I got I got the best supporters in the world. And that means the most not when you have a great tournament, but when you have a bad tournament and you're driving home and you know they're there to pick you right back up and keep you keep you pushing forward cuz lord knows I've had a couple bad ones this year On this third and final day of the Bassmaster Classic 2021, Matt Airy is moving up the leaderboard. He now has four bass and a couple of big misses. Lost one just a moment ago on a frog, lost one this morning. And I looked at him, I said, hey, you live by the frog, you die by the frog. And he said, you can certainly die by it. But it, it gives him a couple of different options. Whenever he's fishing in this section, maybe you see some grass like he's heading into. He might throw the frog like he's doing now, try and get it back there. He said they could be in one foot of water, super skinny. But what about the other ones? That's when he's flipping, maybe a little bit more on these out outside edges doesn't necessarily have to go deep into those bushes but he's trying to hit those isolated spots some you know tips of the points those places he thinks they're going to set up on so two different variations he's got some catches he's got some misses now he's just looking for number five thank you robbie floyd and davy you know this whenever you're fishing a frog the one thing that i i don't even know the exact frog that Aries throwing right here but the one thing I can tell you is that popping frog, okay, those popping style frogs with the cupped mouth, they get big bites, but that also that shape, that style, you will miss a lot more than your standard style frog. Two things here. I agree with you a thousand percent, but a lot of anglers, when you when you're throwing in this cover, you want to throw a frog because it comes through that cover. But if you can fish those edges with a traditional top order lure with those treble hooks, treble hooks yeah. you're a lot better you're, off you're a lot better off but it's so much easier to just keep that frog in your hand and you never get hung plus you feel real comfortable with 65 braid too when you when you do connect with one of those yes. giants that one thing that i noticed uh, matt just told us with the jig he's focusing on the corners and the points not so much in the middle of the bush the he mentioned that Yep. And that's all part of trying to have a better landing percentage, and it's certainly working out for him. He's around good ones.
And it's not that he's had a giant day in any means. No. The real story of this is he's had a decent day. The story of this is Hank Cherry is not getting bit. Yes. Yeah. Matt Airy forging on there. You can take a look at the uh, flotilla that is uh, trying to get up close and personal. That's the way the spectator, part of the spectator experience here at the Bassmaster Classic. You see Airy in his lead right now, Hank Cherry with only four pounds and four ounces. Only two keepers in the boat right there, so plenty of room to grow. A lot of things can happen start popping all over the lake at the same time. That's the way most of these fisheries work. When we come back, we'll have one of the heroes of bass fishing, Gerald Swindle, sitting in with us. So stick around for that. The 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota and by Berkeley. We go on and on. This is the most important day, single most important day in the sport of bass fishing, but for the Bass Masters, the Bass Master Elite Series, We've got some important days left in their, in their year as we go to the northern swing. We're gonna head to Lake Champlain. We're gonna end the season at the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario. Boy, some very big opportunities for guys to solidify their position in the 2022 Classic. Absolutely Coming right, Tommy me. Sanders. Yeah. Anytime we go to the St. Lawrence River, one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the world, and we can go play out on Lake Ontario, which will be a big factor, big waves. We got to see a beat down from Chris Johnston in the 2020 season. But before that tournament, we're going to be at Lake Champlain in kind of a funkadocious time of year. And what I mean by that, Tommy Sanders, every time we go to Lake Champlain, we see big, large mouth, but always small mouth tend to go up the leaderboard. Whenever you go to Lake Champlain, trust me, in the month of July, large mouth will absolutely be a bigger factor this time around. You have been touting that. We're looking very much forward to that. The defending champion up there, that man right there, Brandon Pallant. Let's take a look at the points race. That's the season long race for Angler of the Year. The Skeeter Boats Angler of the Year points. The Angler of the Year watch shows Seth Fighter on top with a decent lead over Jason Christie. Not, uh, not a shutdown lead at this point right now. Patrick Walters, Chris Johnston. And now we uh, we tease this. We welcome to set one of the heroes Hello. of bass fishing. Well, looking pretty good in that race right now. Gerald Swindle, two time Bassmaster Angler of the Year. I know you you can't wait to get up there to that northern swing. I can. I I feel like last year I didn't fish that uh, that swing as clean as I, as I needed to, Tommy. Just a few fish here and there, and I want to go back and correct it. And I'm kind of looking at the the last part of the season a little different. You know, I'm looking at it as they're like, oh, you got two more tournaments. I'm looking at I want to fish as many days as I can. There's eight available tournament days left in the Elite Series, so I'm going to take each day at a time and say try to win that day. Don't worry about winning the event. Don't worry about where the points is. Look at eight tournament days. Try to win that day. You, we are on FS1, so clean it up for everybody. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Now he's no, big as you brought that up, Z's sitting over here with no shoes on and no drawers. It's like we're doing a Scott video. Now. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> and he said, this is my home. <laughs> exactly right. Hey, real quick, you, you you have gone into Championship Sunday of the Bassmaster Classic in contention. I remember all the way back to 97 years ago, we covered you in Pittsburgh. You get so close, so close. You look at a guy like Matt Airy trying to claw away at Hank Cherry. He has done that. Talk about what's going on in these guys' minds right now. You know, what's different about this situation is at this particular time, Matt Airy don't know. He don't know. So he's, he's just thinking, do the best you can, Matt, do the best you can. He's probably not even got the concept that I'm leading or I could be leading. But, you know, Hank, in his mind, he's thinking, what would a, what, what would a two-peat be? What would this be like? So he kind of got a different mindset. I think the guys are coming from behind. They don't know. We don't know what the standings are. They're just scratching them. He's just doing all he can, which makes him deadly. Like a guy like Chris Jones, he, he's got nothing to lose. He don't know what the score is, right. so he's just going to lay down on it. Hank's got in his mind, he knows if he catches 15 pounds, he might ice this thing. So I think there's different mindsets, but going in the Bassmasters Classic, 
controlling your nerves is number one, and we're seeing it. I've seen you guys talk about it. Just the, the, the emotions and the nerves can get to you. One of the things that we started this broadcast with on Friday morning, we actually opened the show about whenever you come to the state of Texas when the lake is swollen, you're going to have extreme highs, some big fish catches, yep. but you are going to see some of the – most catastrophic fish losses and we have seen that yeah. we have seen more the last 24 hours than the entire year combined on this yeah. lake bush bush fishing and flipping uh, it sets that up and if i heard you guys said over and over fishing clean hank cherry's done it he hasn't had a fatal mistake everything's been good i like his approach on the outside of the bushes the guys that are willing to take the chance in the bush if they can just land them but you can't they, everybody's got a technique or oh, do this do that it doesn't matter all you do is jerk and pray baby jesus he don't come off it don't matter what you do they're coming off all right well let's talk about the fact that you you never know you're not guaranteed us a number of classics in your nope. life you know you don't know if you'll ever be back how much pressure does that put on that, you? that puts a lot on you coming into it just trying to get there and then watching this situation with steve kennedy and a giant this is a fish of a lifetime opportunity and people's like man look at the emotion the guy goes down i'm like you have no idea that's 25 years of pursuit of a dream it's not just that bass that's every night of staying up late going i gotta make the classic i'm wearing stomach ulcers can't sleep, and then that happens. I made a comment, actually. There's been some great fish catches on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We play one with you from Clear Lake that you connected with. You landed. Yep. We played it for decades now. I also made a comment yesterday when he lost that fish. We were not live, and I looked at Tommy, and I said, we will play that fish catch for the next 10 years if oh, he does absolutely. not win this tournament. Absolutely, because that's, that's the fish that makes your career. And I think Steve knew that when he comes off. And I know Steve's trying to gather it all up, stay positive, keep a mental attitude right. But that's devastating in this tournament because at this point, Steve doesn't expect that. In the bush, he expects that. It's Big. heartbreaking. I, I just want to get down the floor yeah. with him. I, I, before, before the expo opened up, I made the comment, every time we play that, I'm like, stay hooked. Stay, stay, we, stay we keep hooked. hoping for a different outcome. Right, right. <laughs> I want part two. Where's part two, Tommy yeah, Sanders? Right. I need Tommy to come in and talk over The it. outcome yeah. still sucks. <laughs> yeah. Man. What, what are the chances? You, we, we just talked about that, that clip. We've been playing this year of you at Clear Lake. What are the chances that we see a double-digit fish before the end of this day? I think it's very good. I think as the lake starts to stable out, I think more and more guys are figuring out how to get the big bites. We've seen that with Chad Pipkins and some of the other guys. There's still a lot of time left on the clock for somebody to weigh in a double-digit bass at Texas, which would make this the all-around one of the top classic fish catch weights Absolutely. ever. The weights look low, but I'm watching it, and I'm thinking, it's, it looks low, but, God, there's, they've left 100 pounds in the bushes. <laughs> uh, right, and uh, uh, something that I said, taking a look at Matt Airy right here, really, if you look at a lot of your guys that are that, – I mean, that was a big loss this morning. Oh, yes. Every single guy, every single angler that's in the top ten is fishing – a big bag technique whether yes. it's a cody bird outside you know cranking foundations you see steve kennedy fishing hardwoods a dude fishing a frog and flipping a jig every person that's out there right now has that 30 pound capability yep. i just think that the guy who has the technique mark that stays outside of that deadly zone Did you call me mark 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 you see that z train yeah, yeah. See, i, I went all his attention you just told hey. me we're on fox sports so well, i said hey. thanks gerald hi mark <laughs> i think the guy who takes the technique outside the bushes and gets yes. the lowest risk and you talked about that with hank cherry the jerk bait and all that his percentages of landing his bites are way up so that guy's already ahead of the game but take a guy that's as poised as chris jones and who's had a few good breaks in the bushes could be deadly. You took a little bit of a time out. Yeah, let's pull the curtain back. You took a little bit of time out from the Bassmasters for a while. Why, why'd you come back to the Bassmasters? Those you ever had that girl you dated and, and you knew you really loved her and, and sometimes y'all both thought she was just not going to make it and then you just couldn't stay away from no. her? No. I love bass. <laughs> you know, I, I, I took a one-year sabbatical and I realized, you know, it's all said, you know, we're looking and we're laughing because we, we, we know where our passion is and, and watching him lose that fish, being here in front of the fans on the stage with you guys, this is all I've ever known. So that one year sabbatical where I've done something different, I realized this is all I've ever done. This is the only thing I've ever known for a living and the people. This is what I crave is that be back on that Bassmaster stage to hoist up that blue trophy, to have another chance for an AOI. The only place in the world you can do that at, folks, is the Bassmasters. There's nothing like it. 
And it didn't take me long to realize I have unfinished business here, and I want to come back and make it right. Don't worry about that blue trophy. There's a brown and yellow one next year you can hold up one year from now. Yeah. That's the one to focus on, friend. So you got to get it. You got. I want them all. All right. I, I, I don't, you, you will get them all. I want Zona shoes. I want to win Zona <laughs> shoes. That's a prize for you right there. What do you think of this guy? Now, he's been representing the sport for the last 14 months. He's a tough, tough, hard-nosed guy. Dude. What, yeah. dude, let me tell you something. I have seen Hank Cherry – and this is from an anger watching an anger. I have seen him come into his yes. poise of Hank Cherry and who he is. I told Leanne yesterday, we watching this live from the hotel room, I said, watch the body posture of Hank Cherry. Watch the body posture of Chris Jones. These two guys are on an unstoppable mission. He is very comfortable in what he's doing. He's very comfortable in how he's represented the sport and the fisherman he's grew into. He's got his family life. It's just solid. He's got a big fan support. He's in that mode where they are deadly, and he's on a mission to win. Slow morning, slow morning so far for Hank Cherry. Really, he's got off firing both day one and two with big fish. A lot slower today, but that being said, we started this broadcast this morning on FS1. I said, hey, he's a big game player. Big game. You're looking at a guy that has almost two Bassmaster Classic titles, an all-star championship title. It, he's one of those guys – when it is a big stage, when it's a big stage event, he, he he's plays. a different fisherman. He plays. And I, I made a comment last night. I said that I looked at the top three guys last night, and I made a bet with Alan McGuck, and I said, out of these top three, the first angler to catch a five-pounder will go on to win. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, look at the top three. And I said, it may be noon, but whoever those top three are to catch the first five-pounder, it's going to be lights out because Hank's a big-time player, and if that happens – He's going to key on it and be gone. I will hold you to this right now. Give us the winner. Give us the winner right now. Chris Jones or Hank Cherry? Stay in there. Going to ride the there. horse. I just see these guys and the, and the way they're handling the water and their attack on it, and they just seem so, you know, you just see that positive. It's just it's like we got this. We got this. So those are great guys. Uh, Hank's represented the sport so well this year, and mm -hmm. I – Hats off to him and Jacqueline Cherry for taking on that because when you win the Classic, I, I've never done it, but I'm friends with Davey. I'm friends with Kevin. I know what it's like. It just throws a whirlwind at you. It's like AOI, and he handled it. He took it in. He represented the sport in a tough, tough year, yep. and he's back to show this wasn't a fluke, guys. I'm Hank Cherry. I like it. I like Can you. I win your shoes if I take home my I'm not giving you the shoes, man. We Sanders. like you being up here. <laughs> Hold now. Again, one of the Hold heroes on. of the sport of bass fishing, Gerald Swindle, joining us on set here, talking about the heroes in action out there on the water, gunning for the world championship. Oh, boy. Plenty more on the way in North Carolina's Matt Airy, super competitive guy. He was even a pro paintball guy when he was 17 years old. What? Absolutely competed Who in the U.S. and Canada. He's, he's trying to uh, to pepper this field with some big time shots. That is for sure. We got so much more on the way right now. Back to Lake Ray Roberts in just a moment after these messages. Best master live. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Uh, at the weigh-in yesterday, Dickey's Arena, Chad Pipkins of Michigan. This guy comes to Texas and he kind of finds a way to get around big bass I get it, man. some way or another. I, People I, from I, Michigan like being in Texas, trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're the you're the poster boy for that, absolutely for sure. Eight pounds and one ounce. That was the Berkeley Big Bass of day number two here at the Bassmaster Classic, and uh, that was a lot of fun to watch Chad when he finally got that footage in, <laughs> hooking up with that that big one. B and W trailer hitches now. It's bonus coverage live on the line with Chad Pipkins and Chad still kicking ourselves for missing that big one. So why don't you just treat us to another one right now? I'm trying my best. We're working at it. It's been, it's been a different, I've actually had bites today at like no giants, but I've, I've had problems getting a few in the boat. Um, caught like a two and a half and then I, I jumped off one a little over three and I had another one come off of my hand about three and missed a two pounder. So we haven't missed any of the ones we need to win, but I sure would like to have a few of those now. I'm, just kind of bouncing around, just fishing some new water where I've had a couple bites. And again, I just I just want to run into them once, you know. You hit the right section of trees at the right time, whether it's going to be with this top water or the square bill, like, it can happen quick. And today I've had four bites on this. I've just, uh, I'm one for four. Not a good batting average. 
So, so Chad, it's been a, a, a big deal whether you're able to land the fish or not. And for the most part, I think you've been able to land most of the bites you've got because you're fishing around this, you know, let's say, sparse cover. The ones that you've lost today, have they gotten you hung up and, and break you off down underwater, or are they just not biting good and coming off? Now they're biting different. Like, the other ones it just ate it, you know. And the, the first one, like, I threw in the tree like four or five times, and then the fifth time it just it hit and it went and came out and just swallowed it. And I caught it, and I'm like, that's kind of weird. And then the one I that jumped off, like, I had it on the back hook, you know, just skin hook. And then the other one that I had, like, I mean, it had a T-bone. I don't know how that one come up. I tired it out and just, that was just one of them unlucky ones. Went to just grab her belly and literally just rolled over my hand and the <laughs> hook came free. So hopefully it happens to the three pounders and we can catch the uh, five to eight pounders if they decide to play here. So it's a fun place. It could happen at any time. It feels good. It's like it's going to happen. Chad, real quick, looking at those hardwoods, for some of our folks watching on FS1, every everything looks the same above the water. What's been the common theme underneath the water? Has there been a key depth that those bigger ones have come from, whether it's been in the tournament or in practice? Yeah, I think, you know, a little bit of both, like that five to ten foot. And for me, like, I'm kind of in a little depression right now where it sweeps in, and I've probably got half my bites on hardwood. And the other half are on like cedar trees. They look like an open hand, and they, they just suspend in those. And if you bring your little top water above that, they're in there and they come up and get it. I haven't got bit any like the pine tree looking things. Those are there's a bunch of that stuff in the right depth, but they're just they don't seem to like that. So it's been the hardwoods and then like the cedar tree stuff. And definitely, if you can get a little flat point, you know where it comes. But some of these points have nothing, and some of them have the right trees. So you kind of it looks like the right trees, and you go over there, and it's in 20 feet. So you kind of got to drive around. Like, I feel like I know what to look for. I just don't know where a lot of it is. So I'm trying to, you know, explore today. And we're out here trying to find them. I don't need to catch 10 pounds of doing it. I want to catch 30 pounds. So we're looking. Chad, a lot of the com uh, your competitors, a lot of your buddies that you're fishing against were making fun of you behind the stage yesterday that you big-eyed that fish and called it a nine-pounder when it was actually eight pounds. And, I, hey, look, man, we had your back. I said, you're from Michigan. We don't see those things. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. And if you put your hands on that thing and you had to guess it first shot real quick, second day of the Bassmaster Classic, literally first cast, Anybody that caught it's going to go nine out there. <laughs> well, guess what, suckers? You didn't catch an eight one either. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so, Chad, we they're see. E they're easy to weigh when you. <laughs> so, Chad, we see. Yeah, they're easy to weigh when you're in line looking at day, yeah. day three of the Bassmaster Classic, you start seeing anglers fishing the same water over and over. Have there been any other people fishing those trees that you're fishing? No, no. I mean, Kennedy and I saw each other in practice a little bit on, on day three. And yesterday, um, one of the trees where I caught a seven, he was down on another little point. He said he lost an eight. So we were around some of the same stuff, but that was the only time I've seen him. I, I haven't seen anybody do this. And I thought it was the deal, like, to have a chance to win. And I still, I know it is. I just, you know, you land that six pounder the first day and you catch a few threes. And I haven't caught a big one on a square bill yet. You know, and I, in practice a couple times, like one day I had, one over seven and two over five within an hour. And I've yet to get dead in those places. So I just think it's, you know, not knowing everything here. I know it's the deal. I just don't know enough about it. So I'm trying to learn each day. I think if you get a little south wind and some sun, I think it helps uh, suspend those white bass and some of those big ones sit on these tree clumps. And it's kind of, it's a little calmer than I like today, but you know, we just got to find a couple dumb ones, I guess. Chad, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for giving us one of the magic moments of the 2021 yes. Classic. We'll we'll take some more. There's time to do that. Sure. Yeah, this guy proved it yesterday. The, the, the two second biggest fish we saw yesterday came from this man out of the West, Justin Kerr. Three-eighths ounce bladed jig in between throwing that Woodrow rat, and he has also has a custom rat that he's been throwing. There we go. Uh-huh. Boy, he's been getting those bigger yes. bites. Hmm. Not that one. There you go. And a two-pounder. That's a two pounder. Jackhammer again. <laughs> That's a two pounder. Every bit of two pounds. <laughs> I'll take it, hey, buddy. 
That's a solid two pounder. Almost like it's like a two plus one yes. three pounder. <laughs> yes, Ronnie. Yeah, that one's yeah, two and a half. Brett Hyde told me he was very humble and soft spoken, so he just he yep. doesn't want to overestimate the size of these fish. No, you guys covered it pretty good earlier when you said he's not an amateur. He's pretty much a yeah. pro. He's he's got this part down, Pat, on yeah. uh, on weight estimation. He won the U.S. Open back <laughs> in 2008 and has fished professionally since 2003. He is not an amateur. Grassroots. <laughs> that does not Grassroots. qualify. <laughs> right. right. Yeah reason he's throwing that three eighths ounce bladed jig said keeping it up in the water column yeah, so was very very key here, like they're so strong and they're like get them pulling one way and the boat's going the other and they want to go the opposite way i never seen such strong fish I mean, they ain't nothing like at home that's for sure and look davy you i heard you talking to brett height Brett Height, a great, great bladed jig fisherman. And, and what was interesting is you made a comment. I was listening to your phone call, totally eavesdropping, creeping it real. And I, and I heard you say, how do you make a living just fishing professionally out west? It was way outside um, the bush, too. Huh? I'm going to tell you something that I heard him say, Justin yeah. Kerr say in, in, in an interview That's yesterday so with us. He said, yeah, man, I've done it for a long time. And, you know, there's just it, there was summers where I, I couldn't take the, the, the kids on vacation. And I thought it was because of schedule. That's not what he was saying. Yeah. Uh, I even asked him to clarify that. And he said there were there were summers we didn't have money to go yep. on any type of vacation whatsoever. Yep. So it's it, it, I'm not going to talk a lot about passion. Yeah. People that have passion yep. for this sport. He's certainly one of them. When he said that. You. Put things in a perspective also you're instantly rooting for that guy yes, sure absolutely and it makes sense you, yes he's very veteran he's fished a lot of big events and, but he did fish the amateur ranks of it to make this classic mm -hmm. from out west no. oh there you go Jackhammer again. Look at that thing gone. Another solid two-pounder. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Working on the limit here. All right. Huh. Good yeah, fish there for Justin Kerr. A little hot stretch. Yeah. And, and mind you, this dude caught four that weighed 20 pounds yesterday. Yeah. So he is, like Matt Airy, around the right ones. Absolutely. Very much in touch with the lead. Could reach out and grab it at any moment. Right now, Robbie Floyd is standing by with Matt Airy. And Robbie, is Matt, do you get a sense that Matt's, uh, how, that he's got plenty more to fish or that he's, he's, he's maybe coming to have to lap it again? Or what's, what's his schedule looking like to you? No, he... This exact spot that he's in right now, I just asked him a moment ago. It looks like he was trying to spend some time here, and he said this spot on that tree is where he caught his first bass on unofficial practice. It's about a four-pounder. But it looks like he's just trying to re-rig and get ready for a preparation of this stretch uh, of line here. But I, I know y'all can't tell it in the studio. The sun is now out. It doesn't look like the clouds are going to come in anytime soon. And I wanted to follow also up on uh, what you were talking about with the popping frog and, you know, the difference between a conventional frog and the popping frog. He said he was throwing the popping frog earlier, um, but it, it resembled more of a bluegill uh, pattern, the color of it. He went to the other one because it resembled a shad pattern. He seemed like that's, that was going to get more results. So that it wasn't necessarily the popping versus that. It was just more of the color of the frog that he wanted to make that adjustment for. So, Robbie, I have to ask you this. I know you've only been with Matt for an, maybe an hour or two today, but him being in fifth or sixth place this morning, I think is where he started out, six pounds back, really didn't have a lot of pressure on him. Knew he'd have to have this great day um, to, to be able to win the Bassmaster Classic. But when, when Robbie Floyd shows up and starts hanging around you and asking you questions, he has to know whether he's even talked to you about it or not. He has to know that he has a great chance to win now. Have you seen his demeanor change or it, the speed that he's fishing? Have you seen any changes in him?
No, he's been super calm since I've been with him. I haven't been with him an hour. I've been trying to find different stories throughout the lake and guys that don't have a camera. I've been with him probably 30 minutes now. But, no, he's he's doing the same thing, the same pace, trying to hit the same targets, exactly like you guys are, are guessing about and the things he's trying to key on. Like you said, those little points, there, you know, those ends of these little stretches. He's putting the power poles down now, so he might – want to spend a little time here but no he's not speeding up and the the question was when i pulled up to him i i said were there this many people around you and i'm counting about i don't know 12 15 boats now i said were there this many people around you? he said no they've been coming in as the day moved on and i said was well, a good thing because at least it's not they're not leaving because that's always you know telling you well i'm not doing something right but yeah he's made his way up he's catching fish he needs one more to get the uh the limit but with people coming in, with me showing up, it's probably going to put a little bit more pressure and hopefully he can stay slow and keep being methodical. The other side of this story, Robbie, is Hank Cherry is just not getting bites today. And you talk about Matt Airy knowing that he's doing well with a lot of spectator boats, yourself showing up. Are you starting – you were with Hank Cherry. Is he starting to feel and see that he is falling behind Um, I, I haven't been with Hank much today other than the morning. And as you see, Matt with the keeper bass, it has to be 14 inches in length. And right now he's, he's hoping for a squeaker because you're wanting for that 14, 14 and a quarter. You don't care if it's a pound or a few ounces. And it wasn't because it has to be 14 inches to be a legal bass. But as far as, uh, Hank this morning, when I was with him, when he didn't catch a, uh, at least one good one on that first spot, I know he had to be, even though he didn't want to say it or admit it or anything, he had to be going like, man, I really thought they were going to be there because that stretch had paid off for him throughout practice uh, when I was with him day one, day two. And when that didn't start off the same way, I think that was a negative. But also now going out there to the jerk bait, his plan all along was to go there to get that one big bass. He doesn't need to go there to catch bass two, three, four, five. And I think that's the big thing for him. He's going to be doing some of the similar stuff you're seeing here, maybe a little bit different baits, you know, wanting to throw that, you know, vibrating jig and, you know, various colors. And, and I can tell you more about it. If I see him, I can tell you what he's thinking. But a lot of these guys are doing the same thing. If, if Hank does go out there and gets that jerk bike going, he'll probably be the only one doing it. That could be the key for him to win this thing. Or if he stays out there and doesn't catch anything, it could be the key that loses it. Robbie Floyd, thank you very much. Robbie Floyd always giving us a deeper, in, more inside look at what's going on at the very top of the leaderboard. We'll be doing that for the remainder of this very, Boy. very important day. Hey, I just want you to know, guys, I called Justin Kerr's bluff. I put it at two and three quarters and three pounds in his last two, just to keep him honest. So that is updated, tied for second. All right, we're looking at the real deal, and we'll be back with more. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Pretty close to uh, midday, halfway through our fishing day here on the most important day of the year, the sport of bass fishing, the day we crown our world champion, Bassmaster Classic final day. Let's see our anglers that we've been covering, talking to today. Talked to Chad Pipkins just a few minutes ago on how they are distributed throughout both arms of Ray Roberts Lake, the eastern arm, the longest one. Isle Du Bois, they call it locally. Head out to Steve Kennedy. What a big story he has yes. been. We talk about the ups and downs. He's got an adult dose of both during the course of this. Yeah, it, you could not have had a better, I mean, a bigger dream day one of the Bassmaster Classic. But since then, it has been all downhill for Steve Kennedy. Like you mentioned about Justin Kerr, you can't help but pull for a guy like that. You can't help but pull for Whoa. Steve Kennedy. Whoa! No. <laughs> oh my. Uh oh. Oh, he's still on there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hold on. Oh Wait, my gosh. Now hold on a minute. Uh, now hold on a minute. Uh, Let, listen. It's not, life listen. isn't fair. <laughs> no, listen. it's not. It's, it's not. not. <laughs> You're right. It's not. Call me the catfish king. <laughs> Take away the catfish. What? In the heck <laughs> happened to I right caught him. You thumped it. <laughs> we got to take a look at that again and again. I'm, I might Wait. vote for power pole replay of the day right here. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. What is going on? Right 
Listen, I love Steve Kennedy. Steve Kennedy is a very close friend, but I'm going to give him the business later today <laughs> And the good part about it, he'll laugh right along with us. He'll, he'll enjoy it. Check out this. <laughs> and the look. I mean, come on. Hey, listen. Thank God Steve Kennedy saw it was a catfish because he would have imploded right there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, had it come off, it would have been oh. another eight-pounder. One of I'm the not sure what. <laughs> We've made the comment before. Steve Kennedy does not know what to do with his hands. Right there, he does not know what to do. Sometimes you just have to laugh to keep from crying. I think that may be part of the case there when we think about Steve Kennedy and what he has been put through the end of today and, and well into today. Well, we got an important award to dole out here. A marathon peak performance. We have two, two recipients here, Mark Zona. Tom Sanders, we have never done this in the history of the marathon peak performance. The history of this element, my friend. Mm -hmm. Your marathon peak performance, it's going to be two individuals. Justin Kerr catching four bass yesterday for almost 20 pounds. Look, he's got four fish in his live well right now. Not the quality that we saw on day number two. Still room to grow. And like one other competitor, Justin Kerr is around the right ones. He, he said he it. Absolutely is. And, and there's still, including Steve Kennedy, there's still about five anglers absolutely. that could win the Bassmaster Classic today. But we get the vibe, we get the feel, the trending momentum. And Justin Kerr was one of those guys that we talked to yesterday. You feel like he is definitely got a chance to win this event. Absolutely right. We talk about guys that are around the right caliber. Matt Airy starting off with a frog this morning, missing a big one, but then slowly starting to put fish into the live well. And what else would you want from a marathon peak performance, Tommy Sanders? Is this expo? I'm talking about this place is packed right now. Oh, boy. Just open. Exactly 30 right. Minutes ago. Big one here for Matt Airy. What else would you want? What more you want? Yeah. To be the final day of well, more you won't. the Bassmaster Classic with about three or four anglers going into the final half of the day with a legitimate yeah. shot to win the title. We've seen so many six plus pounders wade in here this week yes. and even more stories about numbers of six, seven, and even eight pounders lost. One of these anglers is going to catch You're one right. of those fish this afternoon. Absolutely right stuff right there from Justin Kerr and Matt Airy. You are both our marathon peak performance with, and here's the scary thing, man, with room to grow yeah. while Hank Cherry not getting bitten. For every, anybody that's just tuning in, Hank Cherry with two small keepers in his live well. Marathon peak performance. Let's get right out to Hank Cherry now. Again, the man who started with the lead today on a quest to win two in a row. Hooked up live. Oh, he got him out. Oh. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, wow. <sighs> wow. That's three, right? That is a big, big moment right there. And and from defeated and a pound and a half back to now two and a half pounds in the lead with just a four pounder right there, at least a four pounder. Wow, you saw that fish. He had him tangled right in the middle of that bush. And when I saw the line come out, I was like, look, he's got a great chance now. Wow. Well, Davey, you made the comment one of the guys were going to catch one of those good ones. <laughs> we came out of Marathon Peak performance. Hey, good call. Yeah, yeah like right. 30 that seconds like before it happened. Wow. Now? Uh feeling the same, man. It's just, I knew I was kind of running low. And I didn't want to have to depend on the dam for everything, but I also knew if I could just stay mentally straight, 
that I was gonna catch some fish. Not big, but huge. I don't know if this one will make it or not, but sorry to be rude, but I had some out in the line. Um, I'm just, dude, I'm just enjoying the opportunity that's been given to me. That's the best I can say. Needs more. He needs more. Oh, absolutely. That that was but that was a awesome big swing right there. Incredible two or three minutes for Hank Jerry. Does not include that weight right there for Hank Cherry does not include that keeper he just caught. Hank Cherry, man, after a morning of very, very four hours of very, very slow fishing, Hank Cherry with some, some reason for excitement right now for sure. And Hank Cherry, a guy who's got this thing on his mind. He is a man on a mission. Let's go! If the Lord wants it that way and he blesses me with another championship, Brother I'll Grace. be happy to have it. At the same time, it's been a heck of a week. Uh, we're not even close. This has been uh, kind of the mystery machine. The, the first day kind of went as it planned and the, the bush deal didn't take off. Then this morning I catch those two big ones earlier thinking flipping things going to happen around the trees and it didn't happen. I scratched my head for a few hours and then Finally went to the jerk bait, which I was pretty confident I could catch some fish out there. I really didn't want to do with that early in the tournament, but uh, I lost a big one, caught four or five keepers. So I, still mixed emotions about what's going on out there. I just, I just think I've just got to stay in the moment and just fish whatever feels right. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Tonight, in primetime, the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is on Fox. Oh! Catch all your favorite pups as they take center stage in Best in Show. It all begins at 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. You'll find this interesting. Zachers was two competition days away from qualifying last year that for that time. He was oh that close. God. That's right. He just didn't execute, I guess. No, he did not. So he close. Not. So, so close. Far. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. That's a thrill. He's a good boy. Hank Cherry started the day with the lead. Spent a good little bit of time knocked out of that lead this morning by the likes of Matt Airy, Justin Kerr. Hank Cherry is back in the lead now on the strength of this catch. Watch this fish come out of the bush for Hank Cherry. When things like that, Davey, you talk about this all the time. <laughs> when things like that, what you just got to see right there, when that happens, I don't know, maybe the stars yes. are lining up a little exactly. bit. Exactly. These anglers are all great. They have done, you know, they've flipped a lot. They've done this a lot. Hank Cherry, certainly the reigning world champion. But when things like that happen, you just go, yeah, well, it might be his turn again. <laughs> that was an, definitely an uppercut from Hank Cherry back over to Matt Airy live. If I could get a big bite on the inside of this stuff, I would slide up in there, but this is a little bit shallower. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Got it. God, no! I didn't even know he had it. I thought he missed it. There's a freaking pink leaf sitting there. I thought it was my frog. Wow. Never hooked him. I never even hooked him. So that fish huh? swam straight to the boat and he didn't realize he was on. Oh. God, that was a good one. I can't believe that. That was my own. That's 100% my fault. Watch this 100 bait. 100% my fault. Watch this bait. Four pounder. Oh, that's a solid that fish. A good one. When he, when he swirled on it, I'm watching, and I thought my frog was still sitting there because there was a little leaf there. And then I realized my line's up under the boat. Idiot. That's an idiot for you. So he mentioned that, seeing the I leaf, thinking it was frog. A good frog fisherman basically watches the bait like a cork, a, a strike indicator, a bobber, whatever you want to call it. And that fish got that yes, bait. Yes, and 
but he thought that leaf Sorry, was his bait, so you don't know what I need set to be doing for a while. Still, I'm gonna throw you a number real quick. He's lost about missed yeah. about 13. We haven't done anything. We tried to lose this tournament today, today for sure. That's two big ones we've lost. Mm. I never got a hook in that sucker. When I set the hook, there was too much slack in my line. Stupid. That was so dumb. So long between bites, you just, you got to stay on your toes and as much as I'd like to say I was on my toes, I really wasn't on my toes. So I think he's beating himself up a little hmm. much here. There's a lot of distractions. Oh, oh, and the way he justified not setting the hook, I totally understand That'll that. Test is what it'll do. It's just a test. That fish was all of four. I yes. couldn't even Sorry. catch up to him. Like, and when I did, he just spit the frog back out at me. I don't think he ever had a hook in him, <clears throat> which sucks even worse. Let's talk. I got to say it again. He's basically fishing open water. A bait with three sets of He's trebles good, in it right I mean, there. We're still getting a bite here and there, you know. Would have been a, <laughs> a good. good deal. Stay positive. It'll happen. Right. Well, already telling himself to stay positive. You did mention one positive thing. He says, I know what I need to keep doing yes. right now. So there is some something to be gained from a, a really tough, uh, tough miss right there. It is fair to say when you hear that, this one's this is hard, man. Okay. There has been some of the most painful events throughout the last 24 hours that not in a Bassmaster Classic, Tommy. Guys, some of the most painful losses that we have seen just on the Bassmasters, yes. that's been in 24 True. hours. That's earlier today. That was a true Ray Roberts giant. I thought, I really thought the Steve Kennedy footage was going to be the worst. Watch here. Oh, my God. Oh, no! I didn't even know he had it. I thought he missed it. There's a freaking pink leaf sitting there. I thought it was my frog. Been texting back and forth with a lot of guys that fish the Bassmaster Elite Series, fish for a living. Your power pole replay of the day, and here's what a bunch of people have said. They are handing it right now to Hank Cherry mm -hmm. because there are two anglers, Matt Airy, Steve Kennedy, that have had the fish on to be well in the lead of this Bassmaster Classic. Sadly, Matt Airy, you're the power pole replay of the day. On that last replay, I could clearly see that whole frog. Gone. Gone. And that fish's mouth. We mentioned it from the, from the get-go, Friday morning, early. We're going to weigh in fish, and that's what we're going to determine a leaderboard from, but it's the fish that we don't weigh in and see that are really the ones that change. And for these two guys, I mean, that is – it is incredible. Bigger bigger than half the field's weights, what they've just lost in the last 24 hours. Yes, yeah, Aries had on today job just doing dumb math. Just today. Just today. Aries had on a 23-pound bag. For sure, 22. That one just then, that was a stocky fish. That was <laughs> yes. a built out fish. Yeah. You, for They've sure, got for to sure keep telling 20. themselves, we have been getting the bites. We can get more bites. Okay. We just got to put them in the boat. The other thing is, you're only going to get so many shots know, on this lake. I know, I know, but you, you got to think <laughs> right, something right. positive. Back over to Chris Jones. Chris. I mean, four to six pounders are eventually going to stop biting yes, your frog. Yeah, yes. Three fish, small ones for Chris. Dang it. Sucker was swimming off with it, didn't get a hook in him. Still got a bite.
Got a mat down. Stay on, stay on, stay on. Good adjustment, Chris. Good adjustment. They just, they just ain't wanting to react to that. Boy, he eat it too. That's a good sign right there. Maybe I made the right adjustment. Thank y'all. Good, t yeah. Talking about a change. That bro I could just see that brush hog falling too slow. It was just. Man, it feel good there. And he come back and got it again for the second time. That was, yes, sir. I had a few bites on it in practice, but I didn't throw it much. Two pounder. Yeah, I just put a young four and a half inch flipping tube on and smoke red flake and dip the tail chartreuse and that was the first flip. I mean, that's, it's encouraging. I might even go back through my area over if I, if I get a few bites here and, and catch a few more. That's right. Z, we had one of the not one of the the best start to a Bassmaster Classic I can ever we remember. Don't have a good ending. We're about to have one <laughs> no. of the best, if not the best, ending. Time and I can tell you, it has been a weird day so far. So many great stories, so many high points, and so many low points for these guys who all have that trophy in mind. There's Jones right there, thinking he made a good adjustment. Maybe he can surge for a bit for us. Who knows gonna, who's going to make the big move right now? Hank Cherry moving down, then moving back up again. Justin Kerr, Matt Airy, very strong in the background for sure. Like you guys say, who knows how this thing is going to end up, but it's looking pretty good. Here's the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, we have got a combination barn burner, nail biter, free for all, battle royal going on here on the biggest day in the sport of bass fishing, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. First time ever at Ray Roberts Lake. We can talk about the wider world of bass fishing, the Bassmaster Elite Series. Let's take a look quickly at our Seaguar Bassmaster rookie watch uh -huh. here. North Carolina angler Brian New had the best possible rookie start a rookie could ever have winning the very first tournament he entered as an elite. Yeah, that's a really hard one to gauge going up north, going to Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River. I kind of have a feeling we might see a little bit more movement on that leaderboard for okay. the Seaguar rookie watch. Hey, next year we might have a couple new, or, or at least one new rookie. We could have a Justin Kerr. Could Absolutely. have a Chris Jones, Chris Jones if they win this tournament. How about the rest of our top ten currently? Hank Cherry, we've got Drew Cook, you've got Steve Kennedy, all former rookies of the, of the year, year as well Great in point. our top ten on the Classic final day. Sweet. And Hank, after winning that Rookie of the Year, went on to almost win his first Classic he ever fished in. Exactly, and it's 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 a really amazing when you see these top rookies coming in, you know, they to qualify to get to the elites is very, very difficult. And we see the fishermen get better and better each and every year. Mm -hmm. About time to yeah. get our Yamaha midday report, I think. Yeah, it is about time, Tom yeah, Sanders, yeah. Yamaha midday Overdue, report. maybe. Justin Kerr getting the job done so far today. The only thing we haven't seen at least yet. Justin Kerr. Big fish on day number two. Four fish for only 20 pop for almost 20 pounds. Today, I believe we do have him at five bass right now. Yes, we do. Unofficially 11 pounds, probably a little bit more than that. So far, a solid day, but he needs to relocate those giants that he had on day two. Yeah, even though he's uh, three or four pounds back right now, if you saw him weigh in yesterday, he certainly knows how to catch big Lake Roberts bass. Yeah, really the story of the morning. Matt Airy not connecting on some critical, critical frog bites. High risk, high reward. Landed this one right here. And man. 
And, and both of the losses, here's his, his big fish so far of the day and certainly anchors his fish that he has in his live well. But both of those fish that he has lost on the frog, the one a little earlier and the one we're about to see here in just a minute, we could clearly see yes. four to five pounders. It's no fish stories. Yeah, they, we could clearly yeah. see them. These were not filler fish. These were not no. two to two and a half pound Ray Roberts fish. These were big, big fish. Gosh, and there's some days you could bat 100% with that bait, and there's some days you just don't. Well, this fish right here flipping for Matt Airy, but a lot of those bigger bites so far right here. Saw the whole fish eat the whole frog. Which the best thing for Matt Airy right there was that he didn't know that fish had it, which probably helped. It still came off. And then just a few minutes after, we saw those losses from Matt Airy. Hank Cherry. Yeah, very, very, if you're just tuning in here on FS1, your leader coming into this final day, Hank Cherry catching one up shallow early, catching a jerkbait fish here. Then it kind of just died, which has been kind of unusual for Hank Cherry in this event. But about 20 minutes ago, this was a critical loss in between, call this about 9.30. And what's interesting is really listening to his breathing. It's been very shaky. And this fish right here, putting Hank Cherry back in the lead. Changed everything. He went about three, three and a half hours Long without time, a keep any, yes, anything significant at all. And this, not a big fish by any means, but could prove to be a critical one by the end of the day. That's your Yamaha Midday Report. There are Look our leaders right thing. there. Justin Kerr is throwing. I love it. Oh, That's the rat is, oh, I thought it was too late for the rat. <laughs> Not, never too late for the rat, huh? <laughs> never too late for the rat. That's why you've got to know that he's still in this thing. As long as he throws that, I think he has a chance to catch a big one. I noted during the commercial break, the last time that we had a rat factor in a major event was our college championship. Tommy and I covered that. 2014. Yes. I fished it and it got my brains beat in by Tommy. You didn't have too. a rat. He, I did not have a rat. Came from the West Coast, brought some West Coast Tom styles Frank. to Tom Chateau. Frank. Tom Frank did yes. that and he texted me and said, guess where I got the rat from? Right. I got it from Justin Kerr. Wow. Tom Frank was a 46-year-old <laughs> college angler. Yes. <laughs> junior and a junior. That's that. right. Yeah. <laughs> he fished as a co-angler on the Bassmaster Elite Series when they used to have anglers in the back of the boat and then yep. also served our country in the military. Yes, sure. Great fisherman. Great, great day, man. Oh, man. Great day. Everything you want and plenty more. Promise of plenty more to come. Because today. we yeah, go ahead, because we all know this tournament is far from over. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. this tournament's going to take more than 50 pounds to win. We lost a little bit of weight, losing time yesterday. It is going to be the race to get past 50 today. And we're all racing toward that 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's when the weigh-in takes place. The Dickies Arena is going to be uh, could be very, very, very tight. So, been so great having you all with us for four hours of live coverage here from the World Championship. We've seen Bad some Master big Clark. losses here this morning. Let's hope that we see some big catches for some of these anglers this afternoon. Yep, the ups and downs of the final day of the Classic are legendary, and we have had the full measure of them all throughout this morning. And Things just really haven't slowed down that much. Usually we get a lull by this time of day. It's still cooking out there. Friday more. Dave Merce will see you later on Bassmaster.com. Thank you so much. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. I want to welcome in all our viewers that have been watching on FS1 all morning long. 
It is Championship Sunday at the greatest spectacle in all of sport fishing. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. And this is the 51st edition happening right there on Ray Roberts Lake. And it is not deja vu. You are not reading wrong. That is the same guy who was leading at this time last year's classic. He is trying to go back to back. And Hank Cherry has just recently regained the lead. But really, the going on's in Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas, they say. Things have not been bigger so far on Championship Sunday. This our home host community, of course, uh, Fort Worth. And then just down the road at Ray Roberts Lake State Park, we had takeoff this morning. And right now, we have gone all the way from takeoff to our expo. And we are in Marathon Studios right here at our outdoor expo. Ronnie Moore, the vibe at takeoff was literally anybody's got a shot. And the difference, too, was it was much muggier. It is, you can tell, every single day of this tournament, it feels like the weather has changed and the anglers have, to, have had to change with them. But this time, it was very muggy. And a lot of positive anglers feeling like, man, this incoming storm, this weather, it's going to make them bite. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of changes. Steve Kennedy, for one, has, has not been the same since yesterday's takeoff with those storms. The way he's fishing, he's kind of uneasy in his approach, losing fish uncharacteristically. It's changed his game for sure. We thought Hank Cherry with the morning bite might get into something early. It's been really slow for him. The last hour or so, though, Dave, we've really seen a lot of these anglers start to catch them, fill their limits, and now we're seeing the leader leaderboard solidify up at the top. Well, Ronaldo, you know what time it is. It is time for our Toyota Midday Report. Ah. And we'll just get caught up on what has been happening all day long on FS1. And once again, want to welcome in all the great viewers that have been watching there. Justin Kerr, representing the Bass Nation. Talk to me, Ronnie. Justin Kerr, one of the best West Coast anglers there is. He's won the US Open back in 2008. He knows exactly how to come up in big tournaments. Although this is his first Bassmaster Classic, some of his best friends in the state of Arizona have fished and performed plenty on the Classic stage, throwing a big wooden rat. If you've never seen that, it's basically a jointed deal imitating a squirrel with yeah, a big wake bait right bill on it. And it's very interesting, a West Coast tactic for sure, brought east, has caught some on that, and a chatterbait has been big for Kerr. Oh, you know what? It's Matt Aries' mom's 70th birthday today. We all sang happy birthday to her. He'd love to celebrate with a classic trophy this afternoon. Aries is one that is doing something a little bit different. We talked to him in the interview room after weigh-in yesterday, and he's mixing in a few baits that we all tie on to catch big ones. Throw in a frog a lot. He has had the bites this morning, Dave. He has had the bites to have over 20 pounds and be in the lead comfortably. He has lost some of them. He has been scared by and startled by some of those bites. And then some have just unluckily came off for him. But Ari is still hanging tough, swapping the leads. I said this, since the day one weigh-in, no one has been within half a pound of the lead. It's been a pretty good gap between Kennedy, Cherry, and, and others. Ari today is the only one to take the lead back from Cherry. Now they're in a duel for the rest of the day. And when we went away from FS1, he had four fish in his live well after missing all of those fish. This one right here gave him a limit, a solid fish. He's only one pound out of the lead. Everybody wants to know about one guy, Hank Cherry, a reigning defending champion. And how is his debut? Really, we were wondering if that shad spawn would help Hank Cherry this morning, but we realized we are about a day and a half, two days removed from the most recent shad spawn, and that's just not gonna be a thing anymore on this lake. So today, after catching two fish, this one hooked outside the mouth, lucky, lucky to land it. He went and decided to go back flipping, had a big boil in that bush, lost this one. You hear the breathing, the frustration, but Cherry, sticking with it. Landing this fish right here has given him momentum to propel him back into the lead. Wow, big bites, big decisions, and big risks really with Cherry when you think about it. You look at what his day was yesterday. This is one of those terms, and I hate it when anglers use it on the stage. They say, well, it looks good on paper, but it's kind of the case with Cherry, because yesterday, oh, just yeah, six it bites. Good. It's 11, 12, I think, something like that.
A lot of these anglers not getting a bunch of bites. We saw that Steve Kennedy getting five bites yesterday, only bringing in four and leaving an eight pounder out on the water. Execution, even from the best in the world, has not been great this week because of the crazy structure and cover these guys have to fish. Yeah, so, you know, we've, we've uh, still kind of following the game plan uh, from this morning, flipping a jig, mixing it up with a frog. I really jacked one up a minute ago, probably half hour ago. I'm sure y'all probably saw it, but just a, I mean, a dang rookie mistake. I'm sitting there and <laughs> took my eyes off my frog, which you never do ever when you're throwing a frog. And I heard the explosion and I looked up and I, I thought I saw my frog still sitting there, so I didn't do anything. Well, about that time, my line's going under the boat. And when I set the hook, it was obviously on a lot of slack line. I tried to reel up what I can, but I didn't want the fish to spit the frog out. And I set the hook, stuck, the, I, I don't even think I ever stuck him. And I get him up beside the boat, and frog, I mean, frog's all the way in his throat at this point. And it, uh, the frog just, he just opens his mouth, the frog comes out of his mouth. I don't even think I hooked him, but it was, you know, it was a four pounder. And, uh, you know, lost a great big one this morning, but you know, that, like I said, that's just fishing like this. One, one hundred percent my fault. One other one I couldn't do anything about. But um, we're gonna keep grinding, man. Keep a jig in our hand and mix in the frog when it's applicable, and uh, try to connect with a couple big, big ones. You know, we need we need a couple six pounders right now, and uh, that would uh, we got a 15 incher in there and like a two and a quarter. We definitely. I would love to get rid of both of them with, with two bigs, you know, two five pounders or something. And that would be, uh, you know, I, I feel like if you get over 20 today, you got a shot at least, you know. You're going to make the leaders catch them. And that's what we're here to do. We want to make them earn it. Put as much pressure on them as we can. You know, the company slogan is big bass, big stage, big dreams. Big events like this, it can be, those dreams can become big nightmares. But, man, uh, you look at the fish lost here, and, and that really has been the story of this tournament. Outside of the changes with weather, we have seen an incredible amount of fish lost in this tournament, and that's just the way they're fishing. So we will see all of the fish that come to the weigh-in stage today. And yes. Those are the ones that that we account for in the leaderboard. That's how we formulate it. But the story, it's weird to have the story not be on the ones that were caught, but the ones that were lost. Everyone losing a key fish. Justin Kerr, 13 pounds on day one, lost a six, lost a three. And that's just how it is this week. Who loses less will win in the end. And Hank Cherry is really only one loss was today in that in the thickest cover he's tried to flip today. Justin Kerr trying to do something that only one other individual has ever done, of course, the late Brian Kershaw. And uh, wow. winning the Bassmaster Classic through the Bass Nation. And, and man, this guy, incredibly calm, incredibly collected, but, but he's got a strong resume. But, but the cool thing about that story is it's just it really can happen for anyone. And, and that's big bass, big stage, big dreams. That's where it comes from. The, you... It's great to make the Elite Series. Not everyone will, but there's ways to do this through the Bass Nation. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about on uh, Bassmaster Live on Fox Sports 1 was that this guy's not – look at that rat. Oh, my gosh. Please have something blow up on that. But <laughs> Justin Kerr is, is a very seasoned angler. Sometimes we see the Bass Nation representatives who have beat out thousands of anglers to make it here, no matter what season we're in with the Classic. They have beat out thousands to make it here. Kerr is not necessarily a rookie or unseasoned. He has fished quite a bit in a lot of big tournaments. But he has to fish the grassroots tournament circuit because he lives out west. Unless you uproot your family and move to the central part of the country or the eastern part of the country to do the opens, this is your path to the Classic and this could be his path to the Elite Series. If he were to win today, he would get an invite, something that has not happened uh, ever in the history of the Elite Series, to have someone win it that's not on the Elites and punch their ticket to qualifying. And it's cool to hear him say, man, I might just retire if I won. And Jerry just boated <sighs> another fish. This would be his f limit fish.
Adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. That's what you see out of Hank Sherry. He told me just a moment ago, he said, Robbie, I made a change. I went to a little bit smaller presentation, about a quarter ounce weight, 15 uh, pound line, and that little crawl in the end. He said, they weren't doing, they weren't biting what they were biting before. I'm going to go to that spot I started on, you know, day one, day two, and in practice when he was with me and see if they like it. They like it. He now has his limit. Now he's trying to cull. But getting that fifth fish was key, and it all happened because he made a little adjustment. They didn't want the heavy stuff getting down there on the bottom. They wanted something lighter, and he pretty much finessed his way into a limit. Great stuff from Robbie Floyd. Always great to see Robbie at the Bassmaster Classic. Had more bites. I don't think I've ever seen a Bassmaster hour. Classic growing up without a Robbie Floyd yeah, on the water. That's crazy. watching a reigning and defending Bassmaster Classic champion Hank Cherry. You mentioned Robbie Floyd in the Bassmaster. See that yeah, current but... pushing through there? See the leaves going? Well, that just slowed the day way down. Explain that, Mercer. Hank Sand catching his fifth fish has now slowed his day way down. He knows he's got a limit now. He doesn't have to doesn't have to do anything. You know what I mean? Like he does. He's got one target. Have you it's been changed? It means just that big bite. Have you ever held your breath for five hours? Because we just watched Hank Cherry do it. He finally. Matt Airy exhaled. Matt Airy. It's on the outside of his mouth. Doesn't help a lot, but he helps. Airy does have one less than two pounds in his live well. This will cull that one. Definitely helps. I know we got a little one. Yeah, I know where the little one is. It's eating up, Ronnie. That's a little one. That's a pretty good trade. Pretty good trade. Probably at least a half a pound up there. It is indeed. We just on bass track a six and a half from Brock Mosley to jump into the top six. Wow. Probably. Probably not a good shot of Brock Mosley coming back to win this event after having a great practice. But we now see, we see a six and a half from him. We see Hank Cherry fill his limit. We see that frog bite yep. from Matt Airy. It is indeed this midday. This will be the best midday bite of the week. Let's see it. Oh, that's fun. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. If you bass fish, that's fun. That's exciting. And that is even more exciting here at the Bassmaster Classic on Championship Sunday. Matt Airy continues to surge and the lake is coming alive. The 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, and by Nitro Boats. Welcome back. That is where it's all going to go down this afternoon, right here in beautiful Fort Worth, Texas, at Dickey's Arena, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. Matt Airy 
just hooked into another fish, made a call. And let's have a look at how that affects our leaderboard. You see right there, Hank Cherry still in the lead with 49 pounds, 10 ounces. But Matt Airy moves into second place with 47 pounds and an ounce as he can tr tries to give his mother candy the greatest 70th birthday gift ever. And that would be a Bassmaster Classic title here this afternoon at Dickey's Arena. And man, it has been a fun week. Great crowds, Justin Kerr representing the Bass Nation right there. An unbelievable way in venue. One of my favorites we've ever had, actually, Ronnie. If you've never been to Dickey's Arena, you need to go for some kind of event. Well, actually, to be honest, I'm disappointed. You should be here for the Bassmaster Classic. The sound system, the lights, the screens, the, the format, the, karate. The, the ninja skills. It has been great in Dickey's Arena for the weigh-in, and I know you've enjoyed having those anglers back and interviewing them as well on the biggest stage in bass fishing. But we mentioned it, looking at that leaderboard, today it seemed like it was gonna be the race to whoever broke 50 pounds first. And we're, we're not quite there yet, but Cherry and Airy are right there back and forth. Either way, from the looks of it after this first half of the day, the Classic Trophy could be coming back to within a 10 mile radius of each other based on where these guys live in proximity. And don't, don't count the rest of them no, out. You no, know, the, I'm not, Cause no, I'm, I'm no. telling you, it feels like the lake is just starting to fire. You know, and there is supposed to be a storm coming in. The, anything could happen here this afternoon. And I, and I know people are gonna tune in and be like, well, they're just saying that. And I don't, I really, I don't think we are this time. I mean, sometimes we do. I never do, but but Ronnie does. Nice. We've seen an 8-3. We've seen an 8-1. We've seen sevens as well. Yeah. And it's not like a spring classic now. where it's cold and they might be uh, more lethargic. These fish, we got eight-pounders eating top water. Like, Two it could happen at any moment. Might be called for a comment there. Or at least a plea for some common decency, right? Lord help us if he sees us catch one. He's gonna be here, somewhere around here. Come on, Fiverr. <coughs> Let's go, Fiverr. If one of these guys wins it, Ronnie, we're going to have a pretty good party tonight because, I mean, the hotel is crawling with their families. Not just their direct family, but cousins, nieces, nephews. Me and Matt Airy's nephew were talking about the incredible, incredible pool on the third floor. It's got oh, a, yes. It's got and a, hot tub. I've been what? In that, I've been in that a couple days this week, dipping uh, the toes. Let's not get personal. <laughs> It is. The hotel has been popping with <laughs> fans and families and anglers. My wife just texted me and said, I'm just hanging out with Jacqueline Cherry and Julia Kennedy. And I said, <laughs> you pick two to hang out with on the final day of a classic with both their husbands in contention and re really in charge of this event since day one. Well, your wife may be hanging out with them, but you see a great view of Matt Airy and his Flotilla following him around here on Championship Sunday. Had another great takeoff crowd again today. Texas has shown out this week, and I can't thank Fort Worth, Fort Worth Sports Commission enough for really hosting another incredible Bassmaster Classic. It's been special to come to a new town and bring the, the whole show. That's the thing, like. We've come, Special. we've become accustomed to certain regions for the classic, and the DFW area is a new one, and it's been awesome. You look at both these guys, what a win does for their career. You know, Cherry literally goes into superstardom, you know, joins a league of legends. Um, and Matt Airy, man, th this this season on the Elite Series has been, it looked like Matt Airy's career was on cruise control, really. I mean, 
qualified for his first two classics, and then this season on the Elite Series, he's hit his first kind of hiccup where he's had some struggles. But, man, this solidifies you forever. There is a lot of trophies you can win. I say it all the time. But there's one title, and for the rest of your life, you win this, and you become Matt Airy, Bassmaster Classic champion, or obviously, as he already is, yes. Hank Cherry, Bassmaster Classic champion, Dos, champ, champ. That's the deal. We're either going to have an awesome storyline of back-to-back -back classic wins by Hank Cherry. He'll be the fourth angler to ever win back-to-back -back classics. He'll be the seventh angler ever to have more than one classic win. So that's historic. And then you have 53 other anglers trying to become a first-time winner, which is very cool. So, yes, we'll either have our 41st ever winner of a classic or history be being made with cherry doing it again so many great families and stories on the bassmaster elite series and bass obviously bass the entire family of bass being represented here this week but one of the you know most historic ones obviously the kennedys uh, you know one of the most popular families on tour they were so excited on on sure. day number one but since then, it has been a lot of frustration, oh, and I can only that. imagine how Julia and the kids are, are dealing That's with good. this. I mean, it is one thing to go through it. It's a lot tougher to sit on the sidelines and watch it. Yeah, and for, for Steve to just have the event go the way it's gone, losing an eight, losing a four, it's so hard. Catching, catching all of the non-species non possible when you really think it's going to be a bass bite, so many heart-dropping moments for him, and <laughs> it's really hard to interpret if day one was really just a big shad spawn moment for him or if that was a part of a whole pattern because yesterday we didn't get it, and he really struggled. Five bites all day, landed four of them, and then today the way it's been without the shad spawn as well. So if you got on it, what I noticed this yesterday, you did the weigh-in, obviously. We have top, the top ten coming into the final day. We only interviewed back in the green room two anglers out of the first 40 that weighed in. The other eight came in the last 15, which tells me they were an early flight on day one and a late flight on day two. They got to get out and get the most of that shad spawn possible. They got first dibs on a lot of places, and then we saw that in the leaderboard. They all were at the end of weigh-in yesterday, and not just because we held them. I mean, it's not like we just held them in order or anything like that. You talked about how things have kind of unraveled for Steve Kennedy and a little insider scoop that happened to take off this morning. And, you know, like in every sport, success erases all. I mean, he catches the five right fish this afternoon and wins this. None of us will talk about any of this stuff ever again. If he doesn't, he'll talk about it all the time. He'll think about it all the time. But right before takeoff, he couldn't find his phone. And his wife, I, I believe, because it was like literally while we were doing the countdown, so I didn't actually hear the full story. But he couldn't find his phone, and his wife Julia thought she knew where it was in the phone in, in the boat. So we've been waiting out to the anglers because it's so flooded, you can't get to the anglers to interview them. So I'm literally, you know, close to waist deep in the water, even well, deeper it, at times. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and Julia wades out. In, in jeans <laughs> to try and help him. And then it, he was like, I'm fine. And they, they, they went fishing. But it was, it's a family thing and a, a little bit of frazzleness. But like I said, don't give up on Steve Kennedy. There's still time. And if we've learned anything following this sport, when you're in Texas, things can change in a hurry. We just got greeted right here in the Bassmaster Live booth by LT, Lisa Talmadge, our tournament manager and director of the Elite Series. She's been keeping it in control, not only up at Pilot Point where the lake is, but here at the weigh-ins as well in Fort Worth. Ronnie, show some respect for our tournament official. She's trying to make her way through I the know. show. I mean, you don't need I to. I had to call her back in because I, I wanted her to You wouldn't have done that to trip. I know. Uh-huh. You wouldn't have done that to trip. I don't know. Maybe. No, you wouldn't. I don't know. Don't do it to LT. Little trip. <laughs> Lisa Talmadge doing a great job in the Elite Series and, and running takeoffs and everything along with John Stewart and Hank Weldon. But, man, it's been 
Oh, oh man, there he hooked up. Ah, he's not. I don't think he'll help. I don't think. He might. We're gonna find out. I gotta tag him. I think he's bigger than the first one we caught today. Where's my balance? can tell how tough it's been, Dave, that he doesn't know where his coal beam is because you're, you're just happy to catch five each day. Man, it, it was sweltering hot at takeoff. All the anglers were coming. It was the one Whoa. thing. Whoa, oh, hey. He's man. in the live well. <laughs> oh, he's got a limit. There's two in there. There's two in there. One on each side. Hey, we were talking about Look, a hot it's, tub. It's, and it's it, Ronnie it, and yeah. Patrick Walters. For the TH Marine Weather Watch here, hanging out in a mini hot tub out on the lake. That is the way to watch the final day of the Bassmaster Classic, if I've ever seen one. Get in the live well. We're not going in. There's no way we're leaving here. Watching Before. the Classic. Cool off in the live well, kid. Matt Airy, he's not cooling off. He is staying. He has caught more fish than anyone else today and has had more bites that he's lost than anyone else today. We will see if he keeps that hot streak going and jump into the lead. Maybe we get the back. live well. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Continuing to try and charge down our defending champion, Hank Cherry, a great aerial view and a great description, a visual description of the reason we have seen so many lost fish. It is literally hand-to-hand -hand combat for these anglers. And you see our leaderboard unofficial right now. Won't be official until they weigh him in this afternoon. But Hank Cherry at the top of the leaderboard, getting chased down by Matt Airy and a lot of fishing ahead of us here on a hot, sweltering day in beautiful sunny Texas in the mid 90s and not a breath of wind and it is stifling hot out there an incoming storm you gotta believe it's gonna get a little warmer with that but it will also heat up our fishing this afternoon yeah I really think this is the first week of summer the kids have been out of school for a little bit but this is the first week of summer in Texas and looking at that leaderboard that does not reflect the cold that Matt Airy just made so it's gonna get even closer on that leaderboard gonna go from about two and a half pounds to maybe a pound and a half or or so Matt Airy oh, making course. some adjustments That's done dry it out we're just gonna have to make do you can tell watching him, his body language and everything, and, and he may very well win this classic, but you can tell he's still a little rattled from this morning. I mean, he hooks a fish and, and within- oh, Prayers are being said. Three yeah. seconds, he's yeah. saying, please be hooked well. The, oh no, it's hooked on the side of the mouth. But it is amazing how one big bite can make you all of a sudden calm right down. You said it. Big bass, big stage, big dreams. It is so difficult when you have those big dreams to land those big bass at times to take them to the stage. You know, I mean, we've, we've all dreamt about it. We've walked through what it would be like to catch that one fish when you realize I probably won the classic. And Matt Airy's no different. He's probably replayed that in his mind a million times, hoping to have that chance. And today, he's got it. Got that chance for sure. And really kind of a perfect scenario for us to set up for a big championship Sunday. When you think about it, you've got your tournament leader with a fairly substantial lead, but not, not even close to insurmountable. The rest of the field has got no, there's no game planning. It, you need to catch the five biggest fish as possible. There's, you know what I mean? It, it, this is everything here 
and there's just a few hours left in the day, and Matt Airy is definitely charging as he continues to work. Topwater Frog now looking at a four box. Airy, Cook, Kerr, and Canterbury. You can tell it's hot. Look at Drew Cook. Looks like he's about to go sit in a live well and <laughs> hot tub it up on the lake. I swear to you, I, I was it, I was quite happy to be waiting in the water this morning. Like most mornings when you're doing the interview, you're kind of like, eh, i got to walk in the water. I hope I don't get bit by a snake. It's be embarrassing to get bit by a snake at the Bassmaster Classic. But today, I was, it was very refreshing. <laughs> Honestly? better man than I am I would not have done that I saw no, a committed I saw a giant snake out on Wednesday they're everywhere here it's crazy these guys going Not in after little. fish like Ari might have to if this one bites again Ronnie do you think if I had have got bit by a snake if, if one of those grabbed onto my rather manly calves and 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 I I ended up dying here at the Bassmaster, do you think people would say, what an idiot for wading in the water? Or do you think they would say, man, how committed to his craft was he? I mean, like, those were some of the most excellent <laughs> takeoff interviews ever. <laughs> and that's your legacy. No. <laughs> uh, I think they'd just call me an idiot. <laughs> They all had that same vibe this morning. Oh. You know, Canterbury, I'm looking at all these guys on the screen. They all kind of, they felt pressure because they knew, you know, as much as this lake has continued to change, it, it, sure, they played it off with the, you know, Hank's got a stumble. But, but you could off. tell the entire field knew this is not your average championship Sunday. Usually the vibe at takeoff is, you got two or three <clears throat> people that are very stressed, and the rest of them are just jovial because, hey, we're here. It's not an Elite Series event. It's the Bassmaster Classic. And why not wear your beautiful Avco straw hat? different things to point out. Justin Kerr has also been using a chatterbait. Uh, he, he said he's also been mixing in a stealth blade chatterbait, which is pretty a newer model. Yep. And I said, what's the difference and when would you do that? Normally, you think maybe clearer water. He said it, it tends to run higher in the water column. And instead of throwing a buzz bait or a wake bait or something, even though he's mixing in a wake bait, instead of throwing that all day, throwing that and keeping it a foot and a half, maybe two feet under the surface if it's deeper. Having it run higher stays in the strike zone longer. I believe he might go. Oh yeah. We got the limit. That one, whenever I reeled my bait up, it was chasing it up. And when I dropped it, he didn't didn't follow it down, so I had to put it back in there. Cook said he hooked and lost two or three over six pounds on day one of this event. Went back in there the next day, caught seven all non-keepers. Got a limit. 
Wow. It's so confusing. We did that three days in a row. That. that ain't easy to do on this pond. <sighs> What's in the four box right now? Airy Cook, Kerr, and Canterbury. But you know what I miss, Ronnie? I miss, I, I, it's one of my favorite parts of Bass Live. It, 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 it's both entertaining, educational, gives, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It is striker I I daily. Was, I wasn't quite sure what you were gonna say there, but now I feel like it is the daily trivia. You're correct. Yes, yeah. striker daily trivia. Let's have a look at our question. What bait was used to catch the Ray Roberts Lake record of 15.18? A jerk bait. A, B, crankbait, C, jig, D, soft plastic. Answer after the break. Ronnie, where are you going? I wish I knew the time of year. You're running out of time. Hey, you're ruining I'll decide this. after the break. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Well, Ronaldo, we were a little rough on the exit. Let's, let's. Let's get things better here. Let's pull it back in. Striker Daily Trivia. A, jerkbait. B, crankbait. C, jig. D, soft plastic. Once again, the question, what bait was used to catch the Ray Roberts Lake record of 15.18? I'm going to say a big plug. I'm going to say B, crankbait. We're in, the, we're in Texas, and you need a big plug to catch big bass. I'm going D, soft plastic. Soft plastic. Survey says... Shark bait, man. We should have phoned a friend or eliminated half or whatever it is. We are bad at this. It is. Really bad at this. Let's look at that giant oh freak. My look gosh. at it. Gosh. Ronnie, if somebody brought that into way in, yeah, I'd be yeah, it, it would be a We'd have to get a new roof on Dickie's Arena because you would blow the top off that place. Need to climb up on the main stage. I, just, I don't even know. But there it is. An incredible fish Shannon. called by Shannon. Elvington? Elvington. Just imagine that. Jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. Oh. Thump. And then you're like, oh, I got one. A 15 pounder. Oh my and largemouth on jerk bait, the first thing they do is open their mouth, <laughs> and it would feel like literally pulling in a five gallon bucket. Please let one of these guys catch one of them. I mean, I'm, uh, let's do a double digit. We're in Texas. Back out in the water, live. Four box with Airy, Cook, Kerr, and Canterbury. A double ditch it would give, could even give Chris Jones in fourth, over nine pounds back the lead off of just one fish. Others it would have to cull, but it would draw them very close. The 2019 Angler of the Year in the bottom corner, Scott Canterbury. While we were away in the break, this happened moments ago. Oh, my gosh. Daydreaming the one time. Oh. He didn't get it, though. I mean, I set the hook and the bite. Daydreams quickly become nightmares. Isn't it amazing how the fish, it's almost like they know. I mean, the harder you focus on the bait, it's, it's, when, you, it's when you're totally distracted that that happens. Oof. Honestly, with how these guys are flipping this week, you could leave it down there two seconds longer, and that doesn't seem like much to us, but that fish is just looking at it and for some reason, they get triggered. What are those kids in the live well are doing? I right just posted today. that. I was like, see if we can get big one moods on Championship Sunday. <laughs> I wish I could fit in a live well. <laughs> Should be a live trough. And that is, we missed a big one down there too, you know. I think there's more big ones where we started, but there's big ones on both ends of this place. Just tried to keep myself in the areas where I think the biggest bites are gonna be. 
not bites, just biggest bites. Don't take but five of the right ones, but. Which I feel like we've had. So we keep fishing through here and Feels like the kettle's boiling, Ronnie. I mean, it feels like it's it's been quiet for a little while, but it, it really feels like something is going to happen this afternoon. It, there's going to be. I just don't see this being one of those tournaments that finishes quietly. You're not even paying attention to me one bit, are no, you? No, I was going to say that yeah, we saw it. that yesterday. As soon as Bass Live ended, Kennedy loses the big one. Cherry catches his lemon <sighs> fish. Today, they will be running back for check-in because they all check-in at the same time, basically. Uh, 2.15, I believe. So they will only have 10 minutes or so, probably of fishing time, five minutes of running time to get back to the takeoff. So... They've got to get their work done a little earlier today, and we will see some fireworks. We've seen them today already, but came in the form of numbers by Airy, and he has left some weight out there. All the quality has been left. Has anyone fished clean? Must be low battery on that yeah. drone or something. If you look at our leaders, they've all kind of dealt with that. I really? Mean, well, that sucks. <laughs> Chris Jones and Hank Cherry. Jones, is the ones he's missed, he's been able to flip back and maybe get him to bite again. But Cherry's only lost one fish. Yeah. What is happening with Jones today? All small. Just every bite's just a smaller fish. For a guy that dominated our Fox coverage yesterday, literally, you know, it looked like I was comparing him to Caleb Kufal and what he did on Gunnersville. I mean, he was doing the same thing, but catching bigger fish, having a better result. And to silently go into the night here up to this point in the tournament, it's this lake is living up to its reputation. From the very beginning, we've said how unpredictable right, we're this, this lake is. We're kind of in this dead water zone now. I haven't caught any past this point, so let's make a run, Trey. So I will say this, Chris Jones is fishing in a very popular area this week. A lot of competitors have fished in there, and you're like, wow, you have dominated that area, and you have risen to the top and beat them all out. But, man, they have beat the lights out of that area. And you just don't know going into the final day. Based on the first two days, you're like, maybe there's some fish, and he will catch them. But some of these areas, they're not replenishing. These fish will not keep moving shallow. They are moving the opposite with this 100 degree. Wind. They're going deep. So if anything, they're leaving the shallow. So if you keep catching them and they start leaving, you're going to have a smaller population of fish to fish for. How's Paul Nick's quest for the dirty 30 going? I mean, a guy like that could be dangerous. Somebody who has to make a giant charge. Three for nine. Oh. <laughs> I feel like we would have already mentioned it if he was like had a big bag. Well, you know what I'm saying? Just thought I'd check. <laughs> Viewers want to know things at times. And everybody wants to know about this guy. Hank Cherry. Your tournament leader trying to go back to back. Every guy that picks up a flipping stick and and pitches to one of these bushes and catches one needs to be on high alert because it seems every time you get a bite, you will catch one or two more within the next three or four bushes. It's like a hot little 10-yard stretch that you come upon. Why do you think that is? A lot, I mean, a lot of times it's just a depression, a little bit deeper water. I mean, the fish try to get to the deepest water. Is that what you're hearing from anglers? At least I'm moving. I don't know how y'all are just sitting there. I said, at least I'm moving. I don't know how y'all are just sitting there. 
Yeah. I, I think that could be part of it. I think, you know, when you get a lot of fish, when you get a cold winter that backs up the spawn in Texas, you know, normally the spawn can last from March to June in Texas. When you back up the spawn like it did with the cold weather, they all flood the bank together, which means they probably all leave the bank at a certain point together, whether it's a wolf. They all start to move out. So I could see them positioning to some bushes, and then they'll go off to a foundation, and then they go to a brush pile. You know, some fish probably travel together. I mean, you got your close friends. You're I mean, go. people like to be where they're comfortable, yeah. right? And we're where they're comfortable. I mean, it is beautiful here in the expo, but Robbie is battling the heat out there <laughs> is. on our playing field. A hot, hot Texas day. And we're going to throw it out to Robbie Floyd. One thing I can guarantee you, you at home, you're not near as hot as myself and Hank Cherry right now. It says the ambient temperature is 92, 93 degrees, but it's also showing a 102 heat index. I live here. I'm, I'm 30 miles down the road, but this is the hottest day it's felt like to me this year. And these guys are battling for a $300,000 first place prize and hoisting that 70 pound first place trophy. And, uh, Hey, Jerry's noticing, I, I have to notice, it's just so hot, the wind's not moving at all. And you look at all three days. Day one, you had high winds. Day two, you've had, you know, thunderstorms in the morning, some winds. Then it got hot during the day. And day three, it is just absolutely sweltering. I think some of the guys were catching them a little bit more this morning when it was overcast and cooler, if you can call 80 degrees cooler. But right now, it's almost unbearable, and they only have two hours left of their day. Man, you honestly have to stay hydrated. Two hours left, Dave. Final day. I mean, dreams come true in the final two hours, and dreams are broken. Hearts are broken. My dream is coming true right now because if Robbie Floyd, who lives here, is that hot, I mean, my my pale Canadian butt would be uh, I'd be smelter melter or what, whatever you want to call it. But atop of our leaderboard, having a hot day again. It's Hank Terry, 49 pounds, 10 ounces. Should say hot at top of the leaderboard. He's still, we're waiting for that breakout to happen. And I feel like the kettle is boiling and the dream team is coming back up to talk about it. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Getting into the final couple of hours of fishing on the ultimate day in the sport of bass fishing. The pot of gold. The Bassmaster Classic. The pot of gold right there. That's absolutely a million dollar plus total yes. purse. $300,000 to the winner. Leprechauns are sweet. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. Uh, Berkeley, big bass itself, worth $2,500. Big, big payday and a big moment. So much more accrues to the winner as well. We'll talk about that a little bit in just a few minutes here, but uh, man, oh man, look at that view. There's your leaderboard, Hank Cherry, hanging in there, but still not able to get any sort of prohibitive lead out there. Matt Harry doing a great job of keeping pace there, Justin Kerr as well, Kristen Jones. Those four have been locked at the top yes. uh, for a good long while here. Coming down probably to a nail biter. We talk about the 300,000, you've won it, Davey, and there's a whole lot more that comes besides the cash money figure. Yeah, I remember back in the day, Ray Scott would say it would be worth a million dollars to win the Bassmaster Classic, even though the, the initial payout is less than that. But I can honestly say I think I've benefited or profited from it every year, and it's been 20 years ago. <laughs> Good for you. It's the gift yeah. that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one thing we, we got to talk about it at our midday break, you know, in all honesty, covering this Bassmaster Classic has been up and down. And really, Hank Cherry just sustaining. Really, the, We talked about it early this morning. The window has been let open almost the entire championship Sunday of this Bassmaster Classic. Not to say some guys have blown it, but there have been some guys that have blown it in this classic mm. yeah I've, I've gotten texts from some friends and saying that, that they even felt nervous w when these guys were hooked yes. up because they knew the chances of them losing those fish were 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 great and unfortunately it has happened for several angles there will be four or five anglers when they leave here without a trophy knowing that they had the fish hooked to be the winner of the Bassmaster Guaranteed. Classic. Guaranteed. All right. Well, let's take it out on the water right now we still have plenty of fishing time left two hours as we mentioned right now and Certainly one of the big stories today. Well, both of those guys right there, Kerr and Airy, and Jones, who just cleared the picture there. But Matt Airy, keeping a close eye on him. He uh, 
made it well known early on today that he was going to get right in there at the top and made the top. Tell me about it, brother. Boy, he has missed some big bites today, but absolutely still in the mix. That wasn't a bite. Not a bite. Getting a little trigger happy now. <laughs> yeah. uh. <laughs> and it never causes anything to jerk. Sometimes it hits them little limbs on the way down. This is a tungsten jig, so it's a lot more sensitive too. And that is oh a bite. Oh God, I didn't get a good hook in her. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah. Oh boy. That's a critical bite right now. Not that right much now. bigger, but it'll help. I thought it was a lot bigger. <laughs> Three pounder anyway. It will help, I think. Smallest. Oh, it was a bite. So we'll balance them again. This is going to go to the last hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe even the last 15 minutes. The last cast. I haven't seen any shots of the floating gallery of fans out there, but I assume they are still with Matt Ariat, so you assume he's got a pretty good idea that he's right in there. Absolutely. Punching it out in the clinches uh -huh. right at the top. That put him at 17 pounds. He's wow. one pound, nine ounces back of Hank Cherry. Yeah, there's. Coming down to the waning moments of this 2021 Bassmaster Classic. It looks like the shallow stuff is done for Hank Cherry. He said, I'm going to work around this point, and then I'm going to go out jerking. He told me, you know, early in the week on Wednesday, he said, I don't want to be out there catching all my fish, but I know there's a couple of big ones out there, five, six. We've seen him miss them. I've seen him catch them. So he's going to make the move from the shore, go out there. He's let it rest throughout the day, see if he can find that big one, because right now you've got several guys that are literally within one medium-sized fish from winning a Bassmaster Classic. Mm. Thank you, Robbie Floyd. Yeah, maybe even smaller than a medium-sized fish. Yes. <laughs> as, as we a look at it right Texas now. Fish in view of recent events that we just witnessed right there. Back out live to Matt Airy. Unofficial pound and nine ounces out of the lead. Shallows up right here, and then it gets deeper right there, going in, leading into that point. Leading into that point is where a big one ought to be. That deeper water, right on the side of those points where a lot of them have been setting up after the morning feed. They've been sliding right in there next to those. Sir? Huh? Oh, yeah. That one spit up too, like three inch shad. Good and flat. I'm gonna throw that frogs. Are you? Just like my Yes! Yes! Oh! 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Got my fifth one anyway. Every, every bite's a dollar. Thin. Thin? Yeah, he was. But look at his, he'd, he'd been caught or something before. Man, it feels good to have five. I the whole five's going to get his way. It got rough. Now, I just need a dang six pounder to accidentally do that. I flipped it in there and swung it out, and it, see, I felt it go thunk. Is this my water? See the top of that bush? Yeah. I come off that one over to this one and she dumped it. Yeah. They are biting a yes. lot better today than they have the previous two days yes. this time of the day. Absolutely. A little bit sketch service right there for Justin Kerr. A little, little calm, but. Yeah. There's a call. See how that thing hit it like a swim jig? Right? Dirt shallow, man. It's crazy how they hit it like that. It's surprising to me that Matt Airy and Justin Kerr are catching these, the two that are really making the charge on Hank Cherry, catching fish in a foot of water yesterday and today. It's like they moved from the outside edge up there Absolutely. shallower, and those are the only two guys that have really figured that out. You know, and, and the other thing that we've really seen, there have been little areas, little pockets of where these better than average size bass have come from. And the other thing, it's fair to say, I, I don't know if the, it's reloaded. I don't know if there was ever that many there. But like you said, it seems like it's actually getting better, yes. much better today. There is no doubt that that storm yesterday morning oh, okay. absolutely hurt that bite. Yes. But, I mean, heck, even on day one, this time of day sucked. Yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not that way today. happening out there and again they've got a nail biter big big doings out there on lake ray roberts big doings inside yes. the, the bassmaster outdoors expo for the third day in a row this place is jam jam packed and so many young people very very encouraging to see all, all the interest that young packed. people have a, a, a new a new interest it seems in the sport of bass fishing our own ronnie moore is out there somewhere i think near the academy sports and outdoors booth ronnie What's going on, guys? Hey, we're in the Academy Sports and Outdoors booth, and I've got Easton with me. And Academy, obviously, the title sponsor of the Bassmaster Classic and has been for the last few years. A great partnership uh, communication there and brand. Easton, we're here over by the Magellan. You guys got a lot of technical apparel, not just for the avid angler, but also the recreational angler as well. That's right. Yeah, about two years ago, you know, we really started focused on trying to develop products for that avid angler. And we took the base that we had from the Magellan Outdoors business where we have a lot of great fishing apparel with the family sportsmen and we brought it up a notch. And we started thinking about how do we cater to that avid angler. And there were three things that we really wanted to deliver on with that collection. The first was task driven design. The second was advanced fabrication. And then lastly, unmatched value. So you'll see a lot of great features and benefits from our assortment, whether it's tape seams, fully waterproof, breathable, UPF 50 on a lot of our garments. Wow. We've really tried to up the game. The next thing that we've done is we've noticed that that female angler has really started participating in fishing. And we've seen it in license sales. We've seen it through the pandemic. You can see it if you walk around the expo today that that customer is here. And we've got a, a line dedicated specifically to the women angler that has all of those benefits at an unmatched value. Lastly, when we got to the Bassmaster sponsorship last year, 
we sat down with the leadership team and wanted to think about how we could really celebrate the event. And the way that we've done that is with an exclusive Bassmasters Magellan Outdoor Pro collection that we have in 30 of our DFW area stores and here at the event really celebrating the Bassmasters. I see you've got one in your hand there. I do. I, I, I'm trying to sneak away with it, but you can get your own apparel and more here at the Academy Sports and Outdoors booth. you got all the brands represented that you'd normally see in a store. And one cool thing that I've respected about Academy is that if you're an avid angler and you need to get baits before your tournament, you can get them. If you're a recreational angler looking to get in the sport you can get that equipment too kayak anglers as well there's so many things at academy and we're proud to have you guys represented here at the bassmaster classic so if you're here will rogers memorial center come to the expo check out the academy booth check out bassmaster live and then go to the arena at dickies and you'll have a great time today at the bassmaster classic Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Oh, we're getting down to it. Final hours of fishing on the ultimate day. The sport of bass fishing. I think we crown our national champion, our world champion, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic and Hank Cherry looking to repeat there. He's got some stiff, stiff competition. You see Matt Airy has been on his heels all day long. Justin Kerr, Chris Jones also in touch with that lead. So it's going to come down to it. Could be a real nail biter at the end. So great to have you with us. So great Wait, to have our guest what? now. Yes. What, what's going One on the, here? I mean, the superstar of the NASCAR Cup Series in the auto racing world at large and a friend of fishing, Ryan Newman. Ryan, thank you for being with us out here today. Oh, it's a pleasure. I, it's just total co coincidence. Uh, yeah. The All-Star all Race is in town. Uh, yeah. Bassmaster How Classics does that in town. This doesn't happen. I don't know who scheduled this other than <laughs> some racing and fishing the, gods. The fishing gods, right, exactly. Right. But, but here's the, the weird thing. for If you don't follow NASCAR, we're sitting here at the Expo. I look up, I see Ryan Newman. We wave to each other, and I, I just uh, you have a race tonight, I, and you're hanging at the Bassmaster I was going to come in and crash the party when you were live. <laughs> and I should have because we ended up live. So I could have got it just done and had it like an impromptu act. Right, real quick and out of right, here. Right, right. But it's it's all good. I, I, I had a, I made up a story. I, I said I wanted to come over and get Johnny Morris's autograph, and I heard he was in town. Yes. I was going to be busy tonight for the race, so I just figured I'd stop by. But Right, do a little commentating get an with Bassmaster autograph, Classic picture, in the last you know? couple hours. Yeah, Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff right there. Well, let's take a look at uh, yes. Hank Cherry, our leader. I don't know how much you've been able to follow it today, Ryan, but it's a, it's a pretty good final day here. Yeah, I have. So have you been following the Bassmaster Classic the last two days? Yeah, I started following it last night and this morning. And um, and Hank's, Hank's a local guy for me right. back in the Lake Norman area Lake Norman. in, in uh, North Carolina. And he when we had our uh, charity fishing tournaments, he fished in several of them. So uh, uh, I know a lot of Hank and, and um he looks like he's he's on top of his game right now, no doubt. He so. he has been very quietly confident the entire week, and really kind of the only kink in the game plan was this fish loss right here. Backed it up at about, call it 10 o'clock, caught this big one. And that's kind of been Hank Cherry's week. If he has hooked a better than average size bass, he has put it in his live. So do you hang with him back at Lake Norman? No, I haven't. And we actually were talking about doing some fishing together through um, some, some local TV stuff, um, which I, I was just, just in the last two weeks was told and asked to do it. So um, we'll see if we get a chance. He, his, his life might change here in the next little bit, so I might not get to go fishing with him. His, his, his <laughs> life might just get better. Right, right, yeah. right. But that's the thing about Texas, man. It's it, there's it's I've fished down here at the racetracks and stuff, and there's giants. So you yes. just never know when you can get on that six, seven, or eight pounder, and it just changed your day. Yes, and you get two of those, just like I think it's what Kurt Kurt caught a couple of those. Yep. It just boom. I mean, you're in the game. Yeah, there is a definite reason I spend about forty percent of the year down here in Texas. <laughs> hey, real, uh, your partner in crime, Martin Truex, made a comment to me as we're watching Matt Airy, another fella that fishes around the area where you're from. Truex said, man, I'm not going to lie. He goes, dude, the only reason I race cars is so I can go bass fishing and hunt deer. <laughs> Ryan, I've known you a long time. You and I are very shallow individuals. Yes. I have a feeling you you are the same exact way as Truex. Yes, Martin, Martin and I have spent a lot of time uh, hunting and fishing together, and, and, and – you know, we've we um, we've got our spot, so we go, and it's changed a lot because of the, the pandemic and stuff. So we don't have as much time to do it on right. the road as we used to. But yeah, we 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 fish and hunt and and spend a lot of time telling stories and, and making up stories, I guess, to go along with what we do. Tommy, a fantastic text one time from Noom, taking a look at Matt Airy right here. 
One of the best texts ever is we, we share fishing pictures, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I sent Newman a text of some small moth. He goes, hey, bro, I don't send you trophies, you know, after an NASCAR <laughs> race. But in all honesty, hey, we know you had a, 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 a catastrophic crash at Daytona. And Truex is no joke. Right after it happened, it was a week or two, I said, man, do you think Newman will retire after that? He's like, he's already ready to come back. Yeah. So anyway. Glad you're safe and Thank you. uh, staying with it. Thank man. you. Thank you for stopping and saying hi on race day. Ryan, one final question. What yes. would be the, the auto racing equivalent to winning two back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classics like Hank's trying to do? You know, I don't know if you equate that to the championship or the Daytona 500, but they're both championships. Both of those. They're, would be they're right there. I mean, right it's, at the top. It's, um, it's as good as it gets. Well. So, I mean, it's it's um, it's all a matter of preference, I guess. Thanks don't, for being don't be with us today. Don't be scared to win tonight, my friend. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, just do so it. So we got no practice. I'm going to be wide open into the one, and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like we're going for a backlash on the first cast. That's what's happening. <laughs> 7 p.m. Awesome. Uh, on FS1, where we were just a few minutes ago. Awesome. Catch Ryan Newman and all the rest at the Texas Motor Speedway. It's going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a lot of fun for a bang-up finish here. The World Championship of Bass Fishing. Hank Cherry angling for a second for two in a row. Matt Airy hot on his heels. Got about an hour and a half fishing time left for these 25 anglers who are left on this day. It's the weigh-in coming up at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So much on our plate. We'll get right back to it after this. The 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Minn Kota. Powerful. And by Skeeter Boats. For Fort Worth, Texas, you know, Bassmaster Classic week is uh, in large part here to celebrate the fans as much as the fishermen. I think everybody's getting a great deal today. We have a fantastic race going on out at Lake Ray Roberts, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, and closer and closer to the weigh-in. The weigh-in is, of course, an iconic part of Bassmaster Classic history. This one will be no exception. All the sound and fury signifying everything to one person especially, a life change door for Hank, Hank Jerry, possibly a classic reign extended. We got folks rooting for just about every possible outcome out there. And Hank Cherry, make no mistake about it, has got a whole lot of fans. And, uh, Gerald Swindles, he's done a great job of representing the sport in this past year. You kind of just feel like he still has a little bit more work oh, to do. Oh, yeah. We said, man, that magic number could be right around that 50 pound mark. Hank Cherry probably still needs to make one more critical. How cool is it, Davey Height? Ryan Newman on race day, popping into yeah. the Bassmaster <laughs> live set. Nothing else so, to do? <laughs> really, really cool. I'm a big Ryan Newman fan. I have, uh, you know, I've played cornhole with him. I've fished with him. He, yes. he fished with me and my son, invited me and my son to his pond to fish. Just a great person. Great dude. Great to see him here at the Bassmaster Classic. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, no doubt about <laughs> it. Okay, all right. We'll let you bask <laughs> in the glow of that for a little bit right now. Hey, plenty of time for someone. Even, you know, the top four spots are still the big players in this yes. right now. Of course, Chris Jones, Justin Kerr, Matt Airy, and Hank Cherry. That, that, has anyone got anything the, the, else the, that they're, the, they're the going to go to? The thing that's very, very, very scary for Hank Cherry right now is that the, those anglers are a legitimate. And here's the thing. We're on a lake. When you are in this state, when you're in the state of Texas, you are one swing of the bat in this tournament right now sure. for one of those guys to win the whole thing. You know, I'm sure Hank Cherry wanted to get to a mark where a big bite wouldn't take him down. As of right now, that is not the case. Yeah, and we try to keep this exciting for the fans watching, but honestly, Justin Kerr weighed in two bass over seven pounds yes. yesterday. He is not out of it. No. Uh, and certainly Matt Airy is, is right there. We've seen big fish weighed in all week, and the fish are biting better in the afternoon than they have been any yeah. day so far in this event. This thing is not over. Matt Airy needs about a four-pound plus to catch even with Cherry. And uh, how about Brock Mosley? He had a 6'8", or our Berkeley Big Bass of the Day, jumped from 16th place to 5th place right now, 15 pounds total, second biggest bag. He's got Canterbury lower right there, made a, made a run earlier this morning. I think he got as, got as high as 3rd place.
not to be a total name dropper, but I just texted Truex right now and said, just so you know, all the cool NASCAR drivers come to the Bassmaster <laughs> Expo. Yeah, that's a long honor <laughs> tradition, right? <laughs> than it did at the beginning, so. All jokes aside, see, you know that. this, but a lot of people watching probably don't. Ryan Newman loves to bass fish. Absolutely. Like, he drives a race car on the side, but every day that he's off, he oh. loves to bass fish. I made the comment to, to Newman. I know he's the same way, but Truex made the comment to me once. We were goofing around. He's like, dude, I only drive a car just so I can go bass fishing and hunting. <laughs> exactly. That's the only reason. Every day we have seen big ones either caught or lost from this time on to the weigh-in. Over to Hank Cherry. Making his way back down to the face of the dam where he has made critical calls in this tournament. Yesterday making a big late-day call right here. We haven't seen the six and seven pounders like he said he caught here in practice, but he has... Like you said, Z, made some critical calls with some two and three pounders late in the day. Well, we talked about the $300,000 to the winner, and Davey, you expanded on that, all those benefits you get. Let's, uh, let's turn over to Robbie Floyd. He's been on this beat a long, long time. He's got some thoughts along those lines. I've been fortunate enough in my years of broadcasting to cover a lot of sporting events and a lot of awards ceremonies. And I've been there with my buddy Dan Weldon, held the trophy, the Borg Warner Trophy for winning the Indianapolis 500. I've covered four Olympic Games. I've seen those medals presentations. I see the pride in them. But bass fishing, the best of the best, the Super Bowl of bass fishing, the Bassmaster Classic. It's been my 20th Classic. And I said, I have no idea what it feels like to win the Classic, much less, too, like Hank Cherry. But I want to tell you a little story. My wife's grandfather, O.K. Friesen from Louisiana, had this up on his wall. Now, O.K. Friesen is a lifelong military guy. He passed away a couple of years ago. And on his wall, he had some hull pottery, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of hull pottery on there. He was a lifelong military man. He took pride in everything he did as far as serving our country. It was all emblazoned on the wall. And then there was this one trophy. Look at it. The Bossier Bass Club Top 6 from 1973. This is a man who's traveled the world, seen it all, done it all, served our country, and he had a bass fishing trophy on his wall. There was one thing I got to pick, you know, when he passed away? It was this trophy because I felt like me covering the Classic all these years, if it meant that much to him, I couldn't even imagine what it means to these guys to win the Classic. Bobby Floyd with the, putting it in perspective and, and, and it from a different point of view, really. This com competition and... Everything that surrounds this great event is, uh, is massive. It moves people in the sport just to watch this final day. We say this all the time. It's life-changing for an angler here this week. It truly is. They, they realize their dreams, but, but then it and, – and Hank Cherry, you said Swindle uh, commented on this. He's been a, a great person for our sport, uh, represented the sport. And Through being, a tough time. Being Through the world time. champion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he certainly has. And you, I've already started thinking about, boy, a Matt Airy would be, be perfect. Absolutely. You, know, and you take on that responsibility when you're – if you do get to hold that trophy, all of a sudden it just – after, you know, after a day or so, it just overwhelms you with, hey, I have to, I have to live up to this yeah. like all the other people before me did. Boy, Matt Airy and – Chris One Jones, Justin Kerr. That's about the biggest two hours of their career so far. Just don't really feel like this is over yet. Totally agree with you, Z. You surprised Ari put the frog down? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Primarily because he said he had some good bites on it yesterday, later in late. the day. Late, late. 
But those couple losses are probably wearing on him. <laughs> right. Honestly, he right. might just not want to pick it up because he, his landing percentage today with that frog has not been very good. You talked about it earlier. We've seen him hooked up with what should be 22, 23 pounds of fish in his live well. Almost looked like a dang shad, big gizzard shad or something. Not sure what it was, but. Good move there. You mentioned about him laying the frog down. He just saw that fish chasing. Right. He laid down a flipping bait and picked up a top water. Very, very good move. In my I want to see like an eight or a nine pounder eat that frog. <laughs> just like get the whole thing. <laughs> it just went there again. Just did it again, whatever it was. Remember the last classic, and Hank Cherry won it went wire to wire, but that didn't make the last day very easy. It wasn't given to him. In fact, he did a lot of sweating, a lot of anxiety before he caught enough on that final day. And Hank Cherry, as much as anyone knows that on the final day, anything is possible. If I have to pass it on to someone else, there are several guys in line behind me that will make great champions. So either way, I'm good. I've already made my place in this sport. I've caught the carrot that I wanted. If I catch it twice, that's a bonus. That's just the way it is with sports. Baseball, basketball, football, whatever it is. Anybody can win on any given day. No team can win all the time, but they can definitely beat you on any given Sunday. So, you know, everybody's going to go at it, and at the end of the day, they're going to say they did the best they could. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Back to Bass Live and that right there, Dickey's Arena, that's where it's all gonna go down this afternoon. Everything happens on the water, but it's not official until they weigh their fish in front of a sea full of bass fishing freaks. And man, have they showed up here this week. Today, 5 p.m. Eastern time, we will have our final weigh and we start with 54 anglers. Only 25 remain. In a few short hours, there will be one. That one will be the 51st Bassmaster Classic champion here at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook and I have been walking around the expo. It is absolutely jammed. And man, the, the, the word on the street, no matter where you were, is well, what's, who's going to win? Everybody kind of feels like, man, this it's been a little bit of a sleepy Sunday. You know, they're catching them, but outside of Matt Airy, and he had a big deficit to overcome, you feel like some fireworks is going to happen. Ronnie Moore, what say you? Yeah, there's going to be someone who catches an influential fish in the last hour or so of this tournament, and that's the deal. They're not going to fish much past our Bassmaster Live ending point, so we're going to see it all go down on the show today. And I really think that Hank Cherry, 
He has just been so calm, cool, and collected all week. He's been here before. He's won it before. And really, I think he's grown a lot in the last two years as an angler. I think we're going to see something really important come from him in this last hour. Well, it's, it's all going down to the last few hours, but that's where our, our takeoff has been every single day. Ray Roberts State Park, and we have had great crowds for takeoff, and that is your unofficial leaderboard right now. And as you can see, tightening up on the top, Hank Cherry with 49 pounds, 10 ounces. Matt Airy making the biggest surge of the day, but is it enough? Just a few hours left to fish. And you get a good aerial view of where our anglers are spread out in this playing field. But our hummingbird unlock the lake. And Ronnie, has that stayed fairly consistent or has it changed? Obviously with uh, cutting half the field away yesterday, 29 anglers not fishing, only 25 going today. I really think we're starting to see that west bank of the Trinity River. When you look at it, there's two forks there. The left side is the actual Trinity River, which flows through Ray Roberts into Louisville. That left side, a little bit belo uh, below Ray Roberts Marina and above it has been so key. And then you start to see some of those guys up on the east branch. There's just few and far between. I don't know what the deal is with it, but I know the bushes and the stretches on that west side of the lake have been very crucial for our top 10. Only a few hours left in that hummingbird unlock the lake. Gives you a good idea how our anglers are spread out. But let's get out live to the guy making the charge, Matt Airy, trying to give mm. his mother a great birthday gift. I mean, how cool would that be? 70th birthday, here you go. Bassmaster Classic title. We don't need any candles. I got I to gotta call you out, Dave. What? Day one. You were, you were right. I don't want to bring it up. It you wasn't be, Bella yeah, Grace's birthday. He it lied was Monday. To me. I was right. He See, lied I, to I me. My, <laughs> my intel, which is our reigning champion, was a liar. I, I did give him trouble for that. It made me look silly in front of Ronnie. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you knew. I don't need the world to I just wanted to make sure you knew. For the record, I'm not sure if it's his mother's birthday today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what made me think of it. I was like, well. He, he, he did wish her a happy birthday, but it could have been yesterday. I mean, but it, it, it's, I believe it's today. I mean, I mean, the whole takeoff sung happy birthday. It has to be today. Four box, Otten, Jones, Airy, and Canterbury. Todd Otten, wow. I mean, it, it, second place at our last classic. It's not just Hank Cherry that has had two incredible classics in a row. Yes, indeed. And I really thought he was going to rise up the leaderboard a lot this <laughs> morning. He caught a couple on a well, walking a top water. It was. And I, I thought well, that that well, was going to be that. a key adjustment. We that haven't seen a walking right top water come into play. And, and Auten caught two good ones, and I thought he was going to be good to go. But it has definitely died off with no wind, no overcast. What did Robbie, Robbie Floyd say? It was like a 102 degree heat index out there with the humidity included. And Robbie knows heat. He, I mean, does. he lives here. He does. It always looks like he's got some flames coming off of his head from his hair. His hair's always, because he's got to do the interviews running down the lake with the pros. So he's got nice hair. He does. He's got nice hair. There's not much Ronnie does. Uh, there's not much. Well, Ronnie is a whole other story, but there's not much <laughs> Robbie doesn't know really when you look at his resume uh, i mean we need to celebrate this guy as a broadcaster he has done the olympics i mean he does the bassmaster classic every year he's done the olympics four times motocross he's, motocross eating contests i mean you name it he has literally Bar. done cornhole competitions and then when kay donaldson calls you to do the alabama bass trail well that's that's just as big time Just feel the pressure with every drip of sweat that runs down his steel. back. He knows just how much is on the line. Almost too still. Excuse me. Oh, pardon me. Got to be an interesting feeling coming into the final day in fifth place. <laughs> Probably didn't have that many boats following him. 
and after catching two key fish this morning, they definitely flooded his direction to have not not even have a limit, not even have a big bag, just have three fish and have a flotilla show up. You know everything is going good for you, but you're not even near your goal yet. So as soon as the flotilla starts to leave and go back to Cherry, it starts to play more mind games. You'd rather they not show up at all than come and then leave. It's so weird how you hear from anglers afterwards how much that plays with their head. Because, and, and sometimes, to be totally honest, it's literally just a situation where we got to leave because we got to come back for weigh-in or <laughs> it could be any myriad of things. But, but uh, being out in their water, doing coverage like you have many, many times, you hear from anglers afterwards and they were like, well, when you left, I knew I wasn't catching them. Or you guys showed up and I thought, uh-oh. And really, the only reason we showed up is because that, that was the only angler we could find. <laughs> I always made it a point when I left after taking photos of an angler all day on the water and said, see you, Matt. I'm going in to get ready for weigh-in so that he didn't think I was going to see somebody else. When Not me. I would shake my head and sigh. <sighs> well, got to go fill my gallery with some photos of someone else. Well, nothing to see here. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so mean. So mean. Watching Matt Airy currently in second place, and Todd Otten, our second place finisher from the 50th Bassmaster Little. Classic. I believe you're right, Trey. I believe it has dropped just a little bit. Well, I'm looking at the bottom right here on this high spot, and yes, yeah, dropped a little bit. A couple of inches anyway, it looks like. If Matt Harry pulls this off. Make a big enough splash, Matthew. Call him over there. It's amazing how critical some of these guys are of themselves during the classic compared to other times. Like, he thinks he's blowing it, and he has no idea that he's still right there. I personally think that's part of the magic of our sport. It's so different, but it also, it, it's part of that pressure. It's part of that build that, that makes this event so tough. And literally every angler on earth hears about it over and over again. I mean, I heard about it from Bob Cobb. I heard about it from Ray Scott. I heard, you know, everybody who had our job before us, we all heard about it. But you hear anglers routinely make the Bassmaster Classic and say, man, it's just another event. I'm just going to – it is a pressure cooker like you've never, ever fished. I mean, and and I believe that not knowing is, is part of that because there's no let off. There's no, like – I, I can relax. And we're seeing, unless you see an angler on the water coming down the bank towards you and you get an update from him, you are fishing off your pure gut instincts. No one's affecting your decision making other than yourself. And that is what's pure about this sport, and especially uh, for the leaders on the final day. Yeah, and let's be honest, that angler that gives you the update is usually lying to you. Just like he does on Bass Trap. <laughs> we have an award for that. They don't lie anymore. We, we pay them not to lie. That's how truthful professional anglers are. We will be back in just a few minutes from the 51st Bassmaster Classic. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Welcome back to the 51st edition of the Academy Sports and Outdoors at Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. Beautiful Lake Ray Roberts has been our playing field this week and just a few hours of competition remain here. On Championship Sunday and atop of the leaderboard, Hank Cherry with 49 pounds, 10 ounces trying to go back to back, but Matt Airy trying to hold his first title. 
just a little over a pound behind him. A lot of fishing time left. And reminder, those weights are unofficial until the fish hit the scale. And they will be unofficial today for everyone in the field until they see you, Dave Mercer. The last few days, we've done some conservation efforts with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Yep. Today, top 25, all five fish coming to the weigh-in. We get to decide it at the scales. Former Elite Series Rookie of the Year, Drew Cook. If you look at Cook's career, I mean, he's had a great, great young career. But me and him kind of joke about it, and it's it's one of the frustrations of his career. Day one. I mean, his day ones, I mean, it wasn't bad this time around. He had a, a decent day one. But if you look at him on the Elite Series, I mean, incredible at adjusting with fish. I mean, that's what it shows to me. I mean, day one, he... He will stumble, but almost always make a comeback. I mean, you watch him. He must be the most frustrating person to cover in fantasy fishing because you're like, ah, horrible pick. And then come Friday and Saturday, he makes you happy. Oh, I'd even include Patrick Walters, Man. Jake Whitaker. Always, they always come back on tape. These young anglers have a knack for adjusting with their mistakes, whether it's execution or area of the lake. I will say that group of anglers that – I fished against in college that all came out kind of the same year to we'll become on the Elite Series. One, two or something. They will not settle for middling weights. Drew Cook grinding away right let's go back to our leaders hank cherry and matt airy ronnie that collegiate question you you hear people say all the time collegiate anglers are better prepared for the sport but we all have our theories but but you being a former collegiate angler what say you ronaldo why do why are collegiate anglers more prepared, or do you believe they're more prepared? You know, what, is there a single reason outside of the simple? I mean, they've, they've competed in that sort of thing. I will say when you fish local events, there are a lot of great anglers. Oh, no. But it's two or three days and a lot of history leading up to a one-day event. In college, you're going to foreign fisheries, and you practice for two and a half days for a three-day event. So it is the same process you're taking in the Opens and at the Elite Series level. And so it's a seamless transition, but I think that um, I think that the way we break down lakes in practice, certain styles will obviously rise to the top, but I think that very similar tournament formats, multiple day tournaments, multiple days of practice, allows them to dial it in. We were just looking at an aerial of Hank Cherry making that move back to the dam, and his flotilla is still, still strong, still hanging with him. Sweltering. All right, let's go. I mean, at, at this point, I feel like your flotilla is leaving just for the safety of their children. I mean, right. their children yeah. are in live wells. Hydration. <laughs> yeah. My theory on that is it, with the collegiate thing is, and it's becoming. I'm go back where I miss that big one on the lower end. Number one, number two, making moves. Finish the day in that stretch, those couple stretches. like they know it's time to move one hour left one hour left as one and two make adjustments and make some moves run for a while <laughs> not yet we got an hour we got plenty of time to do that later what a difference a day makes in weather though huh Hole over here. 
lost one earlier. <coughs> I had a little few good bites in there in practice. How good does that feel? But back to our collegiate conversation, I think one of the biggest differences, and I think it's becoming more and more apparent year after year as more programs get set up and more established, it's finally Fishing up to this point has been an uncoachable sport in the way that you have to make the mistakes before you correct the mistakes. Now you have coaches, now you have teams that are set up to, to succeed. You know, they learn the different techniques. They go out and Tuesday night, we're gonna just drop shot. Wednesday, we're gonna, you know, deep crank. And they learn about, similar to other sports. You know, in football, you wanna coach you know, before the problem happens, and now that's finally happening. So they're much more prepared. You don't see them learning as much on the Elite Series. I, I will say this, and some of the, all of the coaches in, in college might not like it, but, but it's oh coming from a good place. No, I don't think it is we, whenever you start like that. We've seen, I think, the last numerous college champions that are in the Classic come from scholarship schools. But a lot of the Elite Series pros that make it from the Opens don't come from scholarship schools. They come from budgeting, you know, figuring out on themselves. And so I think it's a different level, and we can get into it more, but wow, with Chris Jones now, I, I think that it's just you have to be wired a certain way. And coaching can get you far in the sport, but, man, I watch the best in the world, and they make it, they make it look real easy, and I feel like I know a lot. And then when I go out on the lake, it doesn't translate all the time, and you can get frustrated. And so just because you know what to do doesn't mean it's going to happen. And so it's a special group of guys that are wired from the college series that can make it here. So you're, you're saying my, my point is not valid whatsoever. I think that if you want to make it to the classic from college, having a scholarship school is fantastic to be a longstanding elite career. Uh, we've only seen one scholarship angler make the elite series, KJ Queen. And, we, and we've got a, over a quarter, you know what I'm saying? So maybe the sample size is smaller, but we will start to see more of them. But I think that that, you know. Them coaches don't know nothing. <laughs> wow. Chris Jones could tell uh, Brad Wadley, hey, go flip these bushes. And he's like, dude, I did. I was beside you all day, and, and you don't catch the same way. You know, so it's, I could see that, but I love the coaches. I love them. And I don't even mean specifically coaches. I mean that they're being coached by each other. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They, they push each other. Oh, no doubt. They learn from no each doubt. other. Where in the past, a Patrick Walter spends his entire career literally just trying to eke and get information from guys like Steve Kennedy. Yeah. But, but when you work with these teams, you have a reason to learn I together. I where I lost from a big one this morning. Yes, I will. I will agree with, with that. A square bill. About time. Or at least, <laughs> at least we floss the trees a little bit with a square bill. <laughs> I'm gonna go back through it with my jig. How about Kendi goes on the most epic final hour of the classic? And it, it, will, it would, I mean, could you just imagine the noises? <laughs> he is the most fun dude to watch because I just don't think he is a filter. It just. Want to know what's crazy to me? I just thought yeah, he caught 23 pounds on day one. Uh huh. Day two and day three combined, he's caught 11. That is just shows you how volatile Ray Roberts can be especially during abnormal conditions. That a guy, a day one leader, everyone picked him. They thought he was going to be the best fantasy pick. He turned out to be a fantastic one. And how it can drop off so quickly when you, when you have it dialed in. It tells me you're a bully, really. Yeah. But why are you bringing that up right well, now? Well, he, I mean, he convinced me that every single other angler's swim jig was inadequate or too light or not good enough. And then the next two days, I'm like, man, I did not expect that, you know? You listen to these guys, and they have it dialed. And then it takes one thing, like a storm, 
and it's a brand new body of water. It's a brand new he world. Never got it to buy it. And today she did. From Kendi over to Chris Jones. Oklahoma, I asked several anglers, and that Pangarak be hooked up. That would look cool. I'll get rid of that 14 incher. Stop. The quality has just the quality has just left Chris Jones today shockingly. Speaking of leaving, I've had enough of you, Ronaldo. I mean, I've really enjoyed our time this week Me here. Too. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked that they allow us to do this, but I'm leaving you. I am publicly stating this. I'm out of here. I am heading to Dickey's Arena, and, I, and, and we're going to have a way in this Sabbath. I don't know what you do. When I leave you, but I, you do what you do. Normally, when you leave, I start smiling. I'm just kidding. No, I'm glad you're leaving because that means you're getting prepped for the weigh-in, and it is going to be one. I mean, there's going to be tear shed. There's going to be excitement had. It's the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. This only happens one time Let, a year. Let's do something special. I mean, I, I, I want to see that hair. Did you, did you get a dent in the hair? Do I, I have I, a dent? I do have I'm sure you got a dent. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It's hideous. A dent in your hair. I, I got a dent in the my Bass hair. Bassmaster Classic. Ronaldo, you have let me down. You have let me down with that hair, but at least you have it. Yeah, Make I was about sure. to say, let me see the dent in your actual head. Wow, okay. I mean, you're going to see a dent in your face in a minute. Make sure the one thing that will not let you down is our weigh-in this afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you tune into it. It is the 51st edition of the greatest spectacle in sport fishing, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Wolf. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. <laughs> oh, just a little more than 40 minutes worth of fishing time. Not that much if you factor in travel time. These guys should have a ways to go. Five o'clock Eastern time right there in the fabulous Dickies Arena. It's going to be the way in, the final way in, the big one, all the pageantry, all the noise. Pop, Light, slayer, pop, sizzle. sizzle. Exactly. Hey, all we're of here that. at the Berkeley all section of, of the Academy booth. Uh, and we're getting to town. talk You'll about You'll enjoy it here on Bassmaster.com starting at 5 o'clock. So uh, we, uh, we'll be with you. We'll be watching all the way there. And, guys, uh, not much time left. And, uh, boy, Hank Cherry just trying to run the clock down, I think. You know, the last segment that we did right after we were on FS1, I made the comment to you, really the last thing that Hank Cherry wanted probably for today was to really have these guys, the, whether you're looking at Matt, Airy, Chris Jones, Justin Kerr, to be one swing of that rod, one swing of the bat where they could win that Bassmaster Classic trophy, and that's exactly where we still are sitting. Yeah, Z, and these anglers, they don't know the official weights. Well, we don't even know the official weights, but we are able to look at Bass Track. They're not able to look at Bass Track during the event, but I promise you, Hank Cherry, Matt Airy, and Justin Kerr, Chris Jones, all know that it's really close because you see these flotillas that are around all four of them. They're yeah. not all gravitated to just one person. Right. And these guys have a – they know anyway. Yeah, they, they, have, they have a built-in sort well, of they, counter. Robbie yeah. Floyd, when he went over to Matt Airy, Matt Airy's, you know, bing bong, peekaboo, <laughs> uh, Captain Obvious, when Robbie Floyd shows up on the last day of the Blast Bassmaster Classic, you absolutely know you are in contention or Robbie Floyd is nowhere near you. Yes. Absolutely yes. right. Like, listen, I like awkward, and I like well, awkward we, pauses. We, we like to <laughs> weave a little of that in there from time to time. Keeps everyone right. on their toes. But you make a great point. Steve Kennedy understands Robbie Floyd has not been with Absolutely. him since early this morning. Absolutely. That's the way they're laid out either side of the dam. Matt Airy and Hank Cherry, one and two. Cherry with a one-pound, nine-ounce advantage. He's had that for a little while right now, so... 
Harry. Got a little time to make it happen. Oh, he has alternated between a half ounce jig, topwater frog. He's throwing a couple different frogs today. All our weights we're giving you are unofficial. We have Very. been fooled a couple of times this season. Yes, uh, we have. On occasion. <laughs> Maybe this bit. week, Patrick Walters. Yeah, a little bit of that. <laughs> he was uh, like six pounds off. That's all. Maybe his career, Patrick Walters. <laughs> yes. It is at the angler's discretion, so we'll yes. just leave it at that. Yes. So this time of day, we were just talking about how these anglers know they've got a chance to be Matt Airy, to be... Justin Kerr to be Chris Jones. Another one chase it out about 13 inches long. You've dreamed your you whole eat it, life eat for it. this Don't moment. Sit there and look at it and then chase it out. It's uh, there's a lot of pressure there. More fish have moved up in here for sure. But the thing I remember most about Hank Cherry's pre-term interview, he said, "I want to win this one more than more than I wanted to win my first one because I realize what it brings." Yeah. So he's feeling the pressure also. Oh sure. Just got a text from Lee Livesey, something that we've talked about. He's like, ooh, Matt Airy, just keep that frog in your hand, boy. Is oh, that what boy. he said? Come on. <laughs> keep that frog in your hand. You'll win this thing, boy. When he talked to us on, on day one, he said, why aren't anybody throwing a spinnerbait? Of course, the wind was blowing like, you know, yes. yeah. 70 miles an hour then. So, uh. Stressful 30 to 45 minutes for these guys. And for the first time, correct me if I'm wrong, Tommy Z, Hank Cherry is on that inside throwing a frog. Yes. I haven't seen him do that this week. No, nope. not one time. Is he done with the dam? Yes. Yes, I, I think, think so. so. Yes. Yes. And I think he's yes. a little disappointed in it. Yeah. Because he, yeah. those pictures that he showed us from practice, we can talk those about it now. Yes, we can talk they about were, it now. Huge. Those fish were from the dam. Yes. He had multiple six and seven pounders that he had pictures of he caught in practice. Well, as I say, we have been fooled a few times, you know, and not on purpose, inadvertently. So, Matt Airy, great guy. An honest person. He's an honest but man. But that, that 412 that he <laughs> caught this morning. Yes. Uh, it was bigger than 412. He's the type of guy that doesn't want to overestimate his fish. So, I mean, you start adding five or six Where ounces they, here huh? or there. There. Way too close to call. It, and on the other side of that, though, I, I, that melon head slouch that Hank Cherry caught midday, that was not a four pounder. Correct. It was not a four pound. It was a four six. It was yeah. a four seven. All that being said, these weights are far from necessarily correct or definitely not official. Definitely not official. Absolutely. In fact, what what did Matt Airy tell us? He he has to keep it straight because he doesn't want to yeah, uh, well, put down twenty and yeah. his wife, you know, sees nineteen. <laughs> See, all of a sudden he's in the soup right there. For Matt Airy, he almost said a bad word when he was saying that. Yeah. But he made up for it later. He was complimenting his wife being, you know, the cornerstone of him. Yeah, it's part of the team. <laughs> Justin Kerr, five pounds and four ounces back right now. And again, we probably, it's not Steve Kennedy, that's Justin Kerr right there. He probably did. have. Yep. Uh -uh. He, I knew he just saw something. He picked up a rod and threw back behind the boat. Uh, <sighs> maybe one of followed his big monster rat in or something, but now. he saw something there. Oh, you saw it fish too, huh? Probably on a bed, man, or something. I don't think he's going to call anything. Got to be two or better to help. Justin Kerr there. I don't think that one's going to quite stretch. You did hear Matt Airy say earlier today, I know I need more than 20. 
He definitely has had the opportunity yes, for that. Oh. No doubt. So I have a question. Again, the preterm and interview. Hank Cherry said I might have to hand that trophy off, but I, I don't want to. If he wins, does he hand the trophy to himself? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, Trip gets the Trip gets to hand it off oh, to him okay. because Trip is here is as that our honorary tournament director, waymaster. Okay. So I think Trip didn't hand it off to him last year. So I think that would only be fitting. Okay. For trip to hand it off this year. Yeah, Ronnie, you said like that like you you knew what you were talking about. Yeah. Like like literally knew the You know, I only speak in certain terms. <laughs> I mean he's not hundred and fiftieth in the world for nothing. Yeah. Dude. No. We're yeah. bringing yeah. the ship in the harbor. We've already informed the harbor that harbor we're master on. knows we're we shut down two engines, we got one runner, we're just gonna idle get this the big rope out. Live on in. We're just bringing it on in. That's right. Tapping just it in. Running the yeah, ball, just grinding coming, the clock. Coming back. It's always been there. It's always been there. <laughs> Final day of the Classic, first day of the season. Any day is the right day. For a little bit of Striker Daily trivia. My what? opinion anyway. Yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just stir up a little bit right here. Tommy and I have been flawless this oh, past yes, week. Yes, we Absolutely. Things. Which Boy. state is second to Texas in producing the most classic qualifiers? We know for a fact. 333 Texas slots have filled the Classic. Take your guess, Arkansas, Alabama, Florida, or Missouri. We'll take a quick break and come right back. Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Quick salute to all the 54 anglers who worked so hard to get to this yes. Bassmaster Classic. Let's hit our Striker Daily Trivia. The question was, well, it has to do with Texas. Which state is second to Texas in producing the most classic qualifiers? Is it Arkansas, Alabama, Florida, or Missouri? Z? No pressure, Z. I, I don't think we've missed this week so far. I have not, this could be the championship. Stop question. it, Davey. <laughs> you know what? I want to say Alabama. I want to say Florida. I'm going to go off the grid, I, 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 and I want to stay perfect. A Arkansas. I yeah, like I that. Thought I, was okay. uh -huh. I like Ronnie. It. I like. I'm with. It's Arkansas all the way. Is it? Maybe. It is, isn't it? Call it is what? Arkansas. All I the way. know it's a Arkansas. All right. It's Arkansas. Absolutely. Flawless. 198 anglers. Well, 198 slots filled by Arkansas anglers, many of them. And I have not Multiples. cheated one time in Striker Daily no, no. Trivia This at week, all. baby. No, this week, but this no, year you definitely No, have. Editor uh, David Lipke no. is not here feeding nah. me info. I See, absolutely you admit it, though. You yeah. admit. He doesn't have a phone, so there's just no way that could happen. Oh, there's just, yeah. just no way. Like he has <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, look. I'm look, talking look, about look. the expo is done. Packed to the hill. You know what that music means, and it's going to be the last one of the 2021 Bassmaster Classic here on Ray Roberts talking about dirty northern Texas bass fishing. Well, here's the bad thing, Tommy Sanders. This is a negative power pole replay of the day. Matt uh -huh. Harry, that trophy was right in your hands earlier today, doing work with a frog, sadly, not putting them in the boat. Look at this one right here. Absolutely sharks it and gets it. Ever since Matt could remember. Okay. It's always been there. <laughs> Just like a snake, he's slithering, and like a cat, he is stalking. Hey, Matt Airy. Sadly, you are the power pole replay of the day, my friend, on a negative tone. Who ends? This classic, like we're just around humans again. It's a celebration, and that's the last power ball replay of the day. Big part of the story. That's the only way I could possibly figure it. How about some BW trailer hitches live on the line right now? One more time. Let's throw it to our own. Great job this week by Robbie Floyd. Yes. Things are heating up on this final day of the Bassmaster Classic, not only in the competition in this final hour, but also the temperature. It feels like 106 out here right now. I'm a Texas boy, and I'm hot, and Hank's even starting to feel it. He dipped his hat in the water trying to cool things down. You can see the pressure getting to him as well. He knows he needs to catch one more big one on this final day. But the water temp, it's also heating up. When I was with Hank this week on Wednesday, about four or five days ago, the water temp was 73 degrees. He was hitting this line. He caught probably a six, maybe even a seven-pounder that day. Today, it's 84 and a half degrees. Things wow. are heating up in the sky, and you know with those rocks there, things are going to be heating up in that water as well. 
That water temp has gone up about 10 degrees since the start of competition. It's wow. gone up along with a shed spawn going down oh, each and away. every day. Going down in a bad way, not going down like magic, right, Davey? Correct. <laughs> Oh, pick that frog back up. There's a little stretch right here in front of him that's very similar to where he does throw the frog, where you see that less, I guess, a gap in the bushes there, but you see that short. Hey, I, yeah, did no, I call no. that? Oh, man. No. Now go ahead and I'm catch one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave the lower end to Ray Roberts right now. Back up to Steve Kennedy. Steve Kennedy right now sitting on one bass. Under two pounds. Mm. Boy, he has stayed with it, though, today. He said if he was going to win this tournament, it's going to be on those hardwoods. He hit those bushes. Even before we went on the air, we were watching him on Here the camera, go. though. Oh, hold on. That's a fish. Please don't be a catfish. Come on, baby. There we go. I want to keep. Come on. <laughs> Let's do it. 15 inches. Give me some. What's going on your side, though? <laughs> I think it still needs to go away. Wow. I don't even choke on it for a while there. It would not go down, would not go down. And I realized it was pulling away. Oh, hi. Steve Kennedy again. Back in there. Just Opened up with 23 pounds on day one. Day two went slowly, but he had a chance to bring it all back. This was the turning point of this entire Bassmaster Classic oh League yesterday with Steve Kennedy. Extremely hard to watch right there. Biggest fish that we've seen on camera all week long. Uh, so hard to watch. What's incredible is he had 23 pounds on day one, and he has caught 12 pounds combined the last two days. Uh, that is tough to comprehend. Ah. Uh, Bad deal. Steve's a great dude, big fan favorite, and oh yeah, just not meant to be. You always here, Davy. You talk about it. Could have cost me the classic again. Hang it. Come on. Hmm. I. <laughs> it's hard for me to say this because I l love both of these gentlemen, but. Steve Kennedy, when he gets a fish upside the boat, looks a lot like Aaron Martin's at times. Do you agree? Yes, we talked about that. Aaron, somebody we love, we pray for, and I will tell you, when Tommy and I covered Aaron, he would hook really, really big fish, and he would fight them, actually. He would fight them with his trolling motor. Yeah. He yeah. would kick his trolling motor on high and wear him down, and you're thinking to yourself, you are tearing the hook. Now, he landed – obviously landed his share of, of Lunkas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's got four second-place finishes in a Bassmaster Classic also. That's a good also. point. Yeah. But I, I, it, what was weird was it's every time. one of the time, greatest of all time, no e doubt. Every time he would do that, you'd be like, oh, no, no, no. It, it, but he's Aaron Martin. Same That's thing you say about Steve Kennedy. And, and this is one of those. And here's the thing. This whole Classic, we talked about that storm yesterday morning shifting how this Classic was going to go down. It happened truly with Steve Ke It happened right there. Yeah. So very little time left. Anyone who's going to try to land a couple of giants and up in the top part of that leaderboard, but still Hank Cherry right now with the advantage over Matt Airy, Justin Kerr, Chris Jones, and all the, hey, all the rest. You yeah. have to give a big hats off to Brock Mosley. A miserable, miserable day one. Brock coming back in our top 10. 16 pounds and eight ounces today for Brock Mosley. Yes, indeed. Hats off and hats off to all our anglers. We'll be back. Best live.
Live coverage of the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Every classic's different. This one had an arc that was pretty easy to follow. Started out right out of the gate. Uh, cloudy skies, the wind starting to kick up and a shad spawn bite that really gave a lot of anglers a big kick start to their classic effort. Got a little tougher and a little tougher all the way through day number two. And Hank Cherry able to overtake that lead, take the lead into day number three. And so far, so far he has hung on to it with time quickly running out. Check-ins 2.15. Good efficient time left for these anglers, but uh, boy, it's going to take some last minute heroics. If you're going to change the outcome that uh, starting to look ever more likely again. Again, we have to say these are unofficial figures here. Yes, very. Could be some discrepancies sometimes. There always is. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. So there always is. Sometimes they're big ones. Yeah. 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 On Bass Track, Patrick Walters is only like 15 pounds back, so he's definitely got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, he's, he's definitely in the. Well played, my friend from South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> well played as always. There they are, the final weights of uh, well, our 54 anglers, at least for the, except for the top 26, so there's 25 or still out there. Take a look at Hank Cherry's day. Yeah, and really the main thing that was missing this morning, Robbie Floyd talked about it, Davey, we nailed it early this morning. He has put better than average size bass in his live well the first two hours, days one and two. That was not the case today. It was, I, it, here's what it was today. It was a lot like his afternoon yesterday. It was just grimy. Yeah. Not a lot of traction, hey. but you have to give him a hat. So this fish right here, Swimming out of the bush, we made the comment right when he swung it over the side, maybe it is meant to be for Hank Cherry. So can you imagine if it turns out just like we've got it on Bass Track, which it certainly may not, Matt Aries, if he sees this footage of him losing these two fish and Hank Cherry having fish just swim out of the middle of the bush and come oh in the boat. My right. And then look. Taking a look at Matt Airy's day. Here's the thing, man. That's, you know this more than anybody. That's exactly what we came into this tournament. Every tournament we cover, it's what goes right and what goes wrong. And some things you cannot explain. Look, I'm going to tell you, you can't explain why Matt Airy missed those fish on a frog because he drilled them. We lost this morning, but that is a beautiful Galloway. Oh, no. I didn't even know he had it. I thought he missed it. There's a freaking pink leaf sitting there. I thought it. Freaking pink leaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This has been fun today. It's on the outside of his mouth. No, he's not. Come here. Come here. Yeah. This will hurt if, if Matt Airy finishes second. Yes. The, the bites that he has had today, Oof. where Hank Cherry has not, right. but has been able to have him swim out of the bushes and in his boat, boy, it'll be painful. Chris Jones has certainly uh, carried the banner for the what? Bassmaster Opens in a great way this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Solid Are dude, too. Yeah, yeah. Really solid guy. Same thing covering Justin wow. Kerr this week. A lot of guys that, you know, we just didn't know yeah. very well, knew that yeah. they were great fishermen. Oh boy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Get in the boat. Oh, shit. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. You know what, Tommy? I have felt like that the last 15 months. <laughs> yeah. Good one. It was a few of those yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't that word. <laughs> Boy, he just said, yo, you guys don't forget about me. Uh, yeah. You're talking about Matt Aaron, Hank Cherry. This oh. thing is not over. Stud, didn't you? <laughs> I agree, Chris Jones. 
I don't know which one's the damn small one. I'm going to pull them all out. And look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. It's the end of the tournament. I get it, That's bro. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Love that guy. I mean, like, 10 seconds after you and Tommy both talked about what a great guy he is, he starts just letting them fly. <laughs> <laughs> like him even more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that Zona Show candidate right there. Justin Kerr, another great story, just like Chris Jones, just the journeyman angler. Really on the cusp of doing the biggest thing in the sport of fishing. You can't, you can't resist watching that story. After spending 10 minutes with him yesterday afternoon, I'll always be a Justin Kerr fan. Yeah, the real okay. deal. Yeah. Real deal. Absolutely. Made the statement after we did our post-game interview, sat down with Justin Kerr for a little bit, four fish for 20 pounds. The one word, Davey, you used with him, that dude right there is dangerous. Hope we get to cover Justin Kerr again, and this is not just a one-time jackpot here at the Bass <laughs> Master Classic. <laughs> I yeah. want to see him and Chris Jones back here. Absolutely. Both of them. No he, absolutely. He mentioned possible retirement if he won the Bassmaster Classic today, which I don't think would have been the case, but I certainly hope it would not be. I am not Bruce Aiken. I am not Jay, uh, I'm not Chase Anderson, but I would give a ticket to Chris Jones and Justin Kerr for the Absolutely. Great, joking, great. Joking, following joking. those guys around. Got a tiny bit of fishing left and a wrap up when we return. Best man. The 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Berkeley. Thank you for spending some time with us, sharing all the fun of all this live coverage of the final day of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. If you can carve off a little more time today, I recommend 5 p.m. Eastern time oh, right here on Bassmaster.com. The Dickies Arena, you just saw it there, beautiful place, and it is done up right for a final classic weigh-in. Had some great moments here, beautiful spot, great sound, great music, all the lights and all the big bass that have crossed the stage. Tommy, watch this. Big bass, big stage. What's it come down to, baby? Realizing your big dreams. <laughs> Bang. That's, that's what happens this week. Great crowd yesterday, and I'm fair to say, I mean, a huge crowd at Dickie Dorena. Yeah, I struggle what? with it. No, no, I struggle. No, no. I do. I struggle with my ethics. It's an even bigger crowd today here at the Expo. And Tommy, fair to say, guys, I, it, thank you to all of the fans yeah, that have absolutely. showed out this week because we were very worried that there might only be 20 people here this week. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> phenomenal to be all be back together. Absolutely. That's what, world. that's what this week is all about. Let's get you out quickly to Todd Auten, yeah, another great that. classic. That's two really yeah, fine classics in the row for a Todd. That's a good thing. Oh, gosh. Come on in the boat. Oh, oh well, that oh, is. Oh. <sighs> ah, Lee, I thought I had it hooked good. It looked good. That's about a four pounder. There went a few grand. That's about what I was going to say. It may not have cost him the Bassmaster Classic, but it definitely cost him a few coins. When right I flipped there. it in there, I seen the bush shake. I was like, maybe. Name any tournament name any tournament I probably should have lipped him but you know when you got big line on there that we've seen this many big fish misses slash losses a any yeah uh, any. I can't remember one I can't <laughs> either I can't either that is a little bit of it, that real many. tough corner to get service in but a final look at Frank at Hank Cherry that many misses losses that dude's winning this tournament. It's just the way it is, man. And the one that we saw for him swim out of the bush. Yes. Yes. Hey, so we, still a few yes. more minutes to fish after we have to leave. Yes, there too. are. The, yes, there the are. 15 more minutes of fishing, I think, for these guys. So things still could change. Absolutely. And sometimes they do in the few minutes we have after we leave a live broadcast. Yeah, sometimes they don't. And sometimes they don't. don't. Yes, exactly. That's the other side of the coin. Oh, Mark. room 318. Yes, sir. Oh, what? No. <laughs> Thanks. Now everyone watching knows my room number. No, they don't. <laughs> wow. Tommy, I mean, Ronnie, what you have? I was going to say, hey, in football, guys fumble and you still lose the game. Some guys lost some big ones this week and will lose the classic. Absolutely. 
So great to have you with us all week long for the greatest week in bass fishing. Weigh in coming up at 5 o'clock, and we will see you there. Yeah.